What's up guys? It's yo boy on this sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn As A Uchiha? Reviving the clan with harem system. Part 9. Like, share and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Naya Yujido was silent for a moment, then, almost like a conditioned reflex, the whole person rolled on the ground and assumed a defensive posture. Once in position, she could barely open her eyes. Huh, what's wrong with Akatsuki people? Naya Yujido was taken aback, then frowned as she felt her body unrestricted. Akatsuki went to all that effort to capture her, and their goal couldn't just be to let her out for a walk, right? The Akatsuki people are gone, and now I'm the only one here. Natsuo said in a calm voice. He was holding a rabbit as he nonchalantly walked towards her. You're Natsuo. Yujido's too widened in surprise, with a cautious look she said. Is Kanoha allied with Akatsuki? So that's the reason we couldn't find Akatsuki. I thought it was a small country that was secretly protecting them. It turned out that you, Kanoha, were protecting them. The more she spoke, the more hostile Yujido became. Hey! Hey Natsuo chuckled lightly. Why do you have so much drama on your mind? If I were allied with Akatsuki, I wouldn't even put restrictions on you. Or worse, let you regain consciousness. Oh, well, it seems that even if I don't put restrictions on you, you still can't escape my hands anyway. I was careless. Thinking of it this way, your vigilance is somewhat justified. Natsuo suddenly realized, then nonchalantly sat on the ground, skinning the rabbit and beginning to roast it. Yujido frowned slightly, but as time passed, she slowly let her guard down. Although she was experiencing a stress reaction after regaining consciousness, she only needed to think a little to understand. Natsuo had sent the Eight Tails back to Kumogaka during the war, so why would she let Akatsuki try so hard to capture her and the Eight Tails again? So it was you who saved me. Yujido asked. Only the man in front of her was the one who could rescue someone from Akatsuki's hands. Yes. Natsuo nodded. I heard the news that Akatsuki would evacuate from this direction, so I came here. Do you Kanoha have spies in Akatsuki? Yujito got the key point right away. Indeed. Natsuo did not deny. Ichiha Atachi is Kanoha's spy. Yujito looked at him surprised. Clan killer Atachi. Yes. Didn't he kill your Ichiha clan? Oh. Yes, he did. But you don't need to know the details. Yujito took a deep breath, a slight tremble in her mouth. Spies often gain the trust of the enemy because they have the blood of their comrades on their hands. However, it seems very strange to Yujito that someone would have massacred such a powerful clan, just to be able to send a spy, even more so if it is the spy's own clan. So you saved me on purpose. What reward does Kanoha want? Yujito said calmly. If you have any request, you can say it. As fifth rakage, I can seriously consider it. She wasn't naive enough to believe that the five great shinobi villages were now close allies, simply because they had signed a peace treaty. Even if they were asking for help would always require payment. Oh, can I be direct? Natsuo stroked his chin. Of course. I want to have a child with you. What? Yujito was perplexed. She stared at Natsuo in front of her with wide eyes. What was this guy saying? I'm saying I want us to have a child. Natsuo said seriously. Don't you know? I, Ichiha Natsuo, like having children with exceptional kunoichi. Are you willing? As he spoke, he looked at Yujito with great interest. Yujito. No, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. Yujito said fiercely. Then she stood up suddenly. Really? I'm wasting my time here with you. Where is the Hokage? I'm going to talk to her directly. Her reaction was much more extreme than I thought. Natsuo stroked his chin as he pondered. Perhaps I could use the Yumenso to get him to accept my proposal. She is a cage-level Kunoichi, so she could justify using the Manjekyo technique. Although I might need the technique later. Well, I will make a decision after this situation passes, he then said to Yujito. Why are you looking for the Hokage? I saved you. If you want to reward someone, shouldn't you reward me? Tsunade probably doesn't know about the attack on Kumogaka yet. Are you acting privately? Yujito was surprised. She had always thought that Natsuo was following Tsunade's orders, intending to gain benefits for Kanoha, as well as recruiting Kumogaka to take on the Akatsuki organization. Who knew he was acting alone? Wait, if he was acting alone, what about Killer B? Where's Killer B? Yujito looked around, and her sensory ninjutsu was pushed to the limit. She hadn't paid attention to Killer B's absence before, after all. There were things that only the Reikage had the right to discuss. But if Natsuo was acting alone what had happened to Killer B? He was taken by Akatsuki members. They are probably trying to extract the tail beast from him right now. Natsuo said calmly. Although it's also possible that they haven't done it yet. After all, my ambush scared them a little. Is he still in Akatsuki's hands? Yujito's eyes widened. Yes. Why didn't you save him? Why should I save him? Natsuo asked back. Rescuing a woman may lead to her giving you her heart. 
But what's the point of saving a man, just so one can be a hero? When the Akatsuki members asked me if I wanted to keep him, of course I said no. Who would want a big guy like him? Yujito's jaw dropped. This guy she lowered her head. Had he really abandoned the hostage? But Killer B was still under Akatsuki's control, which was beyond Yujito's expectations. Without hesitation, she turned around and left. What are you doing? Natsuo asked. I'm going to rescue him. Yujito answered without hesitation. Sorry, you still haven't paid me for the ransom. Natsuo instantly appeared in front of Yujito, shaking his head. I can't work for free, Yujito said angrily. Akatsuki is the enemy of the five great shinobi villages. Now I'm going to cause trouble for Akatsuki. Why are you stopping me? Because you didn't pay. Natsuo spread his hands. I don't care if you go find Akatsuki or not. But if I have worked for you, you must pay me, of course. If you can escape from Akatsuki by your own strength and prove that my meddling is completely unnecessary, it doesn't matter if you don't pay. But if you can't escape, it means that my work was useful and you should pay me for it. You can't just stop paying the salary, right? Natsuo had a serious expression, like a construction worker demanding his salary, although Yujito just wanted him to go to hell. What payment do you want? Yujito suppressed her anger. Natsuo, give me a baby. Do not even dream about it. Yujito got angry. In the fourth great shinobi war, you killed so many of our fellow Kumogaka shinobi, and you still expect me to give you children. You're delusional. Then we can only see if you can escape. Natsuo said with a shrug. I won't knock you unconscious and take you back to Akatsuki. But if you can escape from me, that'll be fine too. Although escaping from me will be a little more difficult, at least you won't be in mortal danger. That should be fair enough. Yujito gritted her teeth and glared at Natsuo. She then made a sudden leap and soared towards the trees, before shooting out a mouse-shaped blue flame from her mouth, quickly heading towards Natsuo. Mouse hairball. Natsuo smiled lightly and disappeared in an instant. The next second, he appeared in front of Yujito. Yujito's body was quickly covered by the tail beast chakra. Jinchuriki form. Version 1. At the same time, the nails on both hands instantly lengthened, similar to the Neneko's cat chakra claw, then roared as she lunged towards Natsuo. Cat claw. You really are a naughty little kitten. Natsuo smiled lightly, catching Yujito's hands with ease and pressing her down on the ground. Boom. The earth shook as Natsuo hit it hard, creating a deep crater. Yujito screamed in pain, and the tail beast chakra quickly faded away. Very good, you proved that you have no ability to escape from Akatsuki. Natsuo smiled. So, as a capture Kinoichi, I guess you have to be prepared for the consequences, right? So I won't be nice to you. As he spoke, he pressed Yujito's hands with one hand and slid the other deep under her neck. Yujito. But she was an experienced Kunoichi, who had been through countless battles. So even though Natsuo had found something, she barely showed any signs of disturbance. There was a strange feeling though. However, she simply changed her expression slightly and regained her usual calm and composure. It's just a body. Do whatever you want. Yujito said nonchalantly. It seems that you are looking for this kind of cheap pleasure. It's ironic that the most powerful shinobi in the world would let himself be carried away by a woman's body, regardless of the overall situation. And look, now that I see it, you've even changed my clothes. You're quick with your movements. His expression was calm. No matter the situation, he didn't even frown. On the contrary, there was even a hint of disdain. That's all. Come on. As if I'm afraid of you. Yujito frowned. I'm not the fifth rakage for nothing. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. This girl shinobi, by nature, must be people who endure and tolerate. And Kinoichi, trained to the standard of assassins, must also discard any feminine weaknesses and stand firm. They must be able to face adversity without giving in, even in the face of their own weaknesses. Despite attempts at manipulation, torture, and even shameful punishments, they must keep their will firm, and not allow their will to be shaken. However, in reality, almost no Kinoichi can achieve this. After all, pain and insults cause anger when it comes to abuse, even if you have a stronger will. The body will instinctively give way. But Yujito was different. No matter how Natsuo touched her, she didn't change her expression. Her face did not show even the slightest emotion, as if her body had no sensations at all. Does your body have no sensation due to some modification? Or is it just your will that is preventing any reaction on your part? Natsuo looked at her seriously and raised an eyebrow. Is this possible? How can the weak of Kanoha understand the will of the Kumo Shinobi? Yujito let out a light snort, keeping his expression unfazed. Natsuo took a deep breath and said, Amazing. As expected a fifth rakage, it seems that everyone underestimated you. In the Naruto series, Yujito was only a Jinchuriki who was easily captured by Akatsuki, and her strength is only of ordinary cage level. But this willpower to be honest, Natsuo almost thought she was from the One Piece world. In fact, after Natsuo paid attention, Yujito possessed very strong mental strength. He had never encountered someone with such strength. I can become fifth rakage. Do you think it's a fluke? Yujito snorted coldly. Natsuo was slightly silent. This woman's will was really terrifying. Although currently her strength was not as great as Killer B's but her potential far exceeded his. However, the shinobi world valued blood inheritance too much. But if it were transferred to a world where effort and willpower are more important, she could become very strong. Awesome. Natsuo slowly withdrew his hand and sighed softly. Looks like you won't change your mind anytime soon. 
Not even in the long term, Yujito answered calmly. She looked at him, a mocking expression on her face. Akatsuki has already defeated Komogaka. Now, the only tailed beast they have left uncaptured is Konoha's Nine Tails. Their next target will be Konoha. At this point, are you really thinking about flirting? Yujito's gaze turned cold, as if she was looking at a scum. After Itachi took great risks to provide you with information, you used it to trick a woman from another village into giving you children. However, Natsuo looked at Yujito strangely. Who said he was the one who told me? Yujito's pupils constricted. Before she could say anything else, her eyes rolled back, and she lost consciousness. Natsuo slowly withdrew the hand that knocked her unconscious. I'm sorry, although it was a bit abrupt, but my time is limited, Natsuo said softly. I would appreciate it if you could get some sleep. Then he took her to the Rochi cave, so that the sake princesses could take care of her. After returning he headed in a certain direction at full speed. After all the time of the agreed meeting was approaching, Abito had already managed to successfully retreat from Kumogika. Kumo's forces, despite all his efforts and tricks, were unable to harm him in the slightest. If it wasn't for buying time for Akatsuki's members, he wouldn't even need this time. He could evacuate directly. However, when he arrived at the designated meeting point, he found the place empty. After a moment of hesitation, he took out Akatsuki's ring. It was a special communication artifact of Akatsuki, which not only assisted in sealing the tail beast within the demonic statue of the outer path, but also, once activated, notified others to connect and communicate. Basically, it was like modern communication devices in the next second, images of Zetsu, Kisum and others appeared. Hey, I just wanted to call you. Why are you not at the agreed place? Abito couldn't help but asked. Where did you go? It's good that you came, Toby. I was just about to ask you to connect. Seeing Abito, Dadara breathed a sigh of relief and said, You have no idea. That guy Natsuo stopped us. That guy is really fierce. If we hadn't lowered our heads in time, I'm afraid you wouldn't have seen us. What happened? Nagato, who had just appeared, looked at Dodoro and the other two. Why did Natsuo appear there? Have you completed your mission? We could say yes. Zetsu said softly. He rescued the Jinchuriki from the two tails. But I kept some of the two tails chakra. Which should be enough. As for why he was there, Dadara, Kisum, and Zetsu looked at Itachi in unison. Of course a spy informed him of our actions. A spy Abito's expression changed slightly, and Nagato instantly became serious as well. They all looked in the direction of Itachi, eyes full of vigilance. If there is a spy in Akatsuki, this man would be the prime suspect. Was he the one who informed Kanoha about our operation? Zetsu and Dadara also looked at Itachi with a murderous look on their faces. Regarding Itachi's identity, Zetsu and Kisum knew it from the beginning. However, when they looked, what they saw was Itachi's puzzled expression. Are you doubting me? Itachi kept his face impassive, but his eyes reflected genuine confusion. I haven't done anything at all. Don't forget that you were the ones who, suspicious of me and fearing that I would reveal information, decided to have Kakuzu watching me all the time. If you want to know if I did something, why don't you ask him? He had not revealed any information. If he had, he would have escaped from Omegaka immediately afterwards. Even if he had the Eternal Man Jekyo, he didn't want to compete with the Rinnegan and several Akatsuki members at once. Conan, Kakuzu, Nagato with this equipment, he would be completely trapped in Omegaka. Atachi hurried to explain as he looked around. Kakuzu, why don't you say something? Where is Kakuzu? Why isn't he online yet? Killed by you. Dadara frowned. Kakuzu and I are in Omegaka. Do you think I could act without the leader noticing? Itachi snorted coldly. That's true. Everyone nodded slightly. So why didn't Kakuzu show up? In fact, not only Kakuzu, even Conan hasn't appeared. When one member activates contact, everyone else can feel it through the ring receptors on their hands and immediately go into contact mode. How is it possible that so much time has passed and they haven't shown up? The Akatsuki members showed confusion on their faces. Conan. Nagato's expression changed slightly. In the next second, he went offline directly. Itachi frowned and left a sentence. I'll go down and have a look. That said, he also logged out, leaving behind Abito and the others looking at each other in confusion. After a while, Itachi came back online with a strange expression. The situation is clear. The spy is Kakuzu. It was he who betrayed us by revealing our operation. Itachi said quietly. They were blaming the wrong person. So where is the leader? Why hasn't he connected? And what about Conan? Dadara and the others still had guarded looks on their faces. As Shinobi, they do not easily trust others. Itachi is acting like he's innocent, but God knows if he's playing tricks right now, trying to figure out where they are. The leader is the one who deserves the most trust. About the leader and Conan Itachi looked uncomfortable. Conan was ambushed and captured by Kakuzu, who has defected from Akatsuki. He took her directly. The leader is going after them right now. Hearing this, Abito couldn't help but ask. Why would Kakuzu take Conan? It's hard enough to defect from Akatsuki, why bother taking Conan? Well, maybe maybe. Atachi worked hard to organize his words, but finally discovered that he, who was used to fighting and killing, did not have this literary quality. So in the end he could only speak directly. Well, he might be trying to sell Conan to Natsuo. Everyone fell silent upon hearing this. 
This possibility it's pretty big to happen. Brother Kakuzu was very excited back then, as he finally acted now. In the middle of the jungle, Kakuzu was running desperately. He carried the unconscious Conan on his shoulders. His steps were frantic, not caring about leaving any traces, only focused on increasing his speed to the maximum. Meanwhile, behind him, boom, boom, boom. It was as if an invisible, colossal creature was chasing him, crushing the trees behind him like grass with astonishing ease. However, the creature that fell the trees could not be seen as if it had become completely invisible Kakuzu. An angry voice rang out, laden with suppressed anger, but still managed to articulate words. If you release Conan now, I will allow you to leave. You know me, I will never break my promise. I only want Conan. Leave Conan here. In the end, the voice was filled with almost crazed fury. Kakuzu knew that voice well. It was the voice of the leader he knew so well. But sorry, leader. Who let Akatsuki have no money? Kakuzu chuckled and looked back. I've had enough of this lately. Dodging and hiding. Not letting me earn any reward do you know how much we lost with that? And who made that buyer full of sincerity? Kakuzu laughed. Do you know how much he paid for Conan? Getting this money is comparable to my 10 years of hard work in Akatsuki. Kakuzu's eyes were full of madness and greed. Sure enough, it's still Natsuo. Nagato behind him gritted his teeth, his eyes were full of anger. When Natsuo first took over the Ichiha clan, he set a very high price for cage level Kinoichi. That's when Kakuzu almost wanted to drag Conan to claim the bounty. Of course, the result was that Conan beat him fiercely. Since then, every time Natsuo increased the price of the reward, Kakuzu couldn't help but talk to Conan, focusing on the spirit of sacrifice that a shinobi should have and explaining the precarious financial situation of their own organization. How much money was missing? Well, about the same amount as the reward Natsuo offered for a cage-level Kinoichi. This is the time when someone has to sacrifice themselves. The core members of the organization should step up to be a hero. Of course, whenever this happened, Conan would look at Kakuzu with a speechless face, and then beat him up. After so many years, Kakuzu's behavior was public knowledge. But even Nagato didn't expect that Kakuzu actually took the risk of being hunted down by him to attack Conan. Although her skill was not weak, how could she so easily defeat Conan? who was also a cage-level Kinoichi. Even if she is poisoned and drugged, it shouldn't be impossible for her to call for help before she loses consciousness. What did Kaku do to achieve all this? Kakuzu, no matter how much Natsuo gives you, I'll give you double. Nagato gritted his teeth and said, don't you love money? I'll give you more money. Is that okay? Is it just about money? He can offer it too. However, Kakuzu chuckled. Stop joking, leader. We know how much we have in Akatsuki. How much can you offer? Natsuo offered 5 billion, let alone double that. If you can get 5 billion without problems, I will release her immediately. Don't forget, boss. I'm the one who handles the money if you want to fool me. You'll have to show something real. Hearing this, Nagato opened his mouth but could not utter a word. It's not that Akatsuki doesn't make money, but Akatsuki also spent a lot of money. In addition, Nagato and Conan used part of the money to subsidize Omegaka. This is the place where his, Conan and Yahiko's dreams are. How could they not contribute? Although they still had a lot of assets, taking out 5 billion in one go not to mention 5 billion, not counting real estate and other fixed industries, but only working capital, it is a question whether he can afford 100 million. This is a number beyond the imagination of ordinary shinobi. Nagato said unwillingly, so you trust Natsuo to be able to get this amount of money? This is 5 billion. Ichiha is so rich. Of course I believe it. Kakuzu was full of confidence. People like you who know nothing about economics, have no idea how much money Ichiha has. He won't need to mortgage anything, his liquid funds are enough to pay my compensation. Besides, I didn't ask Natsuo to take out so much cash in one go, he can definitely pay in installments. The corner of Nagato's mouth twitched. He really didn't know if the Ichiha clan had that much money. But he is very clear that the Ichiha clan's industries even extended to Omegaka. Driven by years of research and advanced technology, the Ichiha clan has formed a complete assembly line of electrical products in the land of snow, with extremely high quality but surprisingly low prices, and excellent value for money. With that kind of production spanning the market throughout the shinobi world, it's no wonder the Ichiha clan has so much money. But are you so sure that Natsuo will keep his promise? Nagato was still trying to persuade him. This is 5 billion, isn't it enough to tempt him to betray you? Anyway, if he kills you, no one will know. However, Kakuzu said impatiently, Okay, I don't know if he will betray his promise. After so long as business partners, did he really think Kakuzu was so naive as to not probe his business partner? Kakuzu understood it completely. For someone like him, money was everything. But for someone like Natsuo, money was just a number. If Natsuo needed it, he just had to reach out, and he could get a large amount. And also Lida, stop trying to persuade me. Kaku turned around. Akatsuki is under siege from the shinobi world, and its future is increasingly bleak. But Achiha is like a rising sun, with infinite potential even if he doesn't give me money. I'm willing to get closer to Uchiha. Of course, the service attitude would not be so good if he doesn't give money. At least Conan is obviously too expensive as a gift. Hearing this, Nagato sighed softly, knowing that there was no hope of making Kakuzu release Conan through words. At first glance, the Akatsuki organization seemed to be one step away from its dream. 
All that remained was to recover the Nine Tails from Kanoha. But with Natsuo guarding him, God knows if they can really capture the Nine Tails. In order to reduce Komogaka's surveillance, they chose to go into hiding for a long time, causing Kakuza's income to drop significantly, making him decide to betray them. Such a person obviously cannot be persuaded to come back with words. So Kakuzu, do you really think he can make me back down just because you have a hostage? Nagato inhaled deeply, six parts of pain. The next second, five figures suddenly appeared around pain, as if they were stepping on something in the void. But if you look closer, you can vaguely see that they are standing on a creature invisible at first glance. Indeed, it is something similar to what he told me some kind of invisible summoning beast. Kakuzu narrowed his eyes slightly when he saw the scene in front of him. I'm definitely no match for the leader. He knew this from the moment he was invited by the leader years ago. But fortunately, Natsuo also gave me an ace up my sleeve. And just at that moment Pain extended a hand. Come here, Bansham Tenon. The powerful gravitational force appeared out of thin air. Kakuzu let out a muffled snort, several threads released from his back, and a round face mask monster emerged from behind him and leaped towards Pain. Under the effect of the Bansham Tenon, he quickly headed straight towards Pain. Hum, Nagato frowned. He knew very well that the mask monster made of black threads was Kakuzu's secret technique. Technique. But, what was that mark that was engraved on the monster's strange mask? Nagato frowned slightly and looked at the strange ceiling mark. He couldn't recognize what it was, but he could vaguely feel a great power emanating from it. But whatever it is, it's no match for the Rinnegan. Nagato thought, squeezing his hand tightly, increasing his attraction. And the next second, fire release. Intelligent hard work. Kakuzu's fire element mask shoots a small fireball. The small fireball immediately expanded, bursting into a giant firestorm, roaring forward as if it would consume everything. Under the influence of Pain's universal pull, the flames were even more ferocious and terrifying. But it is useless. In the eyes of God, everything is in vain. Pain said coldly. Pan stopped his attraction, and Pain's Petropath moved forward, holding out his hands to face the flames. The pre tart path is able to absorb ninjutsu-based techniques that are pure chakra or chakra-based, thereby nullifying their effect. Yet he has just touched the flames Nagato's expression changed slightly. The Petra path began to turn into stone at a speed visible to the human eye from the moment it came into contact with the flames. What kind of ability is this? Nagato frowned. On the other hand, Kakuzu sighed in relief. Indeed, as Natsuo said, Senjutsu cannot be absorbed by the six parts of pain. When Kakuzu informed Natsuo that he planned to betray Akatsuki and join him, Natsuo generously gave him various information about pain. And when Kakuzu expressed his intention to see if he could convince Conan to join the Achiha clan with him before leaving, Natsuo sent him all the information he knew about Conan, in addition to giving her five ceiling marks with Senjutsu Chakra. Although Natsuo had an immense chakra reserve, placing this type of ceiling mark also required a lot of energy. He could only place one a day at most. It was too valuable. After all, putting in more than that wouldn't leave Natsuo enough energy to revive the Ichiha clan. With a calculated sleight of hand, even a high-level expert like Conan was silently captured and taken away by Kakuzu, using one of the marks. Fire Release Intelligent hard work, Kakuzu's fire element mask launched fire release madly, and under the influence of the Senjutsu Chakra of Natsuo's mark, it strengthened itself with natural energy, and began to bombard Nagato indiscriminately. Even the six parts of pain were momentarily hit and ran for cover. And taking advantage of this moment, Kakuzu quickly opened the distance and ran forward without hesitation. It took a lot of effort for Nagato to overturn the masked monster, but Kakuzu had already escaped. Nagato gritted his teeth, not caring about the risk of his real body being exposed, abandoned the giant snake-tailed chameleon, and summoned the giant drill beak bird, mounted the summoning beast, and began chasing Kakuzu frantically. There was no other option, with his legs severely damaged, his mobility was severely limited, and he could only rely on the summoning beast's speed to chase him. But even if it was a flying summon beast, in reality, it was only slightly faster than a cage-level shinobi after much effort, he finally caught up with Kakuzu. And in that moment before he could act, Kakuzu actively released another mask monster. Lightning Release. False Darkness. Kakuzu's lightning element mask emitted a spear-shaped lightning bolt from his mouth, which then immediately pierced the summoning beast, which groaned as it fell from the sky. And the mask monster flew over directly and began to spray thunder. Damn it. Nagato was furious, but had to tangle with Kakuzu's lightning element mask. He had no choice. The lightning element mask also had a ceiling mark, which caused his strength to increase greatly. And although his strength is not a threat to Nagato, it still takes a certain amount of time to defeat him. Furthermore, Kakuzu's masks were not real humans. They did not fear death, while Nagato had to consider his chakra consumption and the upcoming fight. Every time Nagato tried his best to solve a masked monster and caught up to Kakuzu, he would immediately release another masked monster. With Natsuo's support, Kakuzu almost planned to have a confrontation with Nagato. Although one of the five marks was used to deal with Conan before, the remaining four were placed on each of his masks. If it weren't for Natsuo's serious warning that he would be defeated, as well as the fact that Natsuo seemed to know many secrets, Kakuzu decided not to face pain. And so, before one could catch the other, they were both moving quickly. Finally, they arrived at a quiet and lonely valley. Very good, you only have the last heart left now, Kakuzu. Nagato revealed his scrawny body, 
Sitting on top of the giant drill-beaked bird, panting slightly. Hand over Conan and I can let you go. Kakuzu's last heart couldn't be wasted like the masks. However, Kakuzu simply remained silent for a moment, and then raised his head. Leader, I didn't expect your true body to be like this so pitiful. It's something I didn't imagine. But have you ever considered why I dared to take a gamble on taking away Conan? who has been inseparable from you since I joined Akatsuki. Am I not afraid of your revenge on me? Hearing this, Nagato's pupils shrunk. But Kakuzu sighed lightly and continued. Of course, it's because there is someone behind me. Just as he finished speaking, a young man slowly emerged from behind a tree. Oh, I was on time. The young man said, Natsuo. Nagato's eyes were full of solemnity. You are here, Natsuo. Kakuzu breathed a sigh of relief when he saw him. Of course. Hadn't we agreed? Natsuo smiled slightly. I must also thank you for the information you gave me. Although it's a little hard to imagine that you, Kakuzu, are giving away information for free. Yes, the information about Akatsuki's attack on Kumogaku was leaked by Kakuzu to Natsuo. Kakuzu smiled, of course he doesn't like giving away such things for free. But this time, Natsuo's bounty was too big, 5 billion even enough to trigger a certain degree of war between the five great nations. Even if Kakuzu had to face a cage level, and risk being chased by an even more powerful boss. It was still a bit much giving a little more stuff on his part. Might give him some peace of mind getting paid right now. Still the old rule, transfer the money to the account you opened at Maya Bank. Natsuo glanced at Kakuzu. Although this time the figure is so large that it will probably take months to complete the transfer. Yes, I know. Kakuzu nodded. As for the reward, Kakuzu trusted Natsuo a lot. The reason why he dared to risk his life by kidnapping Conan from Omegaka was because of his trust in Natsuo. Without this trust, how would Kakuzu dare risk being chased by Nagato after kidnapping Conan? So, now... Kakuzu threw Conan towards Natsuo, and Natsuo received it without concern. The transaction was complete. Natsuo, Nagato was furious when he saw these two gangsters selling out his teammates in front of his face. Oh, it's our first time meeting each other, right? Natsuo greeted with a smile on his face. I'm a Chiha Natsuo, it's a pleasure to meet you, the leader of Akatsuki. Natsuo, return Conan to me. Nagato's voice was hoarse, or his voice was full of weakness. If you give me Conan back, I can pretend none of this ever happened. He suppressed his anger, his chakra dispersed slightly, emitting a powerful sense of oppression. How can I do that? Natsuo shook his head. I have paid a considerable price for her. Five billion, even for someone like me. It is not a small amount. How can I let my money go to waste? I can give you money. Nagato gritted his teeth. Although Akatsuki doesn't have that much money now, I can slowly raise it. I can even pay you interest. He had extreme confidence in himself even in the face of Natsuo, the most powerful shinobi in the world. He didn't believe he could lose. But even if he was sure of himself, he didn't think he could just take Conan away from Natsuo and guarantee that he wouldn't hurt her a flash of pain cross Nagato's eyes. He had already lost Yuhiko once. He didn't want to experience that again. Even if he had to humiliate himself before the enemy, he wanted to get his companion back. The powerful eye power erupted, pressing on Natsuo and Kakuzu, ready to attack at any moment. Kakuzu instantly felt his shoulders sink as if a hill was pressing on him. However, Natsuo was still smiling calmly. I'm sorry. I don't intend to sell what's mine. Besides, what's wrong with Conan joining the Achiha clan? Peace, happiness, wealth isn't it better than the disorder and exile that Akatsuki offers? Natsuo. Nagato finally couldn't bear it. Nagato coldly looked at Natsuo with a dense murderous aura and shouted furiously. Do you think you are the strongest in the world just because you are called the strongest shinobi? The strongest shinobi in the world is just simply the strongest shinobi. But you are no match for God. He suddenly stretched out a hand and pointed it at Natsuo. Banshum Tenen. Ha ha. However, Natsuo chuckled and shook his head. God, you, who were almost absorbed by the Rinnegan, can still call yourself God. As he spoke, the skeleton of the Susanoo emerged, rooting itself firmly in the earth to resist the invisible force of attraction. At the same time, he slashed fiercely with his sword. Nagato's eyes narrowed slightly. Shinra Tensei, clang. The Susanoo's sword was directly repelled, but the center of the collision caused a shockwave. Kakuzu backed away repeatedly, a grave expression in his eyes. One is recognized as the strongest in the shinobi world, and the other is the master of the mysterious Rinnegan. The battle between these two was probably the most intense in the shinobi world right now. The Manjekyo instantly appeared in Natsuo's eyes and began to spin rapidly. Amaterasu? A black flame appeared on Nagato's body. Nagato's expression changed slightly, showing pain. But the next moment, Shinra Tensei. Boom. The inextinguishable black fire was directly dispersed. Meanwhile, crack. Inside the Susanoo, the ground beneath Natsuo's feet suddenly shattered, and the Asura path shot out. As soon as he appeared, he threw a fist punch. As he headed towards Natsuo, his fist separated from his wrist like a missile fired ferociously. Flaming arrow of amazing ability. Natsuo tilted his head slightly, dodging the attack. But in the next second, the remaining arm turned into several rotating saws, making a shrill sound as they headed towards Natsuo. The Asura Path is a powerful mechanized humanoid even stronger than the puppet Sasori uses as his main body. The high level of technology involved even made one question if this was possible in a feudal society like the one in the Naruto series. But in the next moment, Natsuo stomped his foot brutally crushing the Asura 
path that had not yet completely emerged from the ground. Countless fragments of machinery, gears, and screws flew, and the rotating saws that were still moving stopped. Defeated in one blow, but Nagato did not change his face, because at this moment the Petra Path puppet was already close to Natsuo. He stretched out his hand, ignoring the Susanoo, and wanted to grab Conan, who was on Natsuo's shoulder. Susanoo grabbed the opponent straight away. But in Nagato's eyes, a flash of excitement appeared. Although the corporation just now was good, how could he think that such a simple combination of punches could defeat the recognized strongest in the shinobi world? Of course not. It was a trap. Blocking technique absorption seal. A highly advanced sealing technique granted by the Pritar path. That conjures a see-through barrier around the user's body. That is capable of absorbing any chakra regardless of any shape or nature transformation. Petra Path began to madly devour Natsuo's chakra. Even a tail beast can be drained by the Petra Path to the point of collapse, and then easily captured. The Susanoo's arm disappeared, unable to maintain its grip on the Petra Path. As I thought, even Susanoo is ultimately a variation of chakra, Nagato sighed in relief. And no matter how powerful a shinobi is, without chakra, he has no power at all. This is the rule of the shinobi world. Depending on the absorption of the Petra Path, it could drain Natsuo's chakra. Of course, it was not to capture Natsuo, but simply to snatch Conan away in a relatively gentle manner. But in the next second, Nagato's expression changed. Because the Petra Path had just stretched out his hand towards Conan, but in the next moment, he froze. His entire body turned into a statue at a speed visible to the naked eye. It's this weird chakra again. Nagato's mouth twitched. That's what Kakuzi used, did you give him that? It's called Chakra Senjutsu. Natsuo responded with a smile. It uses natural energy. Your master Jiraiya also knew how to use this. But unfortunately, he was not very skilled in using Senjutsu. Nagato's expression turned grim. The strange energy that Kakuzu had used at the beginning was a bit complicated for him to handle. Even the Petra Path that is being used now was destroyed by Nagato on his own initiative and repaired with the ability of the Naraka Path. And now, this strange energy, surprisingly, is also present in Natsuo or rather, this must be the power that Natsuo gave to Kakuzu. It seems impossible to get Conan back without hurting her. This man possesses a power that matches the rumors about him. Nagato took a deep breath and withdrew the energy spread on the six parts puppets. There was a hint of seriousness in his eyes. The giant draw-beaked bird beneath him spread its wings and suddenly lunged forward. In fact, the six parts of pain were just a way to compensate for Nagato's poor mobility. In reality, all the abilities of the six parts of pain were the abilities of Nagato's own Rinnegan. Although he had the advantage of sharing his vision, this small advantage could not compensate for problems such as chakra transmission and control delay. The true most powerful one was Nagato himself. As he flew, Nagato formed seals with one hand. Earth release. Swamp of the underworld. Suddenly, the ground beneath Natsuo turned to mud, and the entire Susanoo began to sink. Water release. Water bullet technique. A stream of water came out of Nagato's mouth, heading towards the muddy swamp and expanding it several times. Susanoo's body sank faster. Nagato is a genius who mastered the nature transformation of the five elements. Although he did not commonly use them, that did not mean that he was incapable of doing so. And he used this ninjutsu combination for a reason, okay? Now you're trapped, Nagato narrowed his eyes. After this he extended a hand, and a strong amount of chakra gushed out of him. Nagato looked at Conan with an apologetic expression. Sorry Conan, it looks like you won't be able to get out of Natsuo's hands unscathed. But I guess Susanoo's defense should prevent you from getting seriously hurt. He took a deep breath. Shinra Tensei, a powerful force of repulsion was formed. Although it did not reach the level of the Shinra Tensei that destroyed Kanova in the Naruto series. But it is definitely already a great power. Nagato launched this attack with the intention of destroying the Susanoo, causing some damage to Conan, and knocking out Natsuo, and then immediately rescuing Conan. Since Yohiko committed suicide for Conan years ago, and Hanzo continued to seek Akatsuki's destruction without keeping his word, Nagato had given up on the possibility of a perfect ending. Rescue Conan without harm. Nagato, who had lost his innocence long ago, would no longer be like before. He became a true shinobi, making decisions that a true shinobi would make. Attack and act decisively. Even if it meant that Conan was seriously injured, it would be better than failing to rescue. Perhaps the noise from the previous battle had awakened Conan, or perhaps the drug's effect on Conan had worn off, or perhaps Conan's stamina as a cage-level Kinoichi had caused the drugs to lose their effect. Conan moaned as she shook, slowly opening her eyes. She had woken up. It was a good thing that Conan woke up. After he blasted Susanoo away, even if she would suffer some injuries, she would be able to be free directly. Boom. A roar resounded. Smoke rose. Very good. A look of excitement flashed in Nagato's eyes. No one can stop Rinnegan's power. But the next moment Nagato's expression froze. Susanoo remained unfazed, standing there without a scratch. Nagato stared at Natsuo. What a bummer. Natsuo sighed. If I hadn't intervened, Conan would have been seriously injured. Nagato swallowed silently. Why? Why should I defend your companion? Of course, it's because I, Natsuo, am a good man who cares about women. Why do you also have the Rinnegan? Nagato suddenly raised his voice, his eyes filled with disbelief. Conan was shocked, and even Kakuzu, 
who was a little far away, was a little stunned. Everyone looked at him with the same disbelief in their eyes, focusing on Natsuo's eyes. The concentric circles of the six parts were hypnotic with deep purple pupils that seemed to carry with them a sense of mystery. Unquestionably, it was also the Rinnegan. How do you also have the Rinnegan? Nagato shouted in a hoarse voice. He had shouldered it all, attacking innocent people, attacking the five great shinobi villages that had done nothing harboring notorious missing nin, and going against Akatsuki's original purpose, participating in various wars, serving as a conflict monger all, because he firmly believed in his cause. He fervently believed that he would become a god, that all his actions were for his dream, Conan's dream, Yahiko's dream, the dream of all the people who had suffered because of the war, although people might suffer a little, that would only be the pain before dawn, because the warm glow of the dawn would finally emerge. That's why Nagato, a gentle man, abruptly changed his style. In the future, even the few people who cared about him like Jiraiya will die in his hands. And the reason why Nagato had such unwavering faith was because of his eyes. The Rinnegan. But why was there another pair of Rinnegan here? You're intrigued, aren't you? Natsuo smiled. Actually, it's very simple. These eyes are an evolution of the eternal Manjeki Shuringen. Natsuo gently touched his eye sockets, the corners of his mouth raised. Although you seem to consider it an amulet, a creed, in reality, an eye is just an eye. Whether it's the Shuringen, Byakugan, all these eyes, they are just weapons of a shinobi. The three of them fell silent upon hearing these words. Rinnegan is an evolution of eternal Manjeki Shuringen. That's impossible. You're talking nonsense. Conan, who was held by Natsuo, screamed angrily. If the Rinnegan is an evolution of the Shuringen, why does Nagato have these eyes? Nagato is from the Yuzumaki clan, not Yorichiha clan. Certain. If the Rinnegan is really an evolution of the Shuringen like Natsuo said, then how come Nagato has them too? However, Natsuo simply looked at these people silently, with a calm expression, and the pupils of his eyes changed from the Rinnegan to the Eternal Manjakyo then to the Manjakyo, and then to the ordinary Sharingan. Then, his pupils began to change again, from the Sharingan, through the Manjakyo, to the Rinnegan. His Susanoo also showed no fluctuations, except when Natsuo switched to the ordinary Sharingan, where the Susanoo flickered slightly before becoming stable once again. Conan and Nagato's hearts were slowly sinking. Kakuzu also had a serious expression and began to panic. Susanoo is a pupil technique unique to Manjakyo Sharingan. Nowadays, this is almost public information among high-ranking shinobi. This was a fact. So, Natsuo's eyes were his own, or at least least those of other members of the Ichiha clan. However, those eyes were showing Rinnegan abilities Nagato gritted his teeth and released a Shinra Tensei. The power was overwhelming, even more powerful than when he tried to save Conan. But Natsuo just smiled lightly, activating the Rinnegan and releasing his own Shinra Tensei. Boom. The two Shinra Tensei collided and the center of the collision point visible to the naked eye twisted and the space rubbed violently, finally directly causing an explosion. The Shinra Tensei technique was exclusive to the Rinnegan and now Natsuo was also proving to possess that power. So. My eyes, why are they Rinnegan? Nagato looked stunned at his reflection where the pattern of the Rinnegan was clearly reflected in a mirror of water that he had created with his extraordinary skill in water release. Who knows? Natsuo smiled. But according to what I know, in my Achiha clan shrine, there is a stone tablet that records the clan's secrets. When one activates the Sharingan they can read the secrets related to the Manjekyo Sharingan. Instructions on how to obtain it and its ability to control tailed beasts. And when I got the Eternal Manjekyo, guess what I saw on the stone tablet? Natsuo smiled. I could see in the stone tablet the method to obtain the Rinnegan as well as the steps to perform the infinite Tsukiyomi, which is the salvation for the Achiha clan and the key to world peace. The reason why Achiha Madara and Senja Hashirama had a big battle back then was because Madara wanted to carry out the plan of the infinite Tsukiyomi, but was rejected by Hashirama. The two sides began to fight, and finally Senja Hashirama won Natsuo looked meaningfully at Nagato. Yes, Ichiha Madara's purpose back then was the same as yours now. Collect the tail beasts. The more Nagato and the others listened, the more perplexed they became. Is it Ichiha Madara who awakened the Rin again, and then gave his eyes to Nagato? At that moment both Nagato and Conan thought about that possibility. Of course, this also raised many questions. But upon observing Natsuo's calm demeanor when using the Rin again and then looking at Nagato, who seemed frail and haggard, they realized that Natsuo's words were true. Because if it weren't for the lack of compatibility of the Rinnegan, how could Nagato who possesses the physique of the Yuzumaki clan become like this? Conan, who always showed a calm and distant attitude, suddenly looked like a scared little girl. Her eyes full of panic. From time to time, she looked at Nagato with an expression of deep concern. After all, Nagato was the one who suffered the most from the consequences of all this. Nagato could no longer maintain the composure he used to have as Akatsuki's leader. His expression continually changed. She sometimes showed pain, other times anger, and sometimes just confusion or despair. The reason why Nagato had abandoned the principles of compassion he once espoused. The reason why he believed himself to be a god who had to educate humanity. It all came down to the fact that he possessed the Rinnegan. He, who had obtained the Rinnegan, and who had been influenced by the incident with Yahiko, 
firmly believed that all of this was his destiny. But now, he was being told that his original conviction was wrong from the beginning. How could he not be deeply affected by that? He even he might collapse mentally. But Nagato was Nagato. As the leader of Akatsuki, he managed to regain his calm. It doesn't matter who gave me the Rinnegan. The facts haven't changed. Nagato took a deep breath, and his eyes became firm again. Natsuo, since you know about the infinite Tsukuyomi, you should know that the Ten Tails has infinite power. This power is enough to intimidate other nations. So Akatsuki's goal hasn't changed, and my mission hasn't changed. Gain the power of the Ten Tails, use this power to instantly destroy a nation, and make the world feel that pain, in the hopes that they will appreciate and value peace. This is the goal of Nagato. No matter what the person who gave him the Rinnegan wants to do, the Ten Tails formed by the Tail Beasts can truly achieve his goals. The main difference could be that Nagato and Conan had already suspected Abito's plans and were planning to counter him. But in reality, they had never let their guard down against Abito. Natsuo, thank you for telling me this. Nagato said calmly, but I can't hand Conan over to you. Please give her back to me. As he said that powerful pupil power burst out. Shinra Tensei, a powerful repulsion force was generated, and it crashed down fizzly. Hey, your body is already in this state, and you still want to compete with me. Natsuo chuckled lightly. This is not good for you. Of course it's bad. Although they both possessed the Rinnegan upon seeing Natsuo's relaxed and confident attitude and comparing it to Nagato's emaciated figure, it is evident that the exhaustion from manipulating the Rinnegan is completely different for each of them. Nagato remained impassive, of course. He knew this, but Conan, who was being carried by Natsuo, suddenly twisted her body. She jumped into the air, her body suddenly turned into paper, and numerous pieces of paper began to fly around her, dance of the Shikigami. The pieces of paper automatically folded into simple airplane shapes, and then shot out like a machine gun. Nagato, of course, was aware that a battle of attrition was not in her favor, but now that Conan was awake, it meant she could fight too. In fact, the reason he was in this situation was because of the great pressure Natsuo had put on him. In the Naruto series when he faced Jiraiya, Nagato had enough confidence in himself that he never allowed Conan to fight. But Natsuo was different. Despite having the same Rinnegan, Nagato had lost his invincible confidence. Although he was firm, he must recognize the gap between his own weak body and Natsuo. Not to mention that his legs were injured, which naturally put him at a disadvantage. He wasn't confident that he could beat Natsuo, so he let Conan act. Hey, precious, could you behave a little? Natsuo said as a dark purple chakra appeared around her. In reality, both Conan and Natsuo were inside the Susanoo. Natsuo simply placed another chakra between the two of them to form a solid inner wall. Conan took a big leap back but was soon close to Susanoo's wall. Her expression changed slightly. The only way Conan could break Susanoo's solid barrier was by using explosive tags. However, anyone who knew anything about explosions knew that in confined spaces, the explosive power would double. She could break the Susanoo with explosive tags, but she she would kill herself in the process. Natsuo stretched out his hand calmly, and a powerful gravitational force appeared out of thin air. Bancho Tenen. Conan turned around for a while, and her whole body inevitably flew towards Natsuo. This strength is stronger than Nagato. Conan muttered under her breath with an unpleasant expression. As Conan approached, he suddenly extended his hand and the pieces of paper automatically transformed into a sharp spear, stabbing Natsuo fiercely. However, in the next instant, Natsuo dispersed them with one blow. Aren't you a little naughty, miss? Natsuo chuckled lightly. Don't you know that attacking someone has its consequences? While speaking, Natsuo had slightly adjusted the position of his palm. Conan, under the effect of the Bancho Tenen, had directly collided his softness against Natsuo's outstretched palm. Conan was stunned for a moment, then a red blush quickly appeared on her cold and distant face. Let go of me. Conan shouted angry and embarrassed. She instantly turned into pieces of paper, even the part held by Natsuo. As her real body manifested to the side, a long paper spear appeared out of nowhere in her hand. As soon as her body fully appeared, Conan stabbed the spear directly without hesitation. At the same time, Nagato also glared at Natsuo, his eyes filled with resentment. As an adult, as a shinobi, as a god. He shouldn't be angry, after all, generally speaking, they had suffered no losses. But Conan was his partner since they were children. She was the only person he could trust after Yahiko's death. How could he see Conan? and being intimidated. Shinra Tensei. Nagato shouted angrily, and Chakra gushed out all over his body. The powerful repulsive force forcefully pressed over. However, Natsuo simply countered Nagato's attack with his own Shinra Tensei. At the same time, with his other hand, he activated the blocking technique absorption seal, and the approaching paper spear was completely disintegrated. Conan was a little surprised, but she also knew the powers of the Rinnegan, so she was able to recognize the ability used by Natsuo. Instinctively, she tried to back away but realized that the space behind her inside the Susanoo seemed to have shrunk. Natsuo laughed, reaching out towards Conan while continuing to use the Petra path. Conan gritted her teeth and sent out paper airplanes, but they were all disintegrated by Natsuo. And the next second, Natsuo's hand reached for her again, grab, knead, squeeze, pull. A series of movements executed with mastery, 
highlighting his expert skill. Bastard. Conan blushed, fiercely removed Natsuo's hand and then attacked again. Nagato was also furious, launching uncontrolled attacks from the outside. One inside the Susanoo, the other outside. One was a cage-level shinobi, the other was a super cage level. Both of them were launching frantic attacks. Meanwhile, Natsuo's response was simple. Whatever technique Nagato launched from the outside, he countered it with another technique. But with Conan he wouldn't do the same. After her attacks were easily neutralized, Natsuo simply advanced with his hand a direct approach without delays. Kakuzu was speechless. He knew Natsuo had a soft spot for powerful Kunoichi. But he didn't expect it to be so outrageous. Conan was clearly a cage-level Kunoichi, who once fought Sasori alone which eventually led to her joining Akatsuki. And Nagato, as a leader, was even more formidable. And here was Natsuo, facing the two, as if he were doing an ninjutsu exhibition with Nagato, and he even seemed to have room to enjoy his showdown against Conan. With that carefree expression, one would assume that he could handle attacks of this level for hours without problems. Conan and Nagato realized the problem. His teeth gnashed with humiliation. They were both powerful shinobi, how long had it been since they felt so helpless? The earth shook violently. The air resonated with explosions. Kakuzu couldn't continue watching the battle and had to run out desperately. But he was still swept away by the aftermath and flew straight out. Nagato stopped his attacks as he gasped. And seeing Natsuo who was still intimidating Conan he gritted his teeth, his eyes red with rage. How is it possible that all my attacks have been blocked? Nagato thought that because they both have the Rinnegan the difference in strength wouldn't be that big. Plus he has had years developing the Rinnegan, but still he couldn't defeat it. Nagato was almost out of breath, his thin body trembling as if he would collapse at the slightest wind. The great expenditure of energy had left him feeling weak. And meanwhile, Natsuo still had the mind to annoy Conan. The gap between them Nagato took a long breath. None of his attacks could make Natsuo show an opening. So the only option Nagato had left was Nagato was silent for a moment. A flash of determination flashed in his eyes. He quickly formed hand seals. Nagato, wait. Conan's complexion changed slightly, and she subconsciously called out. However, Nagato's movements did not slow down in the slightest. Summoning, demonic statue of the outer path. The next second the earth quaked. A giant monster emerged from the ground. The demonic statue is a giant, earthen-colored humanoid entity with a mummified appearance, a body shape similar to a robe, and a number of spike-like protrusions on its back. It towers over even the tail beasts, with the eight tails only reaching his chin. Just like the members of the Akamichi clan at their maximum size. It is almost half the size of Earth release. Sandwich technique. The statue has nine eyes the size of an adult man, of which five were open. The ten tails Natsuo said to himself in his mind. It really is impressive. The demonic statue of the outer path is the husk of the ten tails. That remained after its chakra was separated from its body. Although stripped of his chakra, he was still incredibly resilient and possessed astonishing destructive force. When Nagato summoned it for the first time, he devastated the shinobi of Omegaka and the shinobi of the Kanoha root. And that was when the ten tails was still just an empty shell. Now, however, he had absorbed five of the tail beast's roar. As soon as the demonic statue appeared, it let out a ferocious roar. A shocking aura emanates from it, as if it is a fierce beast that has broken the seal. However, Conan was filled with worry. The demonic statue was powerful, but it also came at a huge cost. Nagato, although initially thin due to the burden the Rinnegan placed on his body, was at least still a seemingly normal human being. But during the battle in which Yuhiko died, after summoning this monstrosity, Nagato began to lose weight at a speed visible to the naked eye. Finally, he became the thin figure he was now, so frail that it looked like a light wind could knock him over. The consumption of this thing is really too exaggerated. And it even had a sinister and malevolent aura that was a little disturbing. This was not something that should be invoked lightly. Of course, Nagato was aware of all this. But this is the only way he has left. At least, it was an option Natsuo didn't have. The demonic statue pierced Nagato's back with the black receivers. While madly draining his life force and chakra, he could only grit his teeth in pain. But still, his eyes showed unwavering determination. Do it. The demonic statue stepped forward, extending its huge hands towards Natsuo's Susanoo. However, Natsuo smiled since everything happened as he expected. Then he looked in Conan's direction and activated the Yumenso technique accessing Conan's subconscious and amplifying the concern he feels for Nagato, as well as his fear of losing him. At the same time he implanted the idea that any request on his part is acceptable as long as he can save Nagato's life in addition to reinforcing the idea of being loyal out of gratitude to save Nagato's life. Well, it's time to take this fight more seriously. The corners of Natsuo's mouth raised and an extremely powerful chakra suddenly radiated from his body. In the next instant, two black marks appeared on his face as well as under his eyes. Sage mode. Hum. Both Conan and Nagato frowned with serious expressions. They could feel a stronger pressure emanating from Natsuo. Natsuo clapped his hands together and the Senjutsu chakra surged from his body. The trees began to grow violently as if thousands of years were compressed into an instant. The branches and trunks twisting and intertwining to form a wooden statue of titanic proportions. Sage art would release. True several thousand hands. It's not over yet. Natsuo's eyes burst out with power. 
The Susanu suddenly disintegrated, and dark purple chakra gushed directly towards the enormous statue, enveloping it like armor. Rinnegan, would release Natsuo, you have more secrets than I expected. Nagato took a deep breath even he felt the boundless sense of oppression. But still, I don't think you're a match for my demonic statue. The huge demonic statue would act forcefully. The Susanu true several thousand hands counterattacked with several fists colliding with the demonic statue. Susanu, top transformed Buddha. Instantly, a huge shock with spread out from the clash between the two. The sky split and the earth shook. It was as if the heavens and the earth had been transformed. Natsuo put his palms together again. Sage Art, Gate of the Great God. Several red tori descended from the sky and crashed down hard, pinning the demonic statue to the ground. Each tori accurately hit the demonic statue's limbs. One to block the left hand, another to block the right hand. Another to immobilize the left leg, another to press the right leg under that immense force. The demonic statue was firmly crushed to the ground. At the same time, an even larger tori descended from the sky and locked firmly around the demonic statue's neck. The size and form of these tori which boasts an absolute binding force, matches the target in which it is used against. Not only is the target arrested and unable to move even a finger, but the Tori also blocks their will of opposing the technique and is thus rendered completely docile. Nagato opened his eyes in amazement. He felt the demonic statue's chakra becoming chaotic. Although these red Tori look simple, they were as heavy as mountains, preventing the demonic statue from moving. In the Naruto series, this is the technique used by the first Hokage to suppress the Ten Tails, and even the Ten Tails was unable to free itself. How could the demonic statue be able to achieve this when it was just a shell? It's not over yet. Natsuo chuckled. In the next instant, the wood human Susanu, sitting on the head of the titanic wooden statue, suddenly stood up and grew even larger. He extended his palm and condensed a long sword, then jumped and slashed. The wood human Susanu's sword fell heavily directly on the demonic statue, sending splinters of wood flying. It's pretty tough, Natsuo said with a smile. But it's okay, I can take my time. He swung the sword like rain, each blow with force. The demonic statue was firmly stuck on the ground, but it could only withstand Natsuo's attacks, emitting roars that sounded almost like wails of fury. Nagato was pouring chakra frantically, but was struggling to keep up. Not because the demonic statue was not powerful, but because the gap between him and Natsuo was too big. The biggest difference between them was chakra. Even if Nagato is from the Yuzumaki clan, how could he compare to Natsuo in terms of chakra? who had had almost 200 children and the later they were born, the stronger they would be due to the attributes they would inherit in addition to improvements such as the sage body, the six paths chakra among other rewards. Speaking only in terms of chakra, Natsuo was almost equivalent to ten tails. Nagato gritted his teeth, his eyes filled with blood veins. The veins in his temple pulsed furiously, without caring. He squeezed all the chakra from his body to feed the demonic statue, hoping to free him from Natsuo's oppression. No matter how hard he tried, the tori that kept the demonic statue trapped remained unfazed. Nagato coughed again and again, and the corners of his mouth had already overflowed with blood. Every cell in his body felt pain, and his whole body seemed to have lost weight again. The vital fire that normally enveloped him now seemed to be on the verge of being extinguished at any moment. As he wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, determined to squeeze every last drop of chakra from his body. No matter the cost, Conan sighed softly and turned. That's enough, Natsuo. Don't continue, I'll agree to go with you. Conan took a deep breath and slowly closed his eyes. She couldn't stand it anymore. They couldn't win. They had no chance. Furthermore, little by little it seemed acceptable to her to accept going with Natsuo, if she could save Nagato. When the Akatsuki organization faced Rasa and Terumi Mei, Conan felt that they were formidable opponents. Even the Akatsuki members suffered losses against them. But now it seems that the reason why the two of them were able to fight Natsuo was entirely because Natsuo didn't use all his strength and was playing with them. No, Conan, Nagato shouted angrily, don't give up. I'll save you right away. As he spoke, Nagato was about to desperately squeeze out the last drop of chakra. But the next moment, a figure appeared next to him, placing a hand on his shoulder. Give up, to be honest, you really have no hope. Natsuo pressed lightly on Nagato's shoulder, obviously only with very light force. But Nagato still felt a heavy pressure. He froze and turned his head. Flying Thunder God technique. Yeah. Nagato inhaled deeply and exhaled long, a flash of desperation in his eyes. Even if he tried his hardest and managed to defeat the Susanu wood human, Natsuo could simply take Conan and run away easily. The result of his desperate struggle would be in vain. Not to mention that Natsuo now appeared behind him very easily, ready to attack at any moment. But even so, I won't give up. Nagato's eyes flashed determination. He completely ignored the existence of Natsuo beside him and frantically mobilized his chakra. He knew that the chances of success were minimal, his behavior bordered on suicide. But he couldn't bear to see Conan fall into Natsuo's hands. Even if it meant his own death, he wouldn't let all of this happen. Natsuo saw Nagato's decision and frowned. You are treating me like the big bad, right? Generally, when the protagonist fights the villain, they do their best in this almost desperate situation. It is in these moments when the protagonists begin to unleash their maximum potential. And considering Natsuo's sinful deal with Kakuzu. It seems reasonable to say that he is a villain. However, with Nagato's current physical condition, let alone having a burst of power, it is still a question whether he will be able to live the next second. What Natsuo can see, Conan, who has been friends with Nagato for many years, 
can naturally see it too. Nagato, Conan's expression changed, and he said hastily, Natsuo, stop him. Yes. Natsuo chuckled. He directly reached out and touched Nagato's back and pulled out the countless black rods inserted in Nagato's body. Blood splattered everywhere. Nagato's expression changed slightly. Those black rods were what connected his body to the demonic statue. They were also the conduit through which he transferred his own chakra to the demonic statue. By losing this conduit, Natsuo, who also possesses the Rinnegan, could compete for control of the demonic statue. In the end, it's not possible, right? Nagato sighed softly and felt Natsuo's hand begin to exert force. Is he going to use the Petropath to drain all my chakra? In my current situation, I can't resist him at all, it's over. He closed his eyes in despair. But in the next second, he opened them in amazement. Because he discovered that Natsuo was not only not absorbing his chakra, but he was injecting a large amount of chakra into him. The wound caused by the removal of the black rods began to stop bleeding and heal rapidly under the influence of this chakra. The legs that lost the ability to walk quickly recovered at a speed visible to the naked eye. The skin, pale and without a trace of blood, began to change from white to a healthier tone, almost the same as that of a normal person. His previously skeletal body also began to rapidly fill with vitality. It was as if the cells regained their vitality. From afar, Nagato no longer looked like the living skeleton he was before. He now looked more like a man who, due to spending a lot of time at home, had a little pale skin and an air of lack of health. This is Nagato stared blankly at his hand, the pale and weak palm gave him a sense of strength again. That sensation, so familiar yet forgotten, made him feel as if he were imbued with a sense of invincibility. At that moment Conan also walked away from Natsuo. When she saw that scene she was pleasantly surprised. Nagato, are you recovering? Natsuo? How did you do it? Conan looked at Natsuo with surprise, especially when he looked at Nagato's disabled legs, his eyes were filled with relief. Nagato's legs, which were once severely injured by Hanzo in his attempt to save her, no longer showed signs of her old injury. At that moment the clues left in Conan's subconscious began to influence her to accept Natsuo even more, and even want to voluntarily go with him out of the immense gratitude she felt for improving Nagato's condition. It's just a small use of the yin-yang release. Natsuo smiled slightly. Nagato was silent for a moment. He knew that what Natsuo just did was no small use of yin-yang release. Despite possessing the Rinnegan for years and having knowledge of five-element ninjutsu as well as the yin-yang release, he would not be able to achieve this. It wasn't even close to the effects Natsuo had achieved. He couldn't even achieve a cheap version of the technique. Conan breathed a sigh of relief. She knew how bad Nagato's physical condition was. That was the reason why Nagato planned to collect tail beasts through the Akatsuki organization instead of doing it alone. It was all due to his poor physical condition. Nagato was not afraid to face large shinobi villages. He was confident that, with the Rinnegan, he was one of the most powerful shinobi in the world, and there was no opponent who could defeat him using numbers alone. However, defeating large shinobi villages was one thing, staying firm in the face of that wear and tear was another. That was why he had recruited so many missing nin, and sent them on missions to collect the tailed beasts. But now, Nagato had completely recovered his health. Although Nagato still felt a little weak, now that he had gotten rid of the burden of the demonic statue, the remaining problems could be easily solved with just his Yuzumaki clan lineage. Nagato looked at Natsuo full of complexity. Why did you save me? Because then I look less like a villain. Natsuo pondered for a moment, but then chuckled. It's okay? I was just joking. I just feel that even if I save you, you can't threaten me. Well, if so, why not try to win a girl's heart? Natsuo glanced at Conan out of the corner of his eye, as if to say, Yes, I'm trying to impress you. Conan couldn't help but roll his eyes back. Although she had many internal critics, Conan still bowed her head towards Natsuo with gratitude. Thank you Natsuo, no problem, after all. I have always been very generous with my wives, Natsuo said with a mocking smile. Nagato moved his lips and gritted his teeth. Natsuo, can't we negotiate about this matter? You have seen the power of the demonic statue. If I told you that I could give you control of the demonic statue and the tail beasts within it, would you release Conan? Natsuo looked at him strangely. You have a good calculation, considering that you have already lost the battle. You are trying to persuade me with what will probably be confiscated after your defeat. Nagato was silent. Yes, he has been defeated. In theory, the demonic statue and the tailed beasts inside it should have been Natsuo's loot. If not, he might not even be willing to trade it for Conan, since this is the only pillar of his strategic weapon. Giving up the demonic statue would mean giving up his dream with Yohiko and Conan, and giving up on peace itself. For the sake of peace, he can even kill his teacher Jureya. If defeat had not become a reality now, how could he be willing to give up his dream and take Conan? But, I don't want this thing, Natsuo said, shaking his head, far beyond what Nagato had expected. Both Conan and Nagato were surprised by this unexpected response. Actually, it's not like you guys think. In fact, I fully support the idea of you gathering the nine biju and merging them into the ten tails. Natsuo spread his hands. To tell the truth, I do not consider them my enemies, and the capture of the two tails does not hinder the awakening of the ten tails at all. Oh well, Naruto is out of the question. After all, I watched the boy grow up, I wouldn't let him be hurt. But other than that, I really don't care about anyone else. You see, that's quite generous of me. Both Rasa and Tarumi may, 
have tried to contact me several times to intervene against them. Natsuo smiled. Conan and Nagato's hearts sank. Indeed, Natsuo did not make a move. Since the start of the capture operation, they had been monitoring Natsuo. The reputation of the most powerful man in the shinobi world was too imposing for them to belittle him. With a spy like Atachi, surely Natsuo would know about Akatsuki's hideout. But he hadn't acted yet. It was quite strange to think about it. Are you planning to use our hands? Conan couldn't help but ask. You expect us to help you awaken the Ten Tails, and then you will intervene directly. No, I'm not particularly interested in the Ten Tails. Natsuo said with a smile. Although I can't say I'm not interested at all, but my goal is really not it. Exactly. Their target is Otsutsuki Kagaya, the most powerful, talented, and most superior woman in the history of the shinobi world. Therefore, he simply ignored Akatsuki's actions. He showed a lenient attitude towards Abito as Black Setsu, although they themselves should not feel that way. Of course, Conan and Nagato didn't understand at all what Natsuo wanted to achieve. Okay, let's leave it at that. Natsuo smiled and looked at Conan. Our deal has been completed. I hope you don't try to back out. Conan was silent for a moment. Don't worry, it won't happen. At this point she has been completely influenced by the Yumenso, and now completely accepts Natsuo, and she feels overwhelming gratitude towards Natsuo for healing Nagato. Natsuo nodded in satisfaction, then looked at Nagato. As for you, have you considered trying a little harder? What if you become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki and manage to defeat me to get Conan back? Yes, a young man who gets an unexpected opportunity and, through arduous training, rescues his first love from the clutches of a villain. That would be a pretty good plot. After you return, you should suggest to Jiraiya that he write some stories like that. It would be much more interesting than those boring stories he always writes. Saying this, Natsuo took out the book Itcher Itcher Paradise from his pocket, criticizing the author's rigid and boring way of writing, and the monotonous plot. Although he was criticizing the book, he continued to read it carefully. After hearing Natsuo's words, Nagato was about to get angry again. Conan, beside him, sighed in resignation. You're exaggerating. We don't have that kind of relationship even counting Yahiko. One couldn't say that their relationship was bad. After all, they had been companions and friends since childhood. When they wanted to be more than just friends, Yahiko was killed in Hanzo's plot. Natsuo was interested now. So you've been together for so long, and you're still just friends. Has nothing happened between you? Yeah, if you're not even interested in him, it's unlikely you're interested in anyone else. So you've been single this whole time. That's good. After all, although NTR has become popular recently, but to tell the truth, I'm not a fan of it. However, Conan, you are so old, it's still it's really not easy. Natsuo glanced at a certain part, showing a strange smile. So you're still a virgin, that's even better. The focus of his gaze made Conan feel like hitting someone. Nagato, for his part, held back his anger as he watched Natsuo harass his lifelong friend. The veins in his neck pulsed with anger, but he reminded himself that he couldn't beat him. He couldn't beat him. If it weren't for him not being able to beat him, he really wanted to beat him to death. Nagato took three deep breaths in a row, before his expression returned to calm. I'll go back to Konoha with you too. Nagato was silent for a moment and finally spoke. Oh! Aren't you going to revive the Ten Tails? Natsuo frowned. There are too many complications and conspiracies behind the resurrection of the Ten Tails. I want to take a look at the Achiha clan stone tablet and consider my options. Nagato paused and smiled wryly. Also, now I'm not sure if the Ten Tails will be a sufficient deterrent. In the past, he didn't need to worry about this problem. The demonic statue, a weapon that consumes so much chakra that not even Nagato could afford to use it, defeated Hanzo and his minions along with Kanoa's root shinobi. And that was when the demonic statue was just an empty shell. Added to the power of the tailed beasts, it is really easy to destroy a country in one fell swoop. But Nagato couldn't help but glance at Natsuo. No matter how confident he is, he no longer knows if the Ten Tails will be able to beat Natsuo. After all, even though he has been fighting with him till now, Natsuo has not shown all his abilities. Looking at his indifferent attitude towards demonic statue, Nagato really doubts that the complete Ten Tails can beat Natsuo. His purpose is to frighten the shinobi world with extremely destructive Ten Tails to quell the war and gain peace. But if Ten Tails can't beat Natsuo, what's the point? Natsuo shot him a look. Aren't you going back to Omegaka? It's okay, at least you'll be spared the disappointment again. Disappointment? What happened in Omegaka? Nagato and Conan suddenly became nervous and looked at Natsuo. Natsuo laughed lightly. It's nothing, it's just that a rebellious boy who destroyed his family plans to come back at this moment. He's sure to bring some local produce, right? Otherwise, wouldn't he think that the sins he committed would be so easy? Easy to forgive. Hearing this, both Nagato and Conan instantly tensed. Icheha Atachi. After about 20 minutes, the figure of Atachi slowly appeared in front of Natsuo. He was about to say something, but he saw Nagato and Conan looking at him with complicated eyes. Natsuo, why are they here? Atachi frowned. How is it possible that Akatsuki members are together with Natsuo? Come here, Atachi. Let me introduce you. Natsuo laughed and pulled Conan beside him. 
This is Conan, you can affectionately call sister-in-law in the future. About him Natsuo continued. I originally thought about letting him go, but he wants to take a look at the stone tablet under the Naka shrine. Hearing this, Atachi glanced at the Rinnegan in Nagato's eyes, and an expression of understanding crossed his eyes. I see it. Seems that you already know about Rinnegan's information. Atachi, what did you do to Omegaka? Nagato asked seriously. Without Conan and Nagato, it is impossible for Omegaka to contain Atachi's power. It means this. Don't worry. I didn't cause any disturbance in Omegaka. Ichiha Atachi said calmly. I just grabbed a few things and left. At worst, I was a little abrupt in taking things. As he spoke, he took out a storage scroll and threw it to Natsuo. This is what you wanted. Good. Natsuo said as he took the storage scroll and put it in his pocket. Natsuo, what are you looking for? Nagato frowned slightly. I don't think there's anything in Omegaka or Akatsuki worth coveting, right? Oh, it's no big deal. It's just the body of the Jinchuriki you captured earlier. Natsuo said after putting away the storage scroll. I realize after your operation, it seems that one of the captives is my brother-in-law. Natsuo said helplessly. Tamari begs me every day to go to Akatsuki and rescue him. I just want to see if I can do something about it. This is something he really forgot. There is no way, although Gara, the brother-in-law, can be regarded as the only one with a name among Natsuo's brothers-in-law. But the problem is that Natsuo has too many brothers-in-law, so it's only natural that Natsuo forgets Gara, especially considering that he was kidnapped by Akatsuki and lost his tail beast. But it does not matter. He has almost perfected the resurrection technique. Even if the resurrection technique doesn't work immediately, it's not a big deal either. If everything comes to the worst-case scenario, Sunagaka's side could take it upon themselves to resurrect him on their own after all, Chiyo is engaged to Sunagaga because of a situation with Sasori. If Sunagaka requests it. He is sure that she would be willing to sacrifice the little time she has left to live to redeem herself before her grandson. However, Nagato and Conan, although they know about the Rinnegan resurrection technique, are also aware of the price it entails. They don't believe Natsuo would be willing to sacrifice his life for someone he doesn't even remember exists. They just don't consider it an option. They can only assume that Natsuo has probably decided to retrieve his brother-in-law's body and return it to Sunagaka with these thoughts in mind. They can't help but feel a little guilty. Even though Nagato and Conan have become a ruthless terrorist organization and have participated in numerous wars that have caused great harm to civilians, they are actually soft-hearted people. Even though their hands are stained with blood deep in their hearts, they feel sorry for those who have fallen at their hands. I'm sorry. Conan said in a low voice, and Nagato lowered his head slightly. It is not a big thing. Natsuo waved his hand nonchalantly. Don't worry about these little things. Conan and Nagato are speechless. Is this a trivial matter? Your brother-in-law is dead. However, Natsuo didn't care about the two. Instead, he looked at Atachi. Atachi, are you ready? Yes, I am. Atachi nodded, maintaining his typical unfazed expression. However, his fists were clenched tightly, as if he was holding back some emotion. His nails dug deep into her palms, leaving deep marks Conan and Nagato frowned slightly. Atachi was a standard cold-faced person, never in a hurry, calm and calm, and his poker face never changed. They had never seen him so excited before. What was he up to? Meanwhile, finally, Abito met up with Dadara and the others. They waited for a while, and found that neither Kakuzu nor the leader had any intention of communicating, nor did they seem to start the tail beast sealing ceremony. They then looked at each other, and finally decided to head to Omegaka. That was Akatsuki's main stronghold. However, when they arrived, they discovered that the base appeared to have been the scene of a terrible battle. The bodies of fallen shinobi and debris were scattered everywhere, while black flames still burned unextinguished, although Itachi had claimed that he hadn't caused any major disturbance in Omegaka. But evidently, that wasn't true. The aftermath of the little disturbance still persists. And even those black flames left no room for doubt, Itachi also defected. Abito and the others were stunned. First it was Kakuzu, then they captured Conan, and until now they had not received any news from the leader. And now, Itachi had also defected. But thinking about it, it made sense. After all, Itachi was initially a spy. It was logical that his betrayal would occur at any moment. So now Akatsuki's only remaining members the four of them looked at each other confused and perplexed. If the leader was not there, what should they do? What would happen to the Jinchuriki they had captured? Should they extract the eight tails or not? What do we do now? Calculating the time, Killer B should wake up soon. And the leader. Dealing with an angry Jinchuriki won't be easy. I don't want to fight a tailed beast again. Those present exchanged words and thoughts, some feeling confused. In the end, it was Abito who stood up. Kiss him. First use the Samahada to drain the eight tails chakra. Control it well. And let's wait for the leader to return. We will wait for the leader to return. Then we will begin to extract the eight tails. After a brief reflection, the others nodded. Everyone knew very well the power of the leader. Without a doubt he was one of the most powerful shinobi in the world, even more than the feared Kazuki Gara and the formidable Mizuki Churumi Mei. There should be no problems. Hokage Residence, Jonan Meeting Room. Natsuo entered slowly with Nagato, Conan, Itachi, and the other two shinobi behind him. They had not made the slightest effort to hide their identities. This stunned those present, leaving the room in an uncomfortable silence. Natsuo-sama, it seems I don't know the people behind you. Could you please introduce them to me? 
Hijonan asked with a tense expression. I don't know them. How could I not know? Aside from the fact that Nai Yujito is the rakage, her photo has already spread throughout the shinobi world, and everyone knows her. Just talking about the uniforms of Akatsuki on Nagato, Conan, Itachi, and Kakuzu, with the recent notoriety of Akatsuki, they are remembered by countless shinobi. While there was a small chance that the new rakage and the Akatsuki uniforms would be misinterpreted, Itachi's face was unmistakable. After all, Natsuo, who is the most famous legend in the shinobi world, was from the Uchiha clan, and Itachi annihilated said clan. Some people even had the theory, if Itachi hadn't wiped out the Uchiha clan, perhaps Natsuo, who had been mediocre before the incident, might not have the current strength. And here he was alive and well after destroying the clan of the strongest shinobi in the world. Everyone present, like the Jonin of Kinoha, had access to more information than ordinary people. So they knew information about key figures in the shinobi world. Whether it be a Chiha Itachi, the new Reikage, or the members of Akatsuki, they recognize them all. Are these your prisoners? Another Jonin joked. You really are impressive, Natsuo-sama, to capture so many experts. But, Natsuo-sama, how can you allow your prisoners not to be tied up properly? The Jonin added. Your attitude will scare the people in the Hokage residence. It wasn't just the people who worked at the Hokage residence who would be scared. They were too. Because no matter how they looked at them, the way they walked behind Natsuo without any care, it didn't seem like they were captives. In an instant, the minds of everyone present were filled with thoughts. From Itachi's alleged collaboration with Natsuo to annihilate the clan, to the theory that Natsuo was the true leader of Akatsuki. Even the idea that Akatsuki had already controlled Kumogaka by placing a cage under their control, and were now looking to take control of Kanoha. But whatever the truth, the current situation didn't seem very good for Kanoha. Everyone present was nervous, confused by the situation. They looked at Tsuned to handle the situation. But she remained calm as if this situation were normal. Natsuo chuckled and looked at Itachi next to him. It's your turn. Yes, Natsuo-sama. Itachi responded, bowing his head slightly before moving forward. Itachi inhaled deeply before beginning to speak. Kanoha Shinobi, belonging to Anbu, Echiha clan, Echiha Itachi, Shinobi registration number 012110. I have completed the task of infiltrating the Akatsuki. Kuki organization is entrusted by the late third Hokage, and have spent several years instigating Kakuzu, a senior member of the Akatsuki organization, to rebel. Now that Akatsuki has been successfully defeated and another core member, Conan, has been captured, my mission is complete. I request to be reinstated in Kanoha and end my mission as a spy. For a moment, a single statement echoed through the minds of those present. Ichiha Itachi, Kanoha Shinobi, requests his reinstatement. All the shinobi in the room raised their heads in bewilderment. Itachi returning to Kanoha. Hang on a minute. Wasn't Itachi a missing nin? Oh, he said that he was sent as a spy by the third Hokage to infiltrate the Akatsuki organization. But he clearly killed the Ichiha clan. How could someone like him become a spy sent by the third Hokage? Itachi, you didn't eliminate the Ichiha clan. A Jonin stood up and asked Itachi. How come you're still a Kanoha shinobi? Itachi replied calmly. The fact that I eliminated the Echiha clan and my loyalty to Kanoha as well as my role as a spy are not mutually exclusive. But you kill the Kanoha people, the Jonin shouted. Itachi remained unfazed. As a spy, staining your hands with the blood of the people of your own village isn't particularly surprising, is it? The people who were killed by the spies were all those the village considered to be spies from other countries or shinobi who could endanger the village. Another Jonin couldn't help but scream. How can you kill the entire Achiha clan at once for a spy mission? At this, Itachi responded. I'm sorry, this is a secret mission ordered by my superiors. I can't answer any of your questions. He said seriously. But I can guarantee that I have always been a loyal shinobi to Kanoha in this matter. Then the shinobi wanted to ask something else. But before he could say anything, he was reprimanded by a nearby Jonin. The expressions of some of those present also showed confusion and complexity, especially since everyone who can gather in this conference room has access to much more information than the average shinobi. After Itachi made such a clear statement, how could they not remember the conflict between the Achiha clan and Kanoha back then? So, it was Danzo who identified the Achiha clan as a danger to Kanoha and ordered Itachi to kill the entire Achiha clan, while the third Hokage simply watched the whole situation unfold. Natsuo intervened. Everyone was shocked upon hearing that even the shinobi who were good at hiding their emotions couldn't keep their expressions calm. Danzo, Saratobi Hiruzen did an amazing job. Completely destroy a shinobi clan. In the world it seems that something similar had only been seen during the blood mist in Kurigika. As everyone pondered the situation, they looked at Itachi in surprise. This man actually followed Danzo's orders and exterminated his own clan. No matter male, female, old or young, regardless of parents and friends, kill them all simply unimaginable. Should it be said that he is infinitely loyal to Kanoha? or that he is insane. Now, I have completed the task that the third Hokage gave me, and I request to return to the village. Itachi repeated again, with a calm and gentle voice. The shinobi in the room were stunned. Is it Chihara Itachi one of yours? Is it the village's mission to exterminate the Achiha clan? Shut up! Hamura and Kahara couldn't take it anymore and screamed in unison. After they and their clan were suppressed by Tsunade, they did not dare to cause any more problems. But they could not allow Itachi to further tarnish their reputation. Itachi, as a missing nin, 
What are you doing at the Kanoha Jonan meeting? Hamura's cold voice sounded. I'm Kanoha Shinobi. Atachi replied calmly. No, you're a missing nin. Kahara shouted angrily. A missing nin disturbing the peace of Kanoha. At the same time Natsuoi simply looked at her calmly and a red glow passed through his eyes. Atachi naturally recognized that chakra fluctuation. It is a Jinjutsu Manjekyo Sharingan. How dare you reveal the village's secrets in front of so many people? Kahara was speechless. She knew the truth about Itachi, and she was even present during the entire incident. She now regrets having let herself be carried away by her anger and fears, and having confirmed the truthfulness of Itachi's words. Everyone became even more agitated when they heard those words. Originally when Itachi and Natsuo explained the situation, they only half believed it. But Yutateng Kahari's slip of the tongue directly confirmed the fact. Itachi, was he really sent as a spy by the third Hokage? Instantly, their gazes changed, filled with anger directed towards the third Hokage. Was he ordered by his superiors to destroy his own clan? And the third Hokage giving his acquiescence by simply watching the situation unfold without trying to stop Danzo. Finally, use the incident to make him infiltrate one of the most dangerous terrorist organizations in the world. Although from a shinobi's perspective, one is expected to obey superior orders without question. They were all human after all. Who would be willing to accept such an order? The third Hokage was it really like that? Kahara was a little flustered. Although her strength dropped sharply, she could also feel the anger of the shinobi around her. Mitakado Hamura took a deep breath and said, Atachi, I won't say if this is Hiruzen's order, but even if it is Hiruzen's order, you should avoid causing disturbances at the Jonin meeting, right? Does tarnishing the name of the late third Hokage really accord with the code of conduct of a Kanoha shinobi? If you truly love the village more than your own clan, why would you perform actions like this in the first place? With these words, the crowd's expression calmed down a bit. They realized that this is a confrontation between the third Hokage's former faction and the Ichiha clan. Everyone is not stupid. They had realized that the genocide of the Ichiha clan as well as Itachi's defection had many loopholes. Looking at Natsuo next to Itachi, those present realized that it was inevitable that Itachi would return to the village. So they decided to just be spectators. However, Itachi simply replied, I am only here to declare my return to the village. I am not questioning the third Hokage's actions. Then why do you do this kind of thing? Amora, without giving in, asked. Don't you know that your actions will shame third Hokage? However, as soon as he spoke, he only got a strange and contemptuous look from Itachi. Amora sama have you forgotten that I am a spy? I have returned as a spy, and the third Hokage had been assassinated before finishing my mission. Hamura's expression suddenly changed, she had forgotten that detail. As a high-ranking spy, usually only the Hokage could confirm his identity, and he would have to undergo interrogation at the village Jonan meeting. But now the Hokage who is supposed to be the only one who knew about his mission has been killed. He can only explain the nature of his mission and betrayal at the Jonan meeting, plus he must be backed up by high-level personnel. Enough. Natsuo, Atachi you really gave me a lot of trouble. Sunade finally spoke and gave the two an angry look. Tsunade allowed Itachi to say all those things to affect the faction led by Hamura and Kahara behind her. If she doesn't metaphorically hit them every once in a while, they will start jumping around her to cause trouble. But he also cannot allow this situation to get out of control. So it was time for her to intervene. I'm sorry, Hokage-sama, for the trouble caused. Atachi apologized. He always respected Hokage very much, even if it was the cheating third Hokage. Furthermore, Tsunade is now part of the Achiha clan. She had even had children with Natsuo. For Atachi, who had a deep sense of guilt towards his clan, he has a lot of respect for Tsunade. There's nothing to apologize for. Tsunade waved his hand. Compared to my own problems, you've had a harder time than me. Saying that, she extended a hand with a smile. Welcome home, Ichiha Atachi. Atachi was silent for a moment, bowing his head slightly as he took the Hokage's hand. Hokage-sama, I'm back. His voice was a little breathy, as if he was holding something back, and his eyes were red. It was so strange. It really was so weird. The time he spent outside the village made him realize his mistakes. About how much he was affected when his father made him go to war at age 4, about how Danzo and the third Hokage manipulated him, taking advantage of his naivety, and how his father, in his recklessness, wanted to lead the entire clan to rebel, which led him to make one of the decisions he will regret most in his life. But while Itachi was touched to finally be accepted by Kanoha, the Jonin present were not so thrilled. Even the Hokage accepted Itachi's return. Does that mean he really is a Kanoha spy? Those present were surprised. Because that meant the thin layer of paper on the genocide of the Ichiha clan has been torn. For a moment, Kanoha trembled. The residents of the Ichiha clan. Natsuo, you Ichiha really know how to cause trouble for people. Tsunade said with a resigned expression. Now the village is in chaos. By accepting Itachi's return, it also means that the person who orchestrated the genocide of the Ichiha clan is Saratobi Hiruzen himself. All the Jonin who were at the meeting were surprised by the shocking revelation. Who would have thought that the real culprit was the third Hokage all this time and not Danzo? Outrage gripped everyone, with fear growing in their hearts. They always thought there were problems with the genocide of the Ichiha clan, but they never expected that it was the third Hokage who orchestrated everything. Who could have imagined that they were living under the leadership of someone who could kill them at any moment? All the major shinobi clans looked at the Saratobi clan with strong hostility in their eyes. 
After all, apart from the root shinobi who participated in the extermination of the Ichiha clan, it is obvious that the Saratobi clan should have also been involved to prevent information leaks. Although in reality, the shinobi of the Saratobi clan have no idea about this. Few in the clan know the details, after all, the only ones who really acted were Itachi and Abito, while Danzo only took care of the small fish that escaped from the net. But no one thinks that way. Almost everyone agreed that they must have been involved. Damn Hiruzen, why would I do something like that? The elders of the Saratobi clan cursed the late third Hokijin anguish. In fact, it wasn't the first time they scolded Hiruzen in their minds. After Natsuo really showed his strength, everyone was worried. Worried that if one day Natsuo learns the truth of how they brought the Achiha clan to the brink of rebellion, including the truth about the night of the genocide, he will decide to take revenge on them. Danzo, who coveted the Sharingan, his fate is unknown. But it's obvious that he is dead, or he would prefer to be. The elderly lived full of anxiety. At that time, they quietly arranged for some clan members to leave Kanoha hoping that even if Natsuo acted, he would not completely exterminate the Saratobi clan. Fortunately, Natsuo seems to have not delved much into the investigation of these internal matters, and they were only suppressed by Tsunade, forced to go to the front lines during the war, and have permanently shinobi of the Saratobi clan stationed at the borders. Eventually, the elders of the Saratobi clan, who thought the problem was not that serious, called back the members they had sent away, but now Atachi is back. What a disaster the elders of the Saratobi clan sighed heavily. If you were going to exterminate the Ichiha clan, why did you miss Natsuo? And you, Natsuo, how can you show mercy towards the criminal who eliminated the Ichiha? Why not attack him ferociously instead of giving Itachi a chance to explain himself? Why didn't you kill him directly? Yes, everyone assumed that Natsuo was planning to attack the Akatsuki organization and take revenge on Itachi. And that was when Itachi willingly revealed his identity as a spy. Otherwise, why wouldn't Natsuo act against his enemy, Itachi? And now what are we going to do? The elders of the Saratobi clan were desperate. They took out the contingency plan they had prepared. The Saratobi clan feared that Natsuo would attack them. While the shinobi were furious with the Saratobi clan, they were also afraid that the village leader, who was supposed to protect them, would attack them. For a time, Kanoha became chaotic. Naturally, all the pressure was on Tsunade. I'm so busy now that I don't even have time to bet. Tsunade whimpered with a dissatisfied expression on his face. But despite complaining, Tsunade didn't hesitate to accept Itachi. In fact, Natsuo had explained Itachi's situation to her in advance. Leaving aside the trauma of the war that she had when she was four years old, or the manipulation by Danzo and Hiruzen, the fact of opening the Sharingan at a very young age, as well as the Manjakyo. This impacted his mind in a negative way which made him extreme in his actions. That is why Natsuo is attentive to his children, so that they do not open the Sharingan through negative emotions. Rather, he hopes that they will do so through the connection they share with him as well as with the potions from the revival series since both methods increase his mental strength this will not cause a negative impact on their personalities Sunade, understanding the situation in addition to not wavering in her decisions during the villagers jonin meeting openly accepted itachi's return completely ignoring the hints in the eyes of the two retired elders yudatane kaharu and mitakado hamura yes thank you for your hard work our great fifth hokage sama Natsuo leaned into Tsunade's ear. I will definitely thank you very much tonight. Tsunade quickly shook her head. No, I haven't played enough yet. I want to go to the Ichiha Casino for a few more days. If you want to vent, find someone else you can try the two you brought with you recently. But it's good that you have the Hokage as your wife. You're also seeing the Mizukage, and now even the Reikage has been brought. Do you want to hold the Five Cage Summit at the Ichiha clan residence? Tsunade said, looking at Yujito and Conan that Natsuo had brought with him. Yujito snorted in disdain. Ask your own husband about this. I made it clear to him that Kumogaka was willing to pay for my ransom, but he refused to accept it. But don't think that I will compromise easily like other women. She added, crossing her arms dismissively. On the contrary, Natsuo touched his chin and smiled. A Five Cage Summit in the Ichiha clan. This is a good idea. Thanks for reminding me. The fifth Hokage, the daughter of the fourth Kezakage. The fifth Mizukage, the granddaughter of the third Tsuchikage, the fifth Reikage. Tamari and Kuratsuchi have to practice more and become cage-level Kunoichi, so they can inherit the cage positions of their respective villages. Wouldn't it be perfect if the five cage summit took place in the Ichiha clan? The corner of Tsunade's lips twitched. I wasn't suggesting that Yujito snorted coldly. Sure enough, the evil Ichiha has exposed the evil purpose of him, hasn't he? But we in Kumogaka will not bow to you. Let go of your fantasies. With that said, she turned around and left. Natsuo watched with interest as Yujito showed her strong will and didn't give in to anything. For now he found it fun. But if she keeps this up, getting rid of a cage-level Kinochi isn't going to cause him much harm. Of course, Yujito was not resisting because she wanted to keep her body intact. But rather she valued her own identity more. And she was not willing to submit to escape the Ichiha's hands. That added to the fact that Natsuo caused a lot of damage to Kumogaka. If she submitted to him, the village could be divided again into internal conflicts. Natsuo found it a bit difficult to subdue Yujito, 
since he already used Yumenso on Conan, and using Kota Matsukami on her would be a waste. Handling her the same way he had handled Amayori was quite difficult. This person was strange, able to ignore any bodily sensations with his will. No matter how he acted, she would not be affected. Atachi's return made Sasuke feel very divided. On the one hand he was very happy. But he also felt uncomfortable because of what he had done to the clan. Sure, he knew the psychological problems Itachi developed and what led him to carry out the genocide. But he still couldn't be completely happy because of it. Sasuke buried that discomfort by staying as long as possible by Itachi's side and trying to relive the relationship they had when he was a child. Itachi on the other hand had a mentality of doing anything to redeem himself. Giving in again and again to Sasuke's requests, he trained with him as well as the other Ichiha children. Even when some of the children asked him to tell their stories of the last few years, he would meet with all the children to tell them. Jiraiya attempted to intervene in Sasuke's training only to be pulled away by the two brothers. Fortunately, the girls of the Ichiha club comforted his wounded heart. Meanwhile, Makoto silently watched the daily lives of the two brothers, with a happy smile on her lips. Thank you Natsuo. She leaned gently on Natsuo's shoulder, her eyes filled with relief. If you really want to thank me, after I resurrect you, you must show it well. Kishino and Pakora next to him looked at Natsuo with disdain. What a warm scene. Thank you for being able to say such out of place words. But they both looked at Makoto's expression, a smile that denoted resignation, but also a hint of happiness. They were silent, deeply moved. The shinobi of Kanoha showed distant respect towards Itachi's return. Although the shinobi clans were aware of Itachi's considerable power, and could even consider marriage arrangements. But Itachi is too crazy. Aren't they worried about a shinobi capable of destroying his own clan? Aren't they afraid that if they aren't careful, he might go crazy and destroy their own clan too. At first, Natsuo's wives also felt deep hostility towards Itachi. But after seeing Itachi's behavior as well as Natsuo's guarantees, the situation calmed down. That's great, little brother. Amayori showed a comforting smile as she patted Itachi's shoulder. I heard that you are very strong. Do you want to fight me? As a Kinochi obsessed with Kenjutsu, she has always had a great desire to test her skills against strong opponents. Even more so since she managed to integrate natural energy into sun breathing. This is something that surprised even Natsuo. Anko next to him also said seriously, Itachi, I heard that you were Orochimaru's teammate for a while and he coveted your eyes how about it. Do you want to teach Orochimaru a lesson together with your sister-in-law? As he listened to Natsuo's wives, Itachi's eyes moistened slightly. This kind of simple and ordinary life was what he had always dreamed of. Ichiha Itachi, a member of Akatsuki, is Kanoha's spy. Was the Akatsuki organization's headquarters in Omegaka. Itachi returns to Kanoha, and Natsuo defeats the leader of the Akatsuki organization. When the news spread, the entire shinobi world was perplexed. How could Itachi, who had exterminated his own clan, be a spy? Have you ever heard of anyone who was a spy like that? Of course, the most bewildered ones are the only four remaining members of the Akatsuki organization. Even Kissam, who knew more or less about Natsuo's actions was surprised by the situation. The leader was defeated, and he was taken back to Kanoha by Natsuo then what shall we do? After hearing the news, Dadara subconsciously said, Should we disband? Heh heh well, I'm not bad at cooking. How about I make you all one last dinner before we leave? Kissam let out between sinister laughs. The farewell meal is, of course, one of Kissam's bad jokes. Dadara felt that Akatsuki's future was bleak. When Akatsuki was at its strongest, they had 10 cage level shinobi. Meanwhile, at that time how many cage level shinobi did Kanoha, the strongest shinobi village in the world, really have? There was only the third Hokage along with Jiraiya and Tsunade, who had been away for many years. And if they wanted to stretch things, they could include Danzo in the group. Not counting the existence of the Jinchuriki, the other villagers generally had only one or two shinobi of that level. Akatsuki can almost equal the sum of the five great shinobi villagers combined. Even though Itachi forced Dadara to enter the Akatsuki organization, he still felt that it was a worthy place for him, with great potential for development and excellent opportunities to use his art. But now, the leader was captured by Natsuo, Conan was also captured by Natsuo, Itachi, and Kakuzu defected, Haiden died, and Sasori was captured a Bito, and Black Zetsu were also a little dazed. Nagato was defeated by Natsuo so easily, which they didn't expect. But they can't let Akatsuki break up so easily. If pain is gone, then I will take over the leadership. Abito took a deep breath and stood up. You, Toby, don't make trouble. How can a junior be the boss? Dadara didn't take it seriously, subconsciously said. Although the current Abito had not assumed Sasori's position and had not become Dadara's partner. But he really seems like an ignorant person, laughing and joking. Toby has a cheerful personality, although his cheerfulness now is more of a misstep. But it needed to be that way so White Zetsuki and impersonate him sometimes. But this not-so-dominant heir was not suitable to be the leader. Anyway, Dadara was not convinced by Abito. So can I be the leader now? Abito activated the Manjakyo Sharingan, and in an instant, he approached Dadara, catching him by the neck with one hand. This guy, Dadara's expression changed, he was defeated without any resistance. After a moment of silence, Dadara finally bowed his head. All right? The others had no objection. Kissam was a loyal follower of Abito, and Zetsu had no intention of competing for leadership with him. Abito naturally emerged as the leader, taking center stage. 
change. But so what should we do next? Abito took a deep breath with anxiety in his eyes. In the past, although he did not have many resources, Abito had never felt that the shinobi world was so challenging for him. But now damn, the shinobi world was more complicated than he had ever imagined. That guy Natsuo, he couldn't have awakened the Rinnegan like Madara, right? Abito's eyes were serious. He knew the evolution process of the Rinnegan. In a normal battle, the Manjekyo Sharingan's disadvantages against the Rinnegan were too great. It shouldn't be so easy for Natsuo to overpower Nagato and win the battle, right? But, thinking about it, it seemed unlikely. Awakening the Rinnegan was extremely difficult. Only the combination of Senju and Ichiha faced great challenges. Orochimaru had performed several cases where he managed to merge both lineages, but they still never awakened the Rinnegan. Even Madara only awakened the Rinnegan after many years, and was already on the brink of death when he did so. As long as he hasn't awakened the Rinnegan, it's fine. But if that's really the case, he means that Natsuo can defeat a Rinnegan user with the Manjekyo Sharingan alone. So Natsuo's true talent would be quite terrifying. Abito pondered for a long time, with a serious expression on his face. Black Zetsu also narrowed his eyes slightly, he also didn't think Natsuo could activate the Rinnegan. He knew very well that to awaken the Rinnegan, the chakra of the reincarnations of Indra and Asura was needed. After waiting patiently for over a thousand years, Black Zetsu finally managed to get a descendant of Indra to awaken the Rinnegan. It was impossible for Natsuo to achieve the same feat. He had even personally intervened to pose as Madara's will to make sure there were no mistakes. But now, the panorama of the shinobi world exceeded his expectations. He thought that, as a precaution, he should implement some of the countermeasures that he had prepared. Leader, what shall we do next? Zetsu asked. Let's get the leader's Rinnegan back first. Abito pondered for a moment and finally said, Without the Rinnegan, without the demonic statue of the Outer Path, we cannot seal the eight tails, leave that task in my hands. Abito took a deep breath, his eyes filled with determination. After learning of the devastating blow against the Akatsuki, the senior leaders of the shinobi villages were stunned. Although no one believed that the genocide of the Achiha clan was part of Atachi's cover to infiltrate the Akatsuki organization. But now that Akatsuki has been almost destroyed, shouldn't they get their Jinchuriki back? Kumogaka, which was embroiled in disputes, sent emissaries to retrieve the wreckage from it. Wagaka and Takigaka, who lost their Jinchuriki, were looking at a Megaka. Wagaka and Takigaka did not dare to cause trouble for Kanoha, and the emissaries they sent only wanted to get their Jinchuriki back from Kanoha even if they paid a small price for it. But against the Megaka, they were not afraid at all. Nagato, who was actually in charge of a Megaka, laughed and kindly invited the Awagaka and Takigaka envoys to the outskirts of Kanoha and showed them what destruction is. By just launching a Shinra Tensei, which could wipe out an entire shinobi village, the envoys of the two villages were horrified. Oh god, now they understood why Akatsuki could recruit so many S-rank missing nin. It turns out that their leader can actually take them down easily. So, did Natsuo actually fight this monster and then bring it back to Kanoha? Not even Kanoha's higher-ups could understand what they were seeing. They were even thinking about why Natsuo, instead of killing the Akatsuki leaders he had captured, brought them back to the village. A single attack like this is already too much for the village. Clearly Natsuo didn't bring a prisoner, but rather a time bomb. The Karigaka and Sunagaka envoys congratulated themselves silently. Fortunately, the Kazakage, Mizukage only asked us to take back the Jinchuriki. Even if we have to pay a price, we should only accept silently. The Kazakage, Mizukage really has great vision. Nagato felt a little exhausted after launching the Shinra Tensei with all his strength. But his physical condition has improved compared to before, since after a great effort he was not so exhausted. With a little rest, he could launch another attack. Why should he continue healing me? Nagato sighed. Now I'm much stronger than before, Natsuo is not afraid of. It's okay, he's not afraid. Nagato smiled wryly and shook his head in resignation. Although his physical condition was much stronger than when he fought Natsuo, he still couldn't find a way to beat Natsuo. In the final analysis, physical enhancement only makes up for the shortcomings of mobility and enhances resistance. Ichiha Clan District, Naka Shrine, Underground Secret Chamber. Nagato, Conan, Makoto, Sasuke, Itachi, Natsuo, gathered here. This is the stone tablet Conan frowned as she saw the stone tablet without a single written word. Nagato, what is written on it? Nagato seemed to be somewhere else, his gaze vacant. It's the same thing Natsuo said it's the Rinnegan evolution method, and how to use the infinite Tsukuyomi. This meant that Natsuo had not lied at all. The Rinnegan actually evolved from the Sharingan, and his eyes were actually implanted by someone with evil intentions. This person is most likely Ichiha Madara. And his purpose? He wants me to perform the infinite Tsukuyomi. Nagato frowned. But why doesn't Ichiha Madara do it personally? Why would Madara let Nagato? who had much lower strength than his, carry a dejutsu that didn't belong to him. After Senja Hashirama died and before Natsuo stood up, Madara could have used his strength to unify the shinobi world, forcing the villagers to hand over the tail beast and perform the infinite Tsukuyomi he wanted. Did you forget that Achiha Madara is an old man who lived before Kanoha was created? Natsuo glanced at Nagato. At this moment I would be almost a hundred years old. Do you think that an old man, even if he is an Achiha, can be very strong? So the Achiha Madara we saw Conan muttered. Before Conan finished speaking, Nagato sighed. That person just calls himself Achiha Madara. 
and no one knows what his real identity is. Conan and Nagato originally thought that Obito was at Chihamadara because of his Manjekyo Sharingan. But now after learning about Itachi's Manjekyo, they began to have their doubts so what's his objective? The infinite Tsukiyomi. But what's the point of this illusory piece? Nagato sighed softly, that kind of illusory piece may be Obito and Ichiha Madara, who are completely disappointed in this world, are willing to accept it, but he is not willing to do so. Even the piece imposed by his own strength is more meaningful to Nagato than that illusory piece. In this sense, Obito was very accurate in judging Nagato. That's why he didn't tell him about the infinite Tsukuyomi. Instead, he gave him information about the Ten Tails. If he had proposed the infinite Tsukuyomi peace plan at that time, they might never have collaborated together Natsuo. Do you think there can really be peace in this world? Nagato's eyes were full of tiredness. Nagato was really exhausted, dragging his weary body. He had fought for over a decade, barely rallying the tail beast for a chance to maintain world peace. As a result, because of Natsuo's existence, this plan was directly shattered. Although the existence of the suspected Achiha Madara also has a peace plan, what is the meaning of that false peace? First Hokage maintained peace for a while, but after his death, he immediately started a world war. In the Shinobi world can there really be peace? Not only Nagato, but also Conan and Itachi fell into silence. What they longed for was peace. Peace. Natsuo touched his chin. Compared to other fantasy worlds, the Shinobi world has a very peculiar point. Both the good and the bad, in the end, aim for peace in the world. It's okay if the main character Naruto's goal is peace. The villain Nagato's goal is peace, Abito's goal is peace, Ichihamadara's goal is peace. Orochimaru longed for immortality because he saw the fragility of life in war. Jiraiya hoped to find the child of destiny and protect the world. Tsunade inherited the will of first Hokage, and hoped to protect the peace of Konoha. Even the reason why the final boss Kagaya and the brothers Hagoromo and Hamura fought among themselves was actually because of the need to create the White Setsu army to defend themselves from the future invasion of the Utsutsuki clan. In a sense, it seemed like everyone was looking for peace. However, peace still could not be achieved. After the founding of Konoha, there was a world war every 15 years on average. Before the founding of Konoha, the situation was even more chaotic with wars occurring daily. In the shinobi world could there be true peace? If possible. Natsuo said. Oh really? Nagato raised his head, Atachi showed anticipation, Conan's eyes lit up, Makoto couldn't help but said. Natsuo, do you have a solution? Complete peace cannot be achieved, but relative peace is not difficult. Natsuo spread his hands. For example, if I were to publicly proclaim that anyone who starts a conflict will be eradicated along with their clan, I can guarantee that the shinobi world would be at peace the next day. Actually, this is almost the same thing that Nagata wanted to achieve with the Ten Tails. But the eyes of Makoto and Itachi are sad. This peace depended entirely on one person. He was not much different from the first Hokage at the beginning. Now that Natsuo is in his prime, everything is fine. But after his death, the tensions built up in the shinobi world will explode instantly. With Natsuo present, there would surely be peace. But without him, the level of violence that the war would reach would be much worse than previous world wars. Natsuo maintained a serene expression. In fact, not only was a peace similar to the first Hokage period achieved in the Naruto series, but even when Naruto became Hokage in the future, the shinobi world was still at peace. But the main reason was the overwhelming power of Naruto and Sasuke. But was it true peace? Before Naruto even became Hokage, Kumogaka was already quietly researching the chakra cannon that could destroy the moon. Who would this high-powered weapon that is difficult to move be used against? Needless to say Nagato's Ten Tails nuclear balance plan seems feasible, but in fact, like Senja Hashirama, it will collapse sooner or later. However, this does not affect Nagato's expectation. Natsuo, will you maintain peace in the shinobi world? I won't do it. Natsuo shrugged. Nagato, everyone seemed a little discouraged. It seems they are not interested in the latter approach. Natsuo smiled. But there are still other ways. As which, Conan asked in a less than hopeful tone, not expecting much from Natsuo's response. For example, we could start with improving the technological level. Chakra can be used together with technology to improve the productivity of the entire society. We could use space ninjutsu to develop a much more effective method of transportation. We could also improve existing means of transportation and explore the rest of the world. Even developing space raft to explore the universe and visit other planets. All of this could also achieve our goal. Natsuo said with a smile. Everyone was dumbfounded when they heard the words. Through technology, spaceships. What does that have to do with peace? You guys have too little understanding of the reason why the war broke out. Natsuo shook his head. The reason why war breaks out is because the party that starts it is dissatisfied with the current state of affairs and wants to change the current distribution of resources to obtain more benefits. Whether it is in the shinobi world or in Natsuo's previous life, the fundamental reasons for the war are the same. But you always attribute the outbreak of war to hatred how much is hatred worth? Natsuo looked disdainful. Even the Sage of the Six Paths is the same. I hope that the chakra would promote mutual understanding between people. But what's the point of understanding someone, if it doesn't satisfy my hunger? Nagato frowned and was about to speak. But Natsuo saw what he wanted to say at a glance and said directly, I know what you're thinking. You want to divide resources between the two warring parties, right? So what if there aren't just two groups in conflict? If there are a hundred warring factions, 
How many parts would you divide the resources into? Is the real solution to let everyone take a bite and go hungry together? Or kill the 99 factions so that one can be satisfied? Natsuo shook his head. None of the above. The real way to achieve peace is to make the pie bigger. Natsuo said without hesitation. For example, if we improve maritime transportation, we could exploit the marine resources that exist in the ocean in addition to exploring the rest of the world, finding unexplored places, obtaining resources, and feeding the population of the shinobi world. Same with traveling to other planets. Essentially, it's about colonizing other planets, and taking advantage of their additional resources to feed our people in the shinobi world. If you want to achieve peace, this is the best path I can think of. First it unifies the shinobi world, then it promotes technological development. If the level of development of Natsuo's world is reached before his time travels, it is enough to support a population as small as the one that currently exists in the shinobi world. This without taking into account that there is access to energy such as chakra and natural energy of course, there will be a lot of chaos this way. The first to oppose this type of progress will be the nobles and daimyos. But at least after the turmoil the world will be at peace for a long time. Conan was stunned, while Makoto was a little worried. What kind of peace is this that Natsuo is proposing? On the other hand, Atachi and Nagato, accustomed to the horrible realities of the shinobi world, narrowed their eyes upon hearing this. They seemed contemplative as if they were considering the idea. They don't want to be as naive as Conan. Nagato can even come up with a plan to deter countries with the equivalent of nuclear weapons. So he didn't dislike this idea. If it meant minimal cost to peace in the shinobi world, maybe I should try it. Nagato stroked his chin, his eyes full of emotion. Natsuo, seeing Nagato's expression, was surprised. Was he seriously considering this? I was just talking for the sake of talking. Nagato was actually considering the idea. He disappeared that same night and returned three days later, full of enthusiasm, but also covered in cosmic dust. Conan and Itachi wondered how Nagato had ended up in outer space, and what he had found. But then, they felt relieved. They had seen a lot and deep down they knew that the reasons Natsuo had given were correct. And now, Nagato seems to have found a way to make the cake grow himself. He shared with Conan what he had found when he explored outer space. He had seen a land mass that was much larger than the elemental nations. He also explored the moon, and that made him realize that it was possible that there were other planets to explore. He immediately took Conan to begin planning how to best utilize what he had just discovered. Atachi also joined them. Atachi's desire for peace had never been less than that of others. And after Nagato's explanation, he also shared with them that actually the Achiha clan already has very advanced ship models. Although they were not yet advanced enough to make a long voyage on the high seas. After a few days, Kikuzu, newly appointed minister of finance of the Achiha clan, heard about their plans and also joined voluntarily. He didn't care that much about peace, but he knew very well what a new continent meant. The first to arrive will be the ones who will get the most profits. This is without counting the enormous prospects for space resources to be exploited. He, Kakuzu, also wanted to follow the trend of the times, and make sure to take the biggest slice of the pie in the future. The Akatsuki organization was rebuilt within the Ichiha clan. Natsuo was completely surprised. Although she told all those things to Conan and the others at the Naka Shrine, it was more to reassure Conan and free her from some of her worries. In reality, the current Ichiha clan has the capacity to provide all the comforts to Natsuo, so it does not see the need to bring more problems to itself to change the shinobi world. But he didn't expect the former Akatsuki members to reunite again. And not only them, when Tsuned found out about the situation through Itachi, like Kakuzu, she saw the development potential in this plan, and gave Kanoha the green light to participate. Fifth Hokage Tsuned joins Akatsuki. Sasuke, seeing Itachi busy every day, also willingly joined. Ichiha Sasuke joins Akatsuki. Both sons joined, and after thinking about it, Makoto also joined. Ichiha Makoto joins Akatsuki. Although Amayori belongs to the chaotic Karigaka, after knowing that the goal is peace, she also took the initiative to join. Ringo Amayori joins the Akatsuki. By counting carefully, Nagato, Conan, Atachi, Kakuzu, Tsunade, Makoto, Sasuke, Amayori, it is almost comparable to the original lineup of the Akatsuki organization. The Akatsuki organization, somehow, was rebuilt perfectly within the Ichiha clan. Due to the participation of more people, Nagato's original plans accelerated quickly. Amayori, being Natsuo's wife, had a certain ability to mobilize the human and material resources of the Ichiha clan, and she also convinced Yukino, who was the person in charge of the enormous industries of the Ichiha clan, to help them. Tsunade provided Kanoha's human and material resources. Kakuzu took Nagato to meet with the head of the Ichiha clan scientific research department in the Land of Snow, the genius scientist Tono Katasuke, and they discussed the exploration of the new continent as well as Nagato's experiences in outer space. Itachi, Conan, Sasuke and others were making plans to unify the shinobi world. After progress was made on how to achieve large-scale exploration of the continent on the other side of the world, they were ready to act. Of course, the easiest way to unify the shinobi world is to let Natsuo do it. It just depended on how Amayori and his other wives convince him. Natsuo was completely taken aback, but seeing these guys so full of energy, he just let them do whatever they wanted. They do their thing. I revive my Ichiha clan. Natsuo was sure that his actions in recent days 
had allowed the Yumenso to influence Conan's decisions and actions enough, so that night, he took her into his arms. He removed Conan's Akatsuki coat, and it was revealed that underneath she was wearing a revealing navy blue tunic with a large hem in the front exposing her arms, her back, the side of her chest, and her belly. Furthermore, her navel was surrounded by four piercings. Natsuo gently grabbed her shoulder before slowly turning her around while his fingers danced over her back. At first he concentrated on her upper back, sliding down slowly. Conan managed to remain silent for a moment before a stubborn moan finally escaped her beautiful lips. His hand ran gently down her spine, making her shiver. Her moans became common once he reached her lower back, passing dangerously close to her buttocks. But instead of her arousal increasing, she stiffened. So Natsuo stopped sliding further down. Conan lowered her head, and in an act of shyness, she crossed her arms in front of her chest to try to cover them, since they were only covered with her blue tunic. However, Natsuo was able to glimpse enough to see her nipples pushing hard against the surface of the fabric indicating her arousal. Natsuo placed his arms gently around her waist, her back pressing against his chest, and led her to the edge of the bed where he sat behind her. Is not too much. She managed to mutter as she turned her head to look at him. It was a mistake on her part, of course. Because she brought her lips almost to a point of contact, her panicked breath dancing over Natsuo's lips. She was frozen, and he decided to take the opportunity to focus on her stomach, gently playing with the piercings around her navel. She just stood there, frozen, as Natsuo continued to caress her body. Guilt, shock, and pleasure dancing across her face. Natsuo's hands danced just below her breasts. She didn't react and just stiffened, then he passed his hand slowly over her neck, over her face. The silence stretched as he slowly caressed her luscious lips. She remained silent for a while, before a gasp escaped her mouth. She was getting restless. In a moment of inspiration, Natsuo decided to try something new. You trust me, right? He asked her and she nodded, although hesitantly. He smiled as he held up his finger. Suck my finger. What? She exclaimed managing to scream in her excited state. Don't be ridiculous she tried to continue, but he silenced her by pressing his finger to her lips. Come on, you won't be disappointed. Natsuo said as he trailed his finger along her lip, knowing that her shivering had nothing to do with the cold. She looked at him hesitantly, her heartbeat beating loud enough for Natsuo to feel it in his chest. Then, she took his finger between her beautiful lips, pouting good enough to make Warren jealous. As Natsuo had already formed a bond with Conan using his wrench in Okanke, when he shared a small portion of physical and mental energy with her through his finger, she widened her eyes in shock. She bit his finger out of surprise. Fortunately Natsuo's fingers had become stronger due to the shagun, but she still caused him a little pain. Natsuo continued sharing his energy for a while before stopping. What was that? Conan exclaimed surprise and elation on her face. I shared my energy with you. Natsuo responded as if it was something simple. In truth, it was not. The only reason he was able to do it was because of his powerful mental strength, combined with his experience in using the Renchu no Kenke over time. But how? Through a bond that is formed due to an ability I possess, although it is the first time I have used it in this way. He responded and she seemed very surprised. Are you ready to continue? Natsuo said as he placed his finger in Conan's mouth once again, this time, letting the energy share more slowly. Of course, that wasn't the only thing he was doing. With Conan's attention on the finger between her warm lips and the energy flowing from him, it was the best time for Natsuo to slide his hand down the exposed side of Conan's chest. It looked like she was about to complain, but Natsuo chose that moment to let an enormous amount of energy fill her mouth, making her moan in the process. Natsuo's hand completely wrapped around Conan's breast, which caused her to lower her head, stiffening once more. Fortunately, Natsuo's finger was in her mouth, so he distracted her with another burst of energy, resulting in a beautiful moan. Due to that moment of distraction, she made no comment when Natsuo grabbed the zipper slider of her tunic and released it with one quick movement, finally leaving her breasts exposed. Conan just gave Natsuo a shy look. Natsuo continued to drag his hand to its last untouched spot, hidden behind her blue pants. This time, she was well aware of the destination, but she did nothing to stop him other than a trembling hand that she reached out reflexively before stopping suddenly, proving that Natsuo wasn't the only one feeling excited at the prospect. Conan stood up slightly as Natsuo pulled down her pants along with her panties, revealing her beautiful, carefully shaved lower lips. At the same time Natsuo shared another wave of energy. Natsuo dragged his finger over her most sensitive spot with torturous slowness, making her moan helplessly. A beautiful expression of confusion spread across her face, further enhanced by the blush that reddened her skin. She shifted uncomfortably, but she made no attempt to move away from her comfortable position of leaning against Natsuo's chest. Her innocent but accepting reaction added to the fact that she was one of the most powerful kunochi in the world, and one of the leaders of the Akatsuki organization made Natsuo almost unable to contain himself. And now, she was trying to ignore her own reaction when Natsuo sat her on his lap. She shuddered, her shyness obvious. But that didn't stop her from moving around on his shaft trying to get comfortable. A small bribe for her tempting obedience was in order. Natsuo decided as he placed his finger near her mouth once more. But this time, instead of sliding it right in, he lingered on her lips, tracing the edges even as her mouth opened. Conan let a gasp escape from her mouth. She moved her lips trying to catch his finger, 
But Natsuo stopped her before she could, earning a frustrated growl, enough to make him laugh. Natsuo let his finger slide into her mouth and made his energy flow once more. Then, while she was distracted, Natsuo let his other free hand roam over her body. Natsuo wanted to go deeper into Conan's breasts. But since it was her first time, she deserved more considerate treatment. Instead, he let his fingers slide over her stomach, caressing her piercings with soft, fleeting touches. That was enough to elicit a moan from her, muffled due to his finger in her mouth. He wasn't sharing any more energy with her, but Conan continued to suck him with the same enthusiasm, making Natsuo's imagination work over time on other things she might enjoy sucking. Natsuo's hand danced across the underside of her bare breasts, ideas like modesty and personal space long forgotten. Natsuo reached for her breasts, which, although not as large as Tsuned and Samu's, was still beautiful in their vivacity and perfect shape, and the way her nipples hardened at his touch was more than enough to address the size deficiency. She was beautiful, and the fact that she was one of the strongest Kunochi in the world made the moment even more exciting. Natsuo's finger was no longer in her mouth, allowing him to continue caressing her nipples even as his other hand moved down to caress her toned legs. She gasped tenderly but did not resist. He couldn't help but feel excited at the sight of her most sensitive spot, clean-shaven despite her lack of experience. Natsuo's fingers briefly caressed her lower lips before concentrating on her inner thighs, massaging her slowly but sensually. He then let his fingers move toward her hot spot, enjoying the way her wetness covered his fingers. It feels amazing. Conan moaned loudly. Of course you do, but you haven't seen anything yet. Natsuo told her as his fingers began to move Conan's enjoyment showing in a series of moans that came out of her mouth. She was really delicious. Natsuo turned Conan's face with his other hand, then froze when he pressed her lips against his, cutting off another moan midway. He kissed her softly even as he shared his energy with her through the bond. Conan moved in Natsuo's lap faster and faster as she approached the first orgasm of her life, and the distance between her muffled moans was reduced even more. So when Natsuo finally slid a finger into her in trance, it was no surprise that Conan began to shake helplessly as she was hit by an orgasm. Natsuo slid his hands to her stomach, caressing her gently as she tried to process the pleasure, at the same time they held a lingering kiss. Natsuo's hands on her stomach began to move once again, moving up towards Conan's breasts, caressing the edge sensually, something that made her moan. Natsuo suddenly met Conan's gaze and gave her a wide, cocky smile. She smiled back, although she still had a touch of shyness. Meanwhile, Natsuo's hand slid to Conan's entrance, circling her clitoris and making her moan. His fingers danced slowly at her entrance enough to excite her but not enough to bring her to another climax. The silence lasted for a while. Well, not exactly silence as her moans echoed through the room with an arousing frequency. Natsuo had Conan get up from his lap as he began to take off his pants. She was about to lie on her back on the bed, but he gestured for her to stop before lying on his back. Why don't you take the seat of honor, Miss Angel of God? Natsuo said as he smiled in amusement. Her blush and excited smile were a stark contrast to her usual coldness. Her legs shook as she climbed onto the bed, feeling excited at the prospect. She approached Natsuo before turning her back on him, and lowering her hips towards his shaft, but he stopped her just as her entrance kissed the crown of his shaft. What happened? She whispered. I want you to turn around. I want to get lost in your beautiful amber eyes while we do it. Natsuo said to her. All right? Conan whispered as she turned towards him, hesitant and shy, giving him a full frontal view of her beautiful body, making his shaft throb with anticipation. Then, Conan lowered her hips, slowly enveloping Natsuo's shaft between her warm folds. She shuddered for a moment when she felt the pressure on her barrier. But she didn't let that delay her more than a moment, shaking it off with one hard push, not even bothering to stop to adjust. It was no wonder, considering her strength, that a little pain didn't stop her from doing what she wanted. However, as Natsuo's shaft penetrated deeper into her, her speed slowed as her expression twisted with joy and desire. Natsuo was happy to feel that the bond with Conan grew a little stronger. This feels amazing, Conan murmured as she remained still, after devouring Natsuo's entire length. He let her move up and down at her own pace, letting her enjoy her experience before he took control of her. Conan raised her hips until only the tip of his shaft was wrapped between her folds, before lowering herself with torturous slowness, only to stop for a moment when the entire shaft was inside her. You are beautiful. Natsuo whispered to her as he kept eye contact with her, trying his best to show her sincerity. It was not a difficult task. Not when her beautiful body lay in front of his in spectacular nakedness. At the same time she did her best to make his shaft disappear inside her despite her discomfort, her beautiful face contorted with her pleasure. Really? Conan gasped, surprised, as if she had heard it for the first time. Natsuo was about to dismiss that as a ridiculous idea, before remembering that the blue-haired beauty in front of him had a rather sad past. Even without adding Akatsuki's unflattering uniform and her cold behavior, he doubted many would have the courage to openly flirt with her. It was a farce that needed to be corrected, he decided. Yes, you are, Natsuo said. The way your blue hair sticks to your face, the way your beautiful lips shine under the flickering lights, 
The way your eyes shine with joy, every part of you is beautiful. He whispered hoarsely as he spread his hands over her body, caressing her sides very gently. At the same time, Natsuo felt his bond with Conan grow a little stronger again. Tell me more. Conan gasped, her tone indicating that she was already halfway to orgasm. You always have a calm expression carrying yourself coldly. Natsuo whispered, scary and intimidating. But it still makes me want to take you somewhere where no one can see us before I rip off your clothes to see what's underneath her pace quickened each repetition forcing Natsuo's shaft deeper inside her. She didn't seem entirely comfortable with the amount she was taking. But if she wanted to push her limits, who was he to argue? And do you like what's under my clothes? Conan gasped as she looked into his eyes since for someone wearing a tunic that technically didn't reveal anything of her figure, the clothes she was wearing underneath were quite daring. Oh, you can rest assured, Natsuo whispered. I found a hidden treasure beyond my dreams. Natsuo said with a hoarse voice, making her shiver with every word. Tell me more. She gasped as she increased speed, rocking her hips recklessly. Of course. Natsuo said, your hips are beautiful, sculpted to perfection, and your pussy Natsuo said, lingering a little before letting out a moan. Oh, being inside your pussy is the most pleasant feeling I've ever felt in my life. That seemed to be the last trigger she needed, as her eyes suddenly closed and her body stiffened, the sign of an impending orgasm. Since Natsuo was also already at the limit, he decided to share with her the maximum energy that her bond allowed him. Natsuo gave one last push before he began to spurt inside her like a broken dam, beat after beat filling her completely. It turned out to be the last thing he needed to push her over the edge as she exploded into screams as she collapsed onto his chest, Natsuo's shaft still inside her, filling her to the brim. At the same time the bond was strengthened again. Natsuo controlled his breathing as he enjoyed the feeling of conquering another cage-level Kunoichi. While she tried to control her breathing, he continued pumping into her, wanting to enjoy the moment as much as possible. Conan kissed Natsuo for a while before she collapsed unconscious against his chest, her breathing soft and content. This was because it was the first time Natsuo shared physical and mental energy with her, so her body needed to rest. Natsuo could have slid underneath her while waiting for her to recover, but he chose to continue lying beneath her soft body, with his erect shaft still inside her. Even when she was unconscious from exhaustion, the grip of her folds on his shaft was spectacular and she moaned beautifully. The next few minutes passed in relative calm, although Natsuo was still inside her, sliding in and out of her repeatedly as he kissed her, sharing small bursts of energy, trying to speed up the process of her body's adaptation. There is just one small problem. Natsuo hugged the limp Conan and looked into the distance helplessly, in a research room within the Achiha clan district about 10 kilometers away. The Gato stood up and looked into the distance trying to look in the direction of the Achiha clan's main residence. Obviously, he also knew what would happen tonight. Although he knew that he couldn't change anything, he couldn't help but feel uneasy and looked in his direction constantly. Although Natsuo knew that Nagato did not have his range of perception and at this distance, he could not see or feel anything. But for some reason, he had a feeling that what was he aware of? That feeling was just at that moment Conan woke up due to Natsuo's excitement. What are you? She began, a small blush spreading across her face. Her words would remain unfinished, because he trapped her lips against his, silencing her the best way he could. And when he pushed his shaft deeper inside her once more, he managed to get a beautiful moan out of her. Natsuo in his excitement changed their positions so that she was underneath him, while he pounded her as deep as possible, earning another moan. She looked at him with her eyes still confused. This time Natsuo decided to take things to the next level. Previously, she experienced calm and comfortable sexual relations. Now, it was time for him to introduce her to pure sex. He grabbed her legs and before she could react, he put them over his shoulders and leaned forward, forcing her to bend at a very awkward angle. An angle that gave him a perfect angle to impale her tunnel. Natsuo took advantage of the opportunity and penetrated her without mercy. What followed was pure penetration. Natsuo slammed into her again and again. He kissed her repeatedly and took advantage of that moment to share his energy with her through that bond. But even those moments did not have any hint of tenderness, but rather pure domination. Natsuo felt the bond between them strengthen again. At the same time, she was rapidly approaching climax under the unknown sensations. They orgasmed at the same time, Conan's juices mixing with Natsuo's as he shared another wave of energy. Natsuo could feel his energy strengthening Conan. Aside from Tsunade, she is the only one among his wives who can withstand the greatest strengthening through Renchu no Kanke. Since emotions influence the degree of strength of the bond, Natsuo decided to be nice to her again. He slid off of her for a moment, letting her legs fall onto her bed. Then, without wasting a second more than necessary, he entered her again in a missionary position, with their lips intertwined in a soft kiss. It feels so good. Conan moaned as he experienced another orgasm. How come I've never tried this before? She added wistfully, her emotions as well as the degree of strengthening of the bond, showed that now she was no longer influenced by the Yumenso, and actually felt a certain degree of attachment towards Natsuo. The vanilla sex lasted another half hour as she steadily grew stronger through the Renshi no Kanke. At the same time, the bond between them continued to strengthen throughout the process. 
After a while Natsua could no longer continue strengthening Conan as her body reached its limit and she became unconscious again. What surprised Natsua quite a bit is that Conan has almost the same level of potential as Tsunade, and considering that she doesn't come from any of the main lineages of the Naruto series, this is quite surprising. Natsuo, are you really unwilling to free the rakage? Tsunade massaged her temples, visibly frustrated. The Kamogaka envoys look for me every day. It's really a headache. If you want something, tell me, I can talk to Kumogaka. It's harmful to keep the rakage locked up in Kanova all the time. Tsunade sighed. I cannot do it. He shook his head Natsuo. She owes me her life. I can't just let her go without returning that favor. Kumogaka is willing to pay compensation, Tsunade suggested, but Natsuo shook his head again. Ichiha don't need money, and I don't want anything from Kumogaka, except for herself. This is not negotiable. If Yujido couldn't return the favor for saving his life, why should he work for free? However, the reality was complicated. Unlike Conan, who was able to accept the situation more easily due to the influence of Yumenso, Yujido demonstrated with her actions what a non-violence movement meant. So Natsuo just let Yujito live together with Samu. When Yujido saw Samu she was shocked, as she thought that Natsuo would have killed her. But after thinking about it, it is reasonable that Natsuo would have kept her captive within the Achiha clan. In fact, Yujito didn't really like the fourth Rakage's plan to obtain the Achiha clan lineage. Those kinds of tactics that sacrificed the Kinoichi didn't please her in the slightest, and she felt a little sorry for Samu. However, at that time the fourth Rakage had a great reputation, and since the plan seemed feasible, she had not raised any objections. Unfortunately, the plan failed. As a result, Natsuo retaliated against Kumogaka and suffered disastrous losses. With so many internal problems, Kumogaka had no time to investigate Samui's whereabouts. The village had even listed her as killed in battle, and everyone had forgotten her even Yujito. If Natsuo hadn't thrown her to live together with Samui, would have forgotten her too. While Yujito and Samui catch up on what had happened recently, the door to Samui's residence opened. Natsuo's figure slowly appeared. Natsuo, give up! Yujito didn't wait for Natsuo to speak and told him directly, I will not submit to you. In the last few days, Natsuo had come to visit her several times to ask if she had changed her mind. However, but Natsuo just returned a strange look. Sorry, I really didn't come to find you, Samui. Let's get started. As he spoke, he pulled Samui to the side. At first, Yujito looked at Natsuo strangely, but soon her eyes widened. Natsuo asked Samui to transform into her human beast form, then made her bend over the table and lifted her dress before standing behind her, Natsuo. What are you doing? Yujito was first surprised by Samui's transformation, but then became angry at what Natsuo was doing to Samui in front of her. Natsuo looked at her strangely. Don't you see what I'm doing? Yu Yujito was furious. Embracing the attitude of the non-violence movement also meant being mentally prepared for violence, leading to cooperation. But the person in front of her is a Kinoji from Kumogaka, who sacrificed herself for the interests of the village. And she is the Reikage who was supposed to protect the Kumo Shinobi. Plus the way Natsuo was treating Samui the two tails violent chakra began to surge, her pupils began to transform into cat pupils, and Yujito tried to free herself from the seal on her body. However, Natsuo simply gave him an indifferent look as the seal restrictions activated, and his entire chakra was sealed again as well as restricting his movements. Yujito looked at Natsuo with wide eyes, flames of fury in her eyes. But Natsuo didn't flinch in the slightest. Hours later, Natsuo, satisfied, said goodbye to Samui, and left her residence calmly. As for what Yujito thought, who had been paralyzed and could only watch from the sidelines, what does this have to do with Natsuo? While Nagato and the others were excitedly rebuilding the Akatsuki organization, planning to follow the path to world peace that Natsuo had suggested, Natsuo was not sitting idle either. He continued his task of reviving the Achiha clan, and many of his wives became pregnant again. It is important to note that, thanks to the use of potions from the revival series, as well as Natsuo's increasingly versatile use of the Renshu no Kanke, his weakest wives are now of the rank of special jonin, being important pillars within the Achiha clan as well as Kanoha. Elite jonin and jonin are also not a minority, each being powerful enough to control a small shinobi clan. The rewards they can provide Natsuo are also very rich. Gurren and Yuzumaki Yoko also gave birth one after another. The snake princesses of Ryuchi Cave also brought good news to Natsuo. After Gurren married Natsuo, she obtained the resources of the Achiha clan. So she quickly reached the cage level, plus her crystal release is a quite powerful KK Genkai. Although Yuzumaki Yoko's strength was Jonin level, the Yuzumaki clan's bloodline was one of the best in the shinobi world. Adding the three cage level snake princesses these children would have great potential, especially Gurren and Joko's children. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 198, you get mental power plus 17 Amenate Jakara. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 197, you get Chakra plus 17, Limbo, Border Jail. Although the evaluation did not exceed 200, these two Rinnegan techniques are much more useful than the common otherworld skills obtained. 
when the evaluation exceeds 200. The work of the newly formed Akatsuki organization was very smooth. The chakra itself is a phenomenon that defies scientific laws, and is an extremely efficient source of energy. Nagato can go back and forth for a hundred kilometers, with just a bite of rice. Of course, Akatsuki's goal is colonization of the new continent and resource extraction, as well as space colonization, so they can't rely on Nagato alone as a carrier. But that is not a problem. When Kabuto learned of Akatsuki's latest plan, he volunteered to join and recommended the Shinobi world's greatest scientist for Rochimaru. Since Akatsuki, in its quest for peace, had already taken in many missing Nen, there was no reason to leave out Orochimaru due to ethical issues. Soon, both parties were in contact. Since the Achiha clan's think tank perfected the plan that Nagato and the others had proposed, to achieve the goal they wanted, they first had to improve society as a whole and create an industrial base large enough to support the exploration project of the new continent as well as subsequent space exploration. Orochimaru showed a lot of interest after learning that a new continent existed as well as Akatsuki's space plan. Furthermore, with the tempting offer of full financing and not taking into account his defection, he quickly perfected the chakra battery that the Achiha clan had developed, which could now be used as a pillar for the expansion of the industrial base, without having to worry about lack of power. On the other hand, the head of research of the Achiha clan, the scientific genius Katasuke Tono, modified the Zero Tails sealing technique to use the Zero Tails to recharge the new chakra batteries. With this he managed to develop an energy system that consumes only chakra to produce mechanical and electrical energy, among other types of energy, necessary for industrial and civil use. Katasuke had already been collaborating with Natsuo on a lot of research, and one of the main research was to modify the Zero Tails, so that it not only feeds on people's negative emotions, but so that it uses the entire emotional spectrum of people to create chakra. Natsuo looked at them busy at their work, and was amazed at the progress they were making. And since they wanted to speed up the development of Shinobi World, he decided to intervene, and gave them reference information from their previous world to use as a guide in the development they were planning. He also told them everything he remembered about the new continent as well as the existence of the Stone of Jell Vein that existed on the Shinobi continent and the possible implications of similar veins existing on the new continent, which he called the Western Continent. The Jell Stone is a source of life energy contained in a mineral scene in the film Naruto. The Legend of the Jell Stone According to what Natsuo remembered, on the Western Continent, they used this mineral to build a huge super-civilization. To put it clearly, it is a type of solid-state biological energy, and it is impossible for this type of versatile energy to only be handled by the small town mentioned in the movie Naruto. Considering that the Western Continent is larger than the Shinobi Continent, and according to what he saw in the film Naruto, Natsuo believes that it is possible that a civilization based on Western fantasy with knights and mages has developed. Natsuo initially did not think about finding the Stone of Jell. First, because finding a caravan of the thousands that exist in the Land of Wind to find Kahiko was almost impossible, and going to the Western Continent for the possibility that it existed there was too problematic. But now that the new Akatsuki organization is so willing, he can leave this job to them. Use as an energy source aside, the fact that Jell Stone extends lifespan as well as being a biological energy source could make the revival series potions take another leap forward the antagonist who possesses the stone of jell Haido is weak. After the explosion, he was defeated by a young version of Naruto. He could be said to be the weakest member of the villain group, not to mention the members of the new Akatsuki organization, even the random Jonin of Kanoha, could easily defeat him. Natsuo can't understand who gave him the courage to try to dominate the world with such power. After Natsuo explained to Itachi the importance of the Jell Stone in reviving the Achiha clan, he took this task and promised to secure the Jell Stone mines. He then set out on his mission with a team of shinobi hired by the Achiha clan, as well as some of Kanoha's shinobi. Nagato slowly descended from the sky, holding a large piece of unknown meteorite in his hands. After Natsuo mentioned the Jell Stone, Nagato began bringing meteorites back from space every day, hoping that something could contribute to scientific research. For this reason, he also specially studied the classification of minerals. Although most of what he brought daily turned out to be useless, the occasional high-quality material made him happy for a while. He was not an expert in scientific research, so this was the best he could do. I should send this for Tono Katasuk to review, Nagato thought. Compared to Orochimaru, who always had a malicious smile on his face, Katasuke, the honorable scientist, was more trustworthy to Nagato. Of course, Katasuke is an expert in scientific tools, which makes him more suitable for these investigations than Orochimaru, who specializes in biology. Nagato thought about how close they were to peace, and couldn't help but smile. He then began to drag the large meteorite towards the Echeha clan scientific research institute, on the outskirts of Kanova village. Suddenly, Nagato's expression changed. The space in front of him distorted instantly. A familiar figure emerged from him. Nagato, the time has come to recover the eyes that were left in your care. Abito said coldly, Sure enough, my eyes are your work. Seeing Abito's figure, Nagato sighed and at the same time was not surprised. Did you see the stone tablet of the Achiha clan? Abito didn't care, and his expression was indifferent. But that won't change your destiny. Then give me your eyes. With that said, he attacked directly. Nagato frowned, stepped back, and said, Although I don't know who you are, I will call you Achiha Madara Achiha Madara. You are also a person who works for peace. 
Have you considered the goals of the new Akatsuki? New Akatsuki. Abito frowned slightly. Had they created a new organization? That's right. I, Conan, Atachi, Tsunade. We have formed a new Akatsuki organization. Nagato said seriously. We have set a new goal for peace. The conflicts in the Shinobi world come from the unfair distribution of resources. So he slowly explained Natsuo's theory at that moment. And then he summed it up in one sentence. In short, if we strive to expand our territories, improve the productivity of society and obtain more resources, there will be enough for everyone, and the days of hunger and suffering will come to an end. Nagato said seriously, of course, there will probably also be exploitation. But as long as the distribution of resources was fair, no one would go hungry or be homeless on the streets. And there would be no armed conflicts. With the entire shinobi world united and the western continent as the adversary, there would be no major internal wars. Perhaps there would be infighting. But compared to the present, it would definitely be a path to perfect peace. Abito was silent, he really didn't expect Nagato to have discovered a new continent, much less have any ideas about conquering outer space. How ambitious to ambitious, but sorry, my goal has never changed. Abito kept his expression cold and impassive. The world I want to create can only be realized with the infinite Tsukuyomi. There is no Rin on another continent, nor in outer space. What Abito wants is a peaceful world with Rin. Even if the infinite Tsukuyomi is an illusory piece, it is an illusory piece with Rin. Then let me see the power of Uchiha Madara. Nagato took a deep breath with a solemn expression. Good. Abito nodded slightly. Let's finish this quickly. I picked a time when Natsuo wasn't around to confront you. Natsuo was happily ravaging Samui. Meanwhile, Yujita was immobilized by the seals and watched them furiously, unable to look away as they had sex in front of her. However, after leaving the Samui residence, he encountered Nagato who was covered in blood and was being treated by Tsune. His eyes had even been gouged out. It was Madara Uchiha who did it. But I don't think it's really him. Nagato said in a weak voice, blood gushing from his eye sockets. But still, he was perceptive enough to notice Natsuo's presence immediately. My Rinnegan was really a trap set by him. He acted very quickly. Natsuo commented. Kanoha was huge. Even Natsuo couldn't expand his perception to be aware of everything that was happening in Kanoha all the time. The place where Nagato landed was quite far from the Uchiha clan area. So the barriers and seals set up to protect his family were not activated. How could he beat you? Natsuo asked curiously. Your body has already recovered, and without summoning the demonic statue, you shouldn't have had much pressure. Although Obito was strong, that was mainly due to his unique abilities granted to him by his Manjakyo. With his Kamui ability, Obito had a certain advantage in any fight, but that was it. He only had one Manjakyo and couldn't even use the Susanu. If Nagato tries his best and uses the Rinnegan no matter the cost, he could definitely show the pinnacle of strength in the Shinobi world. As a result, Obito easily defeated Nagato when he was near Kanoha, without causing enough of a stir to alert his perception. They already had a plan. Nagato gritted his teeth. That person seems to have put some kind of restriction on me. Something I didn't notice which surprised me and left me vulnerable, restricting my movements. Natsuo understood immediately upon hearing that. Yes, this is quite normal. Nagato's eyes were given by Ichiha Madara, and as an existence that came out of the Sengoku period. How could it be possible to only pin all hopes on its own strength? With Abito, he had placed a curse seal on his heart, allowing Madara to take his life at any time. Naturally, he wouldn't allow himself to be negligent towards Nagato either. After all, that was the Rinnegan. How could he not have considered the possibility of Nagato rebelling by using the Rinnegan? Under a sneak attack, it is normal to succeed with one move. Fortunately, Nagato was strong enough on his own, and Abito was also worried about causing a ruckus that might attract Natsuo. Just took away Nagato's Rinnegan and retreated decisively. Ha! Huh. Tsunade withdrew his hand and let out a long breath. The treatment is over, but I can't get your eyes back. I suggest you consider transplanting a pair of eyes. The eyes were the most important sensory organs for humans, and could easily affect a shinobi's strength. The transplant Nagato reflected briefly. Losing his eyes has a great impact on Nagato's strength, not only losing the unique abilities of the Rinnegan, but also losing his sight. However, eye transplantation would only be palliative. Any transplant involves a certain degree of rejection and incompatibility. Therefore, the success rate to obtain the eternal Manjekyo Sharingan increases between blood brothers. But there's no need. Natsuo decided to make it up to Nagato, because he was actually waiting for his eyes to be stolen. He then placed his hand on Nagato's eye sockets. An hour later Nagato slowly opened his eyes. What is this? Tsunade asked in amazement. Medical ninjutsu. More or less. Natsuo shrugged his shoulders. Nagato was also surprised as he experimented with his new eyes. Although he had lost the powerful Rinnegan, his new eyes had an advantage. They didn't constantly consume his chakra. The powerful physique of the Yuzumaki clan was back. Although he lost the Rinnegan, he still has a cage level if he only relies on his huge chakra. And he can also learn the sealing technique of the Yuzumaki clan. Even at the cage level, Nagato is still a strong player. Thank you Natsuo, Nagato said after a moment of silence. You're welcome. I did it for Conan. Natsuo waved his hand and said nonchalantly. Let her make it up to me tonight. Conan blushed upon hearing that, and Nagato could only smile wryly. 
Meanwhile, at the Akatsuki base Abito, who had transplanted a Rinnegan, was standing on one of the fingers of the demonic statue. Good, I have recovered the Rinnegan, now we can proceed with the ceiling, Abito said in a deep voice. Dadara next to him looked at Abito with emotion in his eyes. Rinnegan has appeared, apparently the original boss was defeated even a silent defeat. Kissum didn't take it seriously. He knew from the beginning that Abito was Akatsuki's mastermind behind the scenes. Although he didn't understand why Nagato, with the powerful Rinnegan, could be defeated by Abito. Let's begin. Abito sighed. It's just the four of us, so it's going to take a long time. Everyone nodded slightly and took out Killer B silently. After regaining his vision, Nagato along with Itachi, began to mobilize all the resources the new Akatsuki organization had access to, and began collecting information on all aspects of the Shinobi world. They even began simulating military strategies, evaluating how they could take control of the Shinobi world, with the lowest possible cost. On the other hand, Natsuo stopped paying attention to what they were doing. Peace or war in the Shinobi world were irrelevant to him. What mattered to him was, the resurrection technique has finally been completed, I'm going to try it right now. With that said, Natsuo headed directly to Makoto's room. During this time, Natsuo had manipulated Makoto's DNA samples to regress her age until she regained her peak physical form and included fragments of both the Senju and Yuzumaki bloodlines in her genetic code. That's why when Natsuo summoned her again using impure world reincarnation, she seemed to be around 18 years old again. Natsuo held Makoto's palm tightly, and a steady flow of chakra poured into her. Makoto kept her eyes closed, and then she began to feel the warm chakra flowing through her body, enveloping her in a pleasant sensation of warmth. It was as if her entire being was immersed in a pleasant wave of comfort, making her want to lie down on the floor and relax fully, letting out a contented sigh. Her skin that was similar to that of cracked porcelain, gradually healed. The steam filled the air and spread slowly. Finally her skin regained its soft and elastic tone of yes to you. Natsuo slowly removed his hand, smiling. How about it? Do you notice any difference? Makoto opened her eyes and stared at her skin, now soft and radiant. Her body felt full of vitality. She felt that her body was much stronger than when she was alive. Am I really alive now? Makoto looked at her arm, feeling the strong beating of her heart and her abundant vitality. She couldn't hold back her tears, and threw herself into Natsuo's arms, tears welling up in her eyes. Thank you Natsuo, thank you very much. Natsuo was a little confused at first, in his impression Makoto has always considered Itachi and Sasuke the most important, if he hadn't guaranteed their safety, maybe she wouldn't even be willing to resurrect, let alone get close to him. So how did she come to feel so moved? It wasn't until he heard Makoto's description of the feeling of loneliness, coldness, and darkness she felt while being revived by the impure world reincarnation, that Natsuo was able to understand her outburst. While Makoto experienced the feeling of being alive again, they both stood hugging each other in silence. Now I understand why Achiha Madara in the Naruto series was so excited after being revived, he even let himself get hit a few times, causing some injuries he probably felt something similar, right? Natsuo lightly squeezed Makoto in his embrace, and with an apologetic expression on his face said, I'm sorry for making you endure this kind of suffering, don't worry. It was a necessary sacrifice. Makoto shook his head. Although the experience of being revived by the impure world reincarnation technique was not pleasant, it was better than staying in the pure land forever. Natsuo then proceeded to explain to her that he had given her part of the Senju and Yuzumaki lineage. And although it is impossible for her to awaken the Kekei Jenkai of said clans, those lineages had still greatly strengthened her body. After Makoto calmed her emotions, Natsuo took her to meet the rest of the family. She really has come back to life. Revived. Natsuo, didn't you have to pay a price for this? There is such a thing mom. Everyone in Ichiha looked at Makoto in shock. Sasuke and Itachi looked excited and had tears in their eyes. Hakura and Kishina showed complicated expressions, lost in thought. On the other hand, Tsunade and the others were completely shocked and disbelieving, staring at Makoto as if they were under a Jinjutsu. Makoto was blushing from their looks, but she didn't let go of Natsuo's hand. Makoto has come back to life. Hakura, Kishina, shouldn't you consider it? Natsuo proposed with a smile. Hakura seemed to be reflecting. Kishina hesitated for a moment, but then said determinedly, No, I won't give up. Even though they were also in the state of being revived by the impure world reincarnation technique and experienced the restlessness that came with being dead, as high-level shinobi they could still endure it. They continued to maintain their convictions. Meanwhile, Natsuo, are you sure that your resurrection has no side effects? Nagato asked with a frown. Are you sure it hasn't affected your body? Conan also looked at Natsuo anxiously. Yes, Natsuo, check it carefully. The Rinnegan Sansara of Heavenly Life technique can revive people, but even when Yohiko's body was present the entire time at the Akatsuki base, none of them attempted to revive him. This is because this technique requires a great sacrifice. The life of the user, Nagato might be willing, but both he and Conan knew that Yohiko would not accept that outcome. I've spent a lot of chakra, Natsuo said with a shrug. Do not think that I have not lost anything. My consumption has been significant. If we calculate it, it was more tiring than fighting you ten times. 
After Natsuo improved the resurrection technique, eliminating the cost of life, it still took a huge amount of chakra to maintain it. Just to revive Makoto this time, Natsuo used 40% of his total chakra. Even tail beasts would not have the amount of chakra needed to perform the technique. Well, maybe the nine tails can do it. And it must be taken into account that Natsuo also used natural energy. One could say that the technique incorporated Senjutsu during its execution. But no matter how heartbreaking the cost, Chakra is still a regenerative energy. Nagato in Conan's eyes lit up instantly. Nagato took a step forward, but he didn't have the nerve to speak. Conan bit her lip and said, Natsuo, I want to ask you. Yes, you want me to revive Yahiko, right? Okay? Natsuo said with a smile. In fact, they were lucky. Yahiko still has an intact body. Although he was turned into a puppet, but he retained almost all of his cells, so it would be quite simple to bring him back to life. If they just bury the body or cremate it, I won't be able to help them at all. Tsunade also wanted to speak, but upon hearing these words, she could only give an ironic smile with regret in her heart. Yes, Tsunade wanted to revive her younger brother Nawaki. Nawaki's death was a mystery, and when the elders of the Senju clan received the corpse without internal organs, in a fit of anger, they chose to cremate his body, leaving no opportunity for the village to intervene. As a result, the chances of reviving him were cut off. Damn third Hokage. Tsune cursed inwardly. She understood the thoughts of the clan elders who were still alive at the time, especially after she became Hokage. She read some documents that only Hokage could read, and she also understood that the actions of those clan elders at that time were reasonable. Because third Hokage and Danzo are really planning to dig Nawaki's grave. But the result ruined the hope of Nawaki's resurrection. All this it was the third Hokage's fault. Natsuo took a break and then revived Yuhiko. It really was exhausting work. Even with Natsuo's impressive regeneration ability, she still felt like his body was completely exhausted. It even affected that night's activities to revive the Achiha clan. Although Conan was full of sincerity, and he let him try all the tricks that he didn't want to before. But Natsuo was really tired, and he almost couldn't stand it. He hadn't felt like this in a long time. After having obtained so many improvements from the system, he almost never ran out of energy. And he just wanted to fall into bed exhausted, without interest in anything else. Fortunately, Conan noticed this and became even more loving and understanding. It wasn't until Natsuo regained his strength the next day that Conan finally fulfilled his wishes, and she let Natsuo enjoy it, which is considered a kindness. I still can't believe it's not a dream. Conan gasped as he caught his breath and looked into the distance. Now you can resurrect the dead. When I learned that Nagato's Rinnegan could do it, but at the cost of the user's life. I thought it would be impossible for Nagato, Yuhiko and I to meet again. Natsuo smiled. You should have learned it by now. Nothing is impossible for me. In response, Conan kissed him extensively while she was deliciously naked. Yes, nothing is impossible for you. She gasped as Natsuo slid inside her again. Even as Natsuo slid into Conan once again, I couldn't help but think about the wear and tear it took on him to revive two people in a row. But he has a more immediate problem he needed to solve. And that immediate problem was the sexy blue-haired girl who was lying in front of him, with her legs spread and her entrance shining tantalizingly. However, just as Natsuo was about to mercilessly delve inside her, he heard a knock on the door. How inconvenient. Natsuo thought as he extended his perception to check the visitor's identity, only to be intrigued when he discovered her identity. It was Makoto. Natsuo walked towards the door, under Conan's annoyed look. Can't you just fire her? Conan said as he sat on the edge of the bed, arms crossed under her breasts and frowning. It was clear that she was trying to return to her cold demeanor, but it made her seem sexier. I can. Natsuo responded, smiling wider. But I will not. Why would I, when this was my chance to have a threesome? Natsuo opened the door and looked at the dark blue-haired beauty on the other side of the door. As usual, she was wearing a simple purple shirt and a red skirt, but today there was a big difference. This time her skirt was much shorter, barely reaching the middle of her delicious thighs. Makoto covered her mouth and laughed temptingly. You said that as soon as I was resurrected I would have to pay for it. But it seems it's not my turn yet, now is the perfect time. Natsuo said as he gestured for her to enter. That said, Makoto decisively accepted Natsuo's invitation, even though she seemed a little self-conscious. After Conan saw her, she just smiled as she lay down, hands on the bed. Although Conan seemed very reserved on the outside, but in the privacy of the bedroom, she was very flirtatious and daring. Makoto was clearly surprised by Conan's bold behavior. Of course, Makoto was not very different from Conan either, but because during her youth she was forced to repress herself, because she was the fiancé of the future clan leader, and after getting married, she continued to repress herself, because Fugaki was someone very rigid. But now that she no longer had the limitations of her identity, she became bolder. Her hand reached for the thread holding her simple shirt together and pulled it off, revealing her perky breasts beneath it. Because she now possessed her peak physical condition, combined with the bloodlines that Natsuo added to her DNA, they turned her body into a masterpiece. After a moment of hesitation, Makoto took off her shirt, and her skirt and underwear soon followed, matching Conan in nakedness. Although a little self-conscious, she still gave Conan a smug smile. You have a nice body. I feel a little, Conan murmured suddenly shyly. Do not be like that. Makoto responded immediately with some embarrassment, while her gaze became soft. 
You are also very beautiful. Your soft skin, your straight blue hair and your elegance, Conan seemed to be about to accept her compliment when Natsuo stood behind Makoto and whispered in her ear. Why don't you go and help regain her trust more intimately? Natsuo whispered, loud enough to be heard by Conan, which made her blush brightly. Makoto wasn't much better. Makoto did not move paralyzed by sudden indecision. Now, she didn't know what kind of courage she had to suddenly enter the room when she knew that Natsuo was with Conan inside. Conan's sudden blush wasn't much better as her initial boldness was fading. Keep going. Natsuo said as he slapped Makoto's butt without warning. Go and help your sister, she's feeling self-conscious. Despite her blushing expression, Makoto stumbled towards Conan, slowly at first, but increasingly sure as she got closer. Why don't you lie down? She whispered even as she placed her hand on Conan's forearm gently, still hesitant. Sure. Conan stammered as she looked self-consciously at Makoto before lying on her back, shivering gently. It was clear that her thoughts were chaotic as she looked between Makoto and Natsuo. Makoto wasn't much better. Still, she let her hand wander slowly over Conan's body. First it was her shoulder, then her sides. When she reached her stomach Conan trembled softly. Are you okay? Makoto asked, trembling. Yeah, Conan said as she looked at Natsuo's raging erection and his fingers already around it. Seeing Conan look away, Makoto also turned and noticed Natsuo's actions. She was a little embarrassed, since despite having been married for so many years, she had never done anything daring with Fugaku. Apparently, Natsuo's arousal gave her all the confidence Makoto needed, because her touch on Conan was much safer, when her hand passed through the valley between Conan's breasts reaching her neck for a moment before to submerge again. As Makoto's fingers delved deeper into Conan's breasts, Conan bit her lips trying to hold back a moan, only to fail spectacularly. Even more impressive, her legs spread revealing her glistening womanhood. Only for a moment, however, as the next second, her legs came together rubbing against each other mercilessly in an effort to satiate her growing arousal. As the seconds passed, her shyness dissipated. Her nipples hardened with each passing second, enough to momentarily resist Makoto's touch as she squeezed them. Unlike Conan, Makoto was not filled with excitement. It was just a moment of boldness that made her want to enter the room. So it was understandable that Conan who had been in the middle of the act was very excited. Conan lay obediently as her entrance became desperately wet, and she tried to reach her entrance, her eyes still closed. Makoto looked at Natsuo questioningly. He shook his head and asked her to stop Conan. The impact of the beautiful scene would be much less if she were allowed to solve her own problems. Makoto proved to be a sweet little soldier, and she grabbed Conan's wrist before her hand could reach between her legs. She moaned helplessly, but she followed Makoto's silent command without complaint and keeping her eyes closed. Excellent. She gasped in disappointment when Makoto removed her hand from her breasts, but that didn't last long as her fingers caressed her navel piercings. Makoto explored them along with her abdomen, while Conan let out soft sighs punctuated by occasional moans. And when Makoto's fingers finally reached the wetness between Conan's legs, she attacked her with sudden aggression. Her two fingers disappeared through Conan's entrance, hooked for maximum impact. Conan kept her eyes firmly closed as she enjoyed the treatment, blatantly ignoring Makoto and Natsuo's presence to focus on her sensations, although Natsuo wasn't unhappy about it. The pure eroticism that was created was far superior to other aspects. Even better, Makoto's idle hand finally landed on her own perky breasts, slowly teasing herself, letting her moans mingle with Conan's. Natsuo continued pumping as he watched Conan writhe helplessly under Makoto's merciless assault. Makoto was too distracted to notice when Conan slid her hand between her legs, but she found it impossible to miss when Conan finally slid her fingers inside her. Conan opened her eyes when Makoto let out a gasp of excitement, and their eyes met. It's not fair if only I enjoy it, Conan explained with a gasp. Despite everything, they managed to surprise Natsuo once again when Makoto leaned in, and they shared a searing kiss, their fingers still between each other's legs, pumping furiously. Such an enthusiastic show. Natsuo couldn't help but approach them, their arousal like sweet nectar in his nose, enjoying the passion they showed while they were lost in each other, writhing in ecstasy. It wasn't exactly a surprise to Natsuo to see them getting closer to climax as time passed. Conan even began to flinch at Makoto's merciless attack, but Makoto did not stop. Neither did Conan, who continued to penetrate Makoto gently and methodically with her fingers, in great contrast to Makoto's style. Conan was surprised to see that Natsuo was next to her, watching their every movement with great attention. Their eyes met, but it didn't slow her down, it just made her faster. The pure desire Natsuo felt at that moment was simply unbearable. When Makoto began to shudder, it also marked the end of Natsuo's resistance. Natsuo exploded, covering Conan's breasts with his seed, while Makoto's toes curled and her back arched. Why don't you help Conan clean up? Natsuo asked Makoto suggestively, and she didn't waste a second before leaning down and running her tongue over Conan's breasts, showing that she was ready for more. How delicious. Natsuo thought as she activated the aim no Yuzum, and regained his erection, his mind already full of ideas on how to make the most of the moment. As Makoto licked the last drops of semen from Conan's breasts, Natsuo moved behind her. His shaft pressed against her butt, and upon feeling her presence, she turned to give him a seductive look. 
Makoto gasped seductively as she turned to gently bite Conan's chest at the same time. Meanwhile, Natsuo moved a little, dragging her erection along Conan's lower abdomen. Natsuo smiled as she squeezed between the two women, and after a moment Makoto stepped aside to give Natsuo some space. So, my wife's any attention for me? Natsuo asked. Greedy. Conan commented, and Makoto chuckled. But that didn't stop them from grabbing his erection at the same time giving it enthusiastic treatment. It was hard to resist the temptation to mock them in turn. Natsuo's hands found Conan's breasts at the same time as he turned his head to bury it between Makoto's breasts, earning a pair of synchronized moans from them. From time to time, Natsuo raised his head to kiss them on the lips, while their bodies rubbed against his. Then, before Natsuo could react, Makoto pushed him onto the bed and then jumped on him, rubbing her soaked entrance along his length. She smiled widely. After a moment of hesitation, Conan hugged Makoto from behind behind, her hands gently caressing her stomach. When Makoto couldn't take it, she slowly descended along Natsuo's shaft, devouring him little by little, while Conan playfully kissed Makoto's neck. Her hot, soaked entrance wrapped tightly around Natsuo's shaft. Makoto stopped suddenly when she felt that there was a barrier stopping the advance of Natsuo's axis. This also surprised Natsuo, since it seems that when he modified Makoto's DNA to make her return to her peak physical condition, it caused her body to return to an intact state. Makoto only paused for a moment before slamming her hips down, making her moan loudly, and because her physique has now been improved she recovered quickly, so she began to move her hips faster and faster. Natsuo lay on his back as he enjoyed Makoto, pushing his shaft deeper and deeper into her as her body got used to being penetrated for the first time. The sight of her generous breasts moving with every step, creating a delicious scene as he invaded Makoto's delicate folds was something spectacular. The more he penetrated Makoto, the louder she moaned. On the other hand, Conan hugged her tighter while her hands went higher, squeezing her breasts. This caused Makoto's back to arch in increasing pleasure. Soon, Natsuo exploded inside Makoto, causing her to climax as well. The bond that Natsuo had established with Makoto using the wrench in OKNK became quite strong at that time. So Natsuo decided to share his energy with Makoto. This caused her moans to increase in intensity and echo throughout the room, creating a delightful spectacle. Finally Makoto collapsed against his chest, and Conan lay next to Natsuo while she kissed him, still not completely satisfied. I've never felt like this. Makoto muttered confusingly, letting out a moan when Natsuo activated his aim no use him again, causing him to regain his erection inside her. I can't go on anymore, Makoto murmured in a low pleading voice, before turning around, making Natsuo's shaft slip out of her, and lying down next to him. However, Natsuo continued to kiss Conan more and more passionately, before making her turn on her side without breaking the kiss. As he penetrated her from behind, Conan accepted his invasion with enthusiasm. Natsuo took advantage of that moment to share more energy with her to strengthen her even more. You feel incredible inside me. Conan exclaimed, before moaning loudly as Natsuo penetrated deeper inside her. Suddenly Natsuo changed position and trapped her beneath him, penetrating her mercilessly as he shared more and more energy inside her, flooding her mind with pleasure. More, more, more. Conan shouted excitedly as Natsuo flooded her body and mind with energy to accompany the pleasure, and Conan writhed beautifully in pleasure. After an intense night of work and with accumulated fatigue, Natsuo had to work hard to completely defeat the two women. After taking it easy for a few days, Natsuo returned to normal activities to revive the Achiha clan, with his usual energy and determination. It seems I can't take the matter of reviving people lightly. Natsuo reflected with a shudder. That situation really affected the revival of the Achiha clan too much. Being in that state of exhaustion not only affected his physical energy, but also his mental strength resulting in a significant decrease in his combat ability. And that was not a good thing at all. That represented a great vulnerability. Realizing this situation, Sunaid and his other wives sealed the information, hiding it even from some of his wives, not so committed to him. By the way, after talking with Nagato for a long time, Makoto also decided to join the new organization Akatsuki and work hard in search of peace. With her new potential as well as Natsuo's constant strengthening through Renshin no Kenke, she would undoubtedly be a valuable asset. At the same time, Nagato also shared some some very important information. Natsuo, I remember you seem to want to find an organization called Kara. Nagato took the initiative to find Natsuo. If I'm not mistaken, Atachi tried to search for them using Akatsuki's information network in the past. That's how it is. Natsuo nodded. Kara is a secret organization that is made up of inners and outers, whose leader is Otsutsuki Asiki. I have information on them. Do you need it? Nagato asked directly. Do you have information about Kara organization? Natsuo was taken aback. Yes. Nagato nodded. It seems that you ordered Itachi to investigate that organization, and he used our information channels. It's just that the other party seems to be very vigilant. Just when they realized that we were investigating them, they directly attacked our intelligence personnel, and quickly evacuated I was the one who dealt with this matter at the time. I know their lair. With the human path of Nagato's Rinnegan, no one could hide anything from him. Only through the information in the other party's memory, he was keenly aware that this organization was deeply hidden. Furthermore, after Akatsuki began to capture the tail beast at that time, they quickly entered a state of strategic contraction, so naturally they would not provoke the other party. It's interesting tell me, where are they? Natsuo narrowed his eyes. 
I only know the location of one of their bases, but if we continue investigating from that base, we should be able to quickly find their lair. Nagato shook his head and then asked curiously, what do you plan to do? Of course I will eliminate them. Natsuo said naturally, of course, Natsuo has to deal with this hidden danger. Otsutsuki Asiki, as a member of the main family of the Otsutsuki clan, is too dangerous to let him continue hiding. It was better to solve it as soon as possible. Nagato didn't know much information, but with the human path, which grants the Rinnegan user the ability to read the mind of any target, it was the perfect tool to obtain information. Following the information provided by Nagato, Natsuo directly attacked an external base, and easily obtained the location of the most important internal base of the Kara organization from the base leader's mind. And then, without hesitation, he rushed there. I didn't expect them to be in the Land of Snow, a territory completely controlled by the Ichiha clan. It really is a surprise. Natsuo walked up the steep snow-covered mountain, reflecting. But really, it wasn't surprising. The Kara organization has very advanced ninja tool technology, as well as secret techniques granted by Asiki, which would make it almost impossible to find them. Everything from sentient automata to genetic enhancements to automated medical devices are at the forefront of the shinobi world. Actually, Natsuo still remembered some things about the Kara organization from the Boruto series, such as that there was a base in the Land of Snow. That's why he had asked Kazuhana Koyuki to be careful with them and look for them discreetly. But not finding them, he assumed that they would be installed after the fourth shinobi world war in the Naruto series. Also considering that characters like Ada, Demon and others were probably not born yet, Natsuo stopped worrying about it. I found that Natsuo looked at a door covered in ice and snow and muttered softly. Who are you? Two guards shouted angrily. They held weapons that looked like rifles but were incredibly rudimentary. They aimed directly at Natsuo. It seems that they have a little more advanced technology than what the Land of Snow possesses. It seems that I'm in the right place. Natsuo spoke softly while watching the guards with interest. The next instant, with a flash, Natsuo appeared next to the two guards. With a wave of his hands, the guards fell to the ground. Then, he hit the huge iron door in front of him. Boom. A crash resounded, and the iron gate shattered into pieces. Natsuo strode in. This place is a facility like a large research laboratory. Countless scientific researchers are running around, including some armed personnel. And when Natsuo destroyed the door, they fell into chaos. What's going on? What happened? Damn, it's an intruder. While they were talking, several gunmen pointed their rifles at Natsuo and opened fire directly. In the future, these weapons will continue to evolve into the Kara multi-barrel machine gun. It seems that the harvest this time will not be small. Natsuo chuckled. Countless projectiles flew towards Natsuo. At the same time, the skeleton of the Susanoo appeared, and the projectiles hit its surface with a tinkle, leaving not even a scratch. What's that? Some kind of strange ninjutsu. People were a little confused. After all, they were not true shinobi, and even something as well known in the current shinobi world as the Susanoo was not entirely familiar to them. However, a young man dressed in a white lab coat seemed to recognize him. His pupils contracted and he took a few steps back discreetly. The Susanoo's skeletal arms extended. In an instant, the gunmen were turned into mincemeat. The scientists were shocked and began to flee in all directions. The young man in the white coat was the fastest to escape. But do you recognize me? Natsuo appeared in front of him and asked curiously. The young man stiffened for a moment, but soon recovered. Of course, I know him. Who in this world doesn't know the legendary strongest shinobi in the world? Not all. Natsuo responded with a slight smile, pointing to the people scattered around him. It seems like they have no idea who I am. The young man choked, but then coughed twice and continued. That's just because of their ignorance. As scientists, that's something unforgivable. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sanzo Mado, and I am a scientist. Sanzo Mado. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. This man almost took care of the scientific progress of the Kara organization single-handedly. However, right now, his appearance was quite different from what he would have in the future. His hair is not white and he does not wear his sci-fi orange glasses. After all, from now until the time in which the Baruto series takes place, more than a decade has passed. But, regardless of that, this was one of the top scientists of the shinobi world, much more powerful than Tono Katasuke, and in many ways even surpassed Orochimaru. You are talented, you will join me from now on. Natsuo patted him on the shoulder as he spoke. Amado was a little dazed. He didn't understand why this man, who was at the top of the shinobi world, had attacked his scientific base for no apparent reason and then invited him over for no reason. However, Natsuo did not pay attention to him and, after saying a few more sentences, he looked deeper into the base. Thud. 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 Hey, the strongest shinobi in the world is now poaching other people's staff. A voice was heard that was difficult to describe. It was a clear, magnetic voice, like that of a teenager. But at the same time, it gave a feeling of falseness slowly a man emerged from the depths of the shadows. 
He was dressed in an open-chested white tunic with black vertical lines on the sleeves and tails with an oval crescent-like shape underneath on his back, all tied at the waist with a red tassel belt. He had much of his head shaved except for the top and the back which he tied into a long ponytail. He had a black diamond-shaped ceiling mark on his chin. She was wearing earrings and five red piercings in both ears. Under her left eye she had the number IV tattooed. It was Jaijin. So you finally show up. Natsuo smiled slightly. I didn't expect to find you here. It seems I've arrived at the right time. I don't remember any relationship between you and me. May I ask why the number one shinobi person suddenly visited my base? Jaijin's voice was still calm, but his eyes showed an air of superiority. It's true that you and I have nothing to do with each other. Natsuo crossed his arms and said, but your power is too great. I can't let you walk free. Just to be safe, I have decided to kill you. Natsuo's face was calm. At first, I thought I couldn't find you in this kind of base. But I didn't expect you to have abandoned your independent space. Jaijin's expression changed slightly, his gaze suddenly becoming sharp. You know more than I expected, what else do you know? Correct. In reality, the headquarters of the Kara organization is not in the Shinobi world. It is located in another dimension created by the Otsutsuki clan. There's even a young Ten Tails locked inside. Are you asking if I know anything else? Natsuo stroked his chin. How about we talk about how the Otsutsuki clan is obsessed with absorbing chakra from the world? Or how Kagaya sneaked up on you and seriously injured you? Jaijin's eyes narrowed slightly. Slightly. You know a lot, but, do you know, they say those who know too much die early. The next moment Jaijin instantly appeared next to Natsuo, then unleashed a fist punch. At the same time Natsuo used Teka to defend himself from the attack. Boom. A shockwave was generated, destroying everything within a radius of several meters. Natsuo fell back several meters due to the force of the impact. Jaijin moved forward instantly, closing the distance. Natsuo used all the Rokushiki techniques to engage in a hand-to-hand -hand battle with Jaijin. In an instant, countless blows were exchanged. This strength far surpasses that displayed by Tsune when he uses chakra enhanced strength. Natsuo commented calmly as they separated. Natsuo's expression remained unfazed as his chakra flowed easily, easily repairing the recent damage. It seems that in this state I might have some difficulties, Jaijin frowned slightly. In the next instant, black marks suddenly appeared all over his body, then he raised his hand. The next second, four sharp black sticks suddenly aimed at Natsuo's limbs, but they only pissed through an afterimage. Jaijin didn't seem happy about this, and instead, his expression became more solemn. What a fast speed. Crack. He stomped his foot and it disappeared instantly. The two became afterimages, constantly flickering back and forth within the base. The sound of heavy fists and black sticks clashing filled every corner of the base. The huge shockwaves generated were constantly destroying the base. Natsuo took advantage of this battle to consolidate in his fighting style. All the skills that he had received from the system. Soon, in this round of close combat, Jaijin was still at a disadvantage. Natsuo easily healed all the wounds that Jaijin caused him again. Jaijin's eyes narrowed slightly. Even in the karma state I can't easily break through his defense. I recognize your strength as the number one person in the shinobi world. No wonder you can find my existence in the fog of history. Jaijin's previous state with the black marks all over his body was the effect of the karma. In this state, Jaijin's power was already amplified to such levels that in the Baruto series, he was able to pressure both Naruto and Sasuke at once for an extended period of time. His physical parameters improved greatly, and he was durable enough to be completely unharmed and instantly recover from a strong kick to the jaw. That Sasuke threw with all his strength. Natsuo scoffed. This ability to resize objects is really useful, but it still can't escape my eyes. Jaijin, or rather, Otsutsuki Yasiki, possesses a powerful dejutsu called Tsukina Hakona, which allows him to instantly shrink himself or any non-living matter within his gaze, and return it to its original size at will. This ability was tremendously useful in combat, because weapons reduced to a tiny size were difficult to detect with the naked eye, and offered ridiculously low air resistance. They could be inserted into the human body almost instantly. In the Baruto series, both Naruto and Sasuke had been hurt by this ability, and if it weren't for Sasuke's eye discovering the secret behind it, they would have taken even more hits. Natsuo's eyes were no less sharp than future Sasuke's. Of course, his ability to easily predict the opponent's attacks was mainly due to his familiarity with the plot of course. Jaijin would not really believe Natsuo's words, his eyes narrowed slightly, showing a bit of solemnity. This man seems to know quite a bit about me has he discovered it. Or did he already know it beforehand? Jaijin continued to reflect. It seems unlikely that he discovered it. But it also doesn't make sense that he knew about my information. Beforehand everyone who has tried to confront me has died. Where did he get this information? As an existence that has been hidden from Kagaya's time until now, he has not only not been discovered by Kagaya, the Sage of the Six Baths and Otsutsuki Hamura, but he is very good at keeping his information secret. No, there is actually a person who knows my information. That person is Otsutsuki Kagaya. Jaijin's abilities were actually Asiki's abilities. And the only person who was still alive and knew of his abilities was Kagaya. Could it be that he got the information from Kagaya? Jaijin frowned. But anyway, 
I don't plan to continue playing this game, Jin said in a cold voice. Although I don't know how you got so much information, it's time for you to die. In the next instant, his form changed drastically. His head began to distort distinctly as if a piece of horn grew from the side of his skull. Circling his own skull in a complete circle, spiraling upwards. The black karma marks on his body became more prominent. Jaijin advanced at an astonishing speed in the direction of Natsuo. His expression was icy as he approached. At the same time, the deep purple Susanu in its perfect form emerged from Natsuo's body. He then attacked Jaijin with his giant sword, completely destroying the base in the process. The Susanu of the Ichiha clan, Jaijin said as the dust dispersed. It doesn't seem particularly fast. Let's see how his defense is. Immediately afterward he rose into the air, quickly approaching the head of the Susanu where Natsuo was. Jaijin unleashed a ferocious kick piercing the Susanu's defenses instantly. Amanatejikara. Before Jaijin approached him, Natsuo immediately changed positions. Boom. Jaijin's kick was so powerful that the Susanu was immediately destroyed. Did our positions change? Jaijin thought as he turned to look at Natsuo, being surprised when he saw his eyes. How does he have the damn Rinnegan? Exactly. It was the Amanatejikara, Sasuke's Rinnegan ability in the Baruto series. By utilizing the Rinnegan, the user gains the ability to change the position of himself or other people, or objects to a certain range from his original position. Jaijin's gaze became extremely cold. Neither of them spoke for a moment. Natsuo just smiled as sage mode marks began to appear on his body. At the same time he formed a sword from a truth-seeking ball. Natsuo then exhaled and his breath turned into flames, while some marks ignited, before taking on the shapes of red flames, the same color that the tips of his hair took on. And the newly formed sword instantly burst into golden red flames. At this moment two invisible impulses were released and collided. An extremely depressing atmosphere filled the air. Whether it is the wind or the clouds, everything is frozen. Jaijin narrowed his eyes and suddenly lunged towards Natsuo. At the same time, Natsuo instantly approached Jaijin, leaving a trail of golden fire. Jaijin's pupils suddenly constricted, and he immediately raised his hands to defend himself. The next second, a loud metallic sound was heard. The sword wrapped in the golden flames was intercepted by a black rod that appeared out of thin air. The two collided in midair. Clang, clang, clang in an instant, there were countless golden flame slashes and equally countless black chakra rods. But not long after, Jaijin's face gradually turned pale. Because the chakra rods he released could barely keep up with Natsuo's attacks, Jaijin was Asiki's last resort when he was dying. Even though he left a mark on Jaijin's body with the karma, Jaijin himself was just an ordinary monk who was unlucky enough to appear in front of Asiki and be chosen as a target. His build and chakra were almost indistinguishable from that of an ordinary person. Even though Asiki made very harsh adjustments to Jaijin's body, he simply couldn't meet the demands of a match at this level. He could fall apart at any moment. That was his greatest weakness. The corner of Natsuo's mouth called up. For a long time he had been waiting for a serious battle. A battle that would allow you to try the new version of some breathing based on natural energy. After a while, the sword slashes with golden flames gradually stopped. Just as Jaijin breathed a sigh of relief, a strong crisis suddenly arose in his heart. Natsuo appeared in front of Jaijin at some unknown time. Hinakami Kagura, the sword ignited with golden fire as hot as the sun. Natsuo wanted to force the transformation of Otsutsuki Ishiki's true form. At this critical moment, Jaijin felt like everything was slowing down. He had no choice but to fight to the death. Black rods of chakra instantly appeared on his neck. Clear blue sky. Instantly, a dazzling flash of light appeared, which then turned into several circular slashes of fire. That shone with a golden light. The fierce energy turned into a terrible gust of wind and vented in all directions. The terrifying heat vaporizes moisture in the air, forming a rising cloud of explosions. Whoosh! Natsuo swung the sword, and the strong wind generated blew away all the dust in the place. The reason you appeared in such a research base is to find your next vessel, right? Natsuo looked around the scientific research base that had almost completely disappeared. Through his perception, he could clearly distinguish that in the depths of the place, there were the bodies of countless young people, locked in cultivation cabins filled with a special liquid. These bodies were not only candidates for Asiki's vessel, but also future members of the Kara organization. It seems there aren't many qualified vessels here. The current Kara organization was far from being as powerful as in the future. Members of the Otsutsuki clan can create a compressed backup copy of their biological data which they can then embed in the body of a compatible recipient known as a vessel. This is achieved through the karma which superficially resembles a tattooed seal, but is actually a pyramid-shaped spike that is embedded in the body of the vessel. Over time, karma will gradually overwrite the vessel's genetic profile, until he transforms into a perfect Otsutsuki. If the Otsutsuki is killed, his soul will migrate to one of his vessels, and become anchored to the world of the living, and when the karma is complete, it will reincarnate through his body, replacing them completely. Natsuo's smile grew wider as he watched Jaijin undergo a massive transformation. No, it was Otsutsuki Asiki now. He wore an elegant white towel coat, long sleeved with maroon lining and cuffs, and an oversized collar that folded over his bare, muscular torso, over a pair of baggy black pants. His coat was embroidered with patterns that matched his tattoos, with vertical columns composed of eight Magatama designs on the sleeves, and a similar pattern on the back, with the second Magatama replaced by the black mallet emblem. 
He had pale skin along with pale blue hair, right eyebrow, and goatee trimmed in unusual alternating zigzag patterns, while his fingernails and toenails were painted a deep black, along with a long, curved horn that grew from his left forehead and wrapped around the back of his skull, before protruding from his right temple resembling a crown. He completely took on the appearance of an alien. But the most attractive thing is his eyes. The iris and pupil of his right eye were yellow with a black wheel-shaped pattern, with eight spokes coming out of the center. This is the dejutsu of him that after eating the chakra fruit produced by a certain planet earlier, he evolved into his current form. Through this dejutsu he can use the Suki no Hakona and Dekokuten techniques. Ichiha Natsuo, you will regret your provocative behavior. Isiki's killing intent was fierce. Now he only has three days left to live at most. The only way to survive is to defeat Natsuo, find a vessel and possess it to survive. Although Isiki didn't have a vessel as compatible as Kawaki, he had prepared a vessel just in case. Although he was not perfect, he would treat the new vessel the same way he treated Jaijin, which would allow Asiki to continue surviving. Experience the horror of the Otsutsuki clan. They just finished Asiki's words. One after another, giant cubes appeared out of nowhere above Natsuo's head. Obviously Asiki wanted to block Natsuo's perception ability first. A blast of deafening sound exploded and Asiki turned into a stream of white light and hit Natsuo's location. Without the slightest hesitation, Natsuo swung his sword covered in red gold flames to meet Asiki's move head on. Boom. The red gold fire slash shot out and collided with the incoming white meteor. Isiki held the special black rod in his hand and constantly clashed fiercely with the sword created by Natsuo, which burned with golden red flames. The speed of the two was so fast that two flashes of different colors could be seen that were wildly intertwined. And every time the two flashes of light collide, there will be an explosion of energy. Although the battlefield was both on the ground and in the air, however, the enormous power still spread throughout the mountain and caused large areas of destruction. Looking around, the mountain is crumbling and the earth is cracked. Added to the high temperature caused by Natsuo's attacks, soon all the snow within the battle range melted. In the blink of an eye, a raging sea of fire formed like a tsunami. Even villages, which are hundreds of kilometers away, can clearly hear the roar of the explosions, just as they can see the flashes of white and red light from time to time in the sky. Now the entire border of the Land of Snow has become a battlefield for Natsuo and Isiki. Natsuo and Isiki clashed fiercely again, and immediately caused a devastating explosion, followed by a searing wave of fire, causing a new round of devastation and destruction to the already ruined mountains. After the collision, Isiki fell at supersonic speed, rapidly tearing through the void with bursts of thunderous sonic booms. Boom. In an instant, a huge curtain of debris shook like a tsunami. In a deep crater, Isiki clung to the hot ground beneath him with one hand, and used his other hand to cover the bloody wound on his chest trying to right himself with difficulty. But just as he was about to get up, he spit out a mouthful of blood on the spot, and his already pale face became even paler. The weak figure could only half kneel on the ground, gasping for air. Isiki couldn't believe the current situation. Although he had regained all of his strength, he still couldn't defeat that guy named Natsuo. But what infuriated him the most was that Natsuo's strength would continue to improve during the fist battle. At this moment, Natsuo's figure slowly descended, finally floating in the air and looking at Isiki. You're pretty good. I haven't had a serious fight in a long time. This time I integrated a lot of my techniques into my fighting style. Isiki injured the pain in his body, stood up and raised his head to face Natsuo's calm gaze. Then, Isiki finally woke up, and his expression returned to its previous calm. As she summoned a black-red energy group behind him, she looked at Natsuo, who was not far away. And he immediately entered the portal without giving Natsuo the chance to react. I escaped Isiki looked at the familiar scene around him, feeling unreal. He thought he would have to pay a high price to escape from Natsuo. It seems like he was careless hahaha, ha, ha. careless during the battle, what a fool. Isiki repeatedly cursed Natsuo as if only then could he calm his emotions. Wait and see. When I find another vessel, I will take my time to settle accounts with you. Isiki inhaled deeply, a bit of hatred in his eyes. It was the first time he had experienced such humiliation. Ichiha Natsuo it is said that he valued his family very much. He had a large number of children to rebuild his clan. Now you are very strong. I admit that I'm not your opponent. Isiki laughed coldly, but human life is limited, while the life of the Otsutsuki clan is infinite. When you die, I will see how I claim this debt from your descendants. No, I don't need to wait for you to die. I just have to wait for you to get old to collect this debt. Oh, so that's your strategy. A light voice sounded. Isiki's expression froze instantly. Isiki stared wide-eyed at Natsuo. Natsuo, how? Time and space ninjutsu, flying thunder god technique. Natsuo shrugged. Isiki lowered his head subconsciously and immediately saw a black mark of flying thunder god on his chest. Then, Natsuo left the mark when he launched his last attack before seriously injuring him. Wait a minute. Does this mean you could have stopped me sooner? Isiki immediately realized the fact. Then why didn't you stop me then? With the speed of space-time ninjutsu, Natsuo could have easily stopped him at that moment. Why? 
It's because Asiki's expression suddenly changed. Oh, you guessed it. Natsuo showed a gentle smile. Mainly, I didn't know where your dimension was also. If I defeat you, I can obtain the young ten tails in your possession. If I killed you without reaching this dimension, wouldn't it be unfair for the young ten tails to be trapped here after all that effort you've put into cultivating him all this time? Isiki's eyes were instantly filled with despair. Natsuo raised his sword and cut Isiki's limbs directly, then performed several sealing techniques to seal his chakra, his consciousness, and weaken his soul. Then, Natsuo placed his palm on Isiki's head and activated the human path to read his memories. At that moment Isiki regained consciousness. You already won. What else do you want to do? Evil Ichiha. Ishiki roared almost madly as the seals weakened his soul and his consciousness. Don't you understand the winner-take-all principle? Natsuo said casually, at the same time increasing the force exerted by the human path. He then began to quickly read the memory of him. Soon, a large number of images of memories and information came to his mind. In the process, he saw many magnificent and strange scenes of the universe. Natsuo saw Isiki destroying a civilization of a certain planet and collecting those giant cubes. On top of that, there is the scene of the Otsutsuki clan's home planet. In the picture, there are many members of the Otsutsuki clan who are constantly entering and leaving the planet. In addition, there are also several ten tails roaming the planet. He even saw several familiar figures. They were Momoshiki, Yurashiki and Kinshiki. But then Natsuo focused his attention on the memory when Ishiki and Kagaya were sent to plant the god tree. They were kneeling in front of a member of the Otsutsuki clan sitting on a throne. And from Isiki's memories, he must be an elder of the clan. He has the power to send clan members like Ishiki and Momoshiki into the vast universe to find suitable planets to plant the god trees. There are actually six of them. Plus two grand elders Natsuo suddenly felt that the Naruto series universe was not as simple as it seemed and felt an enormous pressure on him. So far they haven't taken the shinobi world seriously. But once they do, they only need to send one elite member of the clan, and they may not defeat him, but the shinobi world may be destroyed. Natsuo finished reading Isiki's memory, then manipulated his soul so that it wouldn't disperse, before activating one of the seals on his body, so that the soul would stay inside Isiki's body for a while longer. Natsuo suppressed his turbulent emotions, then began to think carefully. Although the Otsutsuki civilization is really powerful, it is impossible for them to reach the shinobi world immediately. Especially elders and grand elders are even less likely to easily leave the Otsutsuki clan's home planet. So there is no need to worry about them at all. Additionally, due to its long lifespan, they use as a unit of time the period it takes for the god tree to generate a fruit. Considering that a thousand years have passed since Isiki and Kagaya arrived, it is only necessary to face the attack of Momoshiki and the others who will arrive in a few years. Then the shinobi world will have another thousand years before the Otsutsuki clan turns its attention to the shinobi world, enough time for Natsuo to overcome them with the help of the system. Even if something unexpected happened, now the Otsutsuki clan is preparing for the collision of universes. Apparently when two universes get close enough, the dimensional barriers that separate them will begin to weaken and allow powerful beings from both universes to invade the other's universe until one side is defeated. The more powerful beings of the enemy universe are killed, the more easily the winning universe can absorb the other universe, thus raising its energy level. And according to the records of the Otsutsuki clan, Otsutsuki Shibai used the previous collision of universes to steal part of the origin of the conquered universe which allowed him to break the limitations of the current universe, thus elevating it to a higher dimension. But due to his actions the will of the universe retaliated, leaving him trapped within the limits of the universe. That is why the Otsutsuki clan takes the next collision of universes very seriously. Since this is the opportunity for them to free Shibai from his restrictions and the Otsutsuki clan to take a step forward by freeing themselves from the limitations of a single universe being able to travel to other universes without the need to wait for collisions to occur. Whatever happens, the initiative seems to be in Natsuo's own hands for now. Putting those thoughts aside, Natsuo decided to first go see the Ten Tails. He held Isiki in one hand and walked in the direction of where the Ten Tails was according to Isiki's memories. The Ten Tails lay silently restrained by the Black Rods. It is small compared to the gigantic and monstrous demonic statue summoned by Nagato. Natsuo initially thought of feeding the human human fruit to the Ten Tails and seeing if he could transform into a woman. But after reading Isiki's memories he changed his mind. The God Tree race is a species that evolved under the influence of the will of the universe to help all species evolve in preparation for collisions between universes. But Shibai enslaved the race and now they are only used by the Otsutsuki clan. In retaliation, the God Trees modified their genes so that they could only generate a fruit when they consumed a member of the Otsutsuki clan. Natsuo does not want to risk giving intelligence to a race that he considers the Otsutsuki to be food, and that can evolve infinitely since technically he is also a descendant of the Otsutsuki clan. He at least he doesn't plan on doing so until he finds a way to completely control them. Now Natsuo understands why in the Baruto series when the god trees gain consciousness, they wanted to devour Naruto and the others, since they were the only Otsutsuki nearby. Natsuo directly threw a Siki into Ten Tails' mouth. The Ten Tails also seemed to smell some food, opened its mouth wide, and then ate a Siki. Here we come. Natsuo narrowed his eyes slightly. 
The ten tails, who was originally like a monster, suddenly began to squirm. It began to grow roots in the ground, which expanded wildly, and a huge flower bud began to grow on top. Natsuo's gaze easily caught that in the center of the cocoon. There was a Rinshiringen. When the ten tails consumed a member of the Otsutsuki clan, it would quickly grow into a god tree. Then, the roots of the god tree spread to all corners of the planet absorbing the natural energy, after which they produced the chakra fruit. Of course, Natsuo didn't plan to deplete the planet's natural energy, just to obtain a chakra fruit. However, Natsuo looked under the god tree, and there were countless traces of human figures that seemed to be dry, densely piled up under the roots of the god tree. According to Asiki's memories, over all these years, he had been feeding ten tails with countless shinobi. After so many years of accumulation, it was enough for the god tree to bloom and bear fruit, exactly as expected. A purple fruit began to form although Natsuo had not seen the fruit that Kagaya had consumed. According to Asiki's memories, he understood that the fruit in front of him was even more perfect. Because Kagaya had only fed the god tree with half of Asiki, while Natsuo had fed the god tree with a full Asiki. With a slight smile, he took the fully ripened fruit and devoured it. The fruit of the god tree was rather an abstract concept. Although it looked like a fruit, it was actually a highly concentrated form of energy. Just by lightly tearing its outer shell with his teeth, the fruit disintegrated into a glow and flowed into Natsuo's mouth. The next moment, Natsuo felt a feeling of incomparable warmth everywhere in his body. Every cell in his body felt full of energy. Their cells began to change rapidly, and the new cells with greater vitality began to phagocytically devour the surrounding old cells. That could not keep up with the pace of evolution, and then divided rapidly to replace the devoured cells. In a short period of time, Natsuo's body seemed to have been completely renewed. His skin became extremely white, soft to the touch and delicate, like that of a newborn. But in reality, that seemingly soft skin had incomparable resilience. At the same time, a strange current of chakra gushed towards his eyes. Natsuo waved his hand, and an ice mirror appeared out of nowhere. Then, he could see the change in her eyes. The left eye is still the Rinnegan, but the right eye has turned pure white, it was the Byakugan of the Otsutsuki clan. It seems that I have directly become a member of the Otsutsuki clan. Huh? Natsuo stroked his chin and smiled. After checking the status of the god tree, Natsuo decided to leave the god tree in this alternate space. After all, no one could find the god tree here. He then activated the mark of the flying thunder god technique that he had left near the ruins of the research base. Once he returned, Natsuo expanded his perception and headed to the underground laboratory that had not been destroyed during the fight. As soon as he arrived at the underground base, he heard a voice from the side. It seems like you won. Amado spoke softly with a calm expression. No wonder you are considered the strongest shinobi in the world. You can even defeat that person. Didn't you run away? Natsuo raised an eyebrow. When he and Isiki were fighting in the snowy mountains, both of them avoided affecting this underground base to some extent. Isiki was worried about breaking the vessels he had cultivated, and Natsuo had already considered the Kara organization to be his own industry. But that was only to a certain extent. With the strength of the two of them, the fight was like a world-changing earth-shattering. What's the point of running away? Amado said calmly. In the end, whoever wins will get everything. He sighed softly. If you are here, then Jaijin, he has died at my hands. Natsuo answered frankly. Amado nodded. This was within his expectations. I remember that the Achiha clan has a department dedicated to technological research. I suppose you are also interested in Kara's research data. I can offer them to you, if you are willing. I would like to become your subordinate. Oh, what do you want in return? Natsuo looked at him as he smiled. Amado had a calm expression. My daughter is seriously ill. I have sought the help of the best medical nin, Sunate Sama. But she could not cure my daughter's illness. Can you save my daughter? Saying this, there was a hint of hope in his eyes. His daughter had not yet died from the disease, but she was close. And although Tsune was known as the best medical nin in the world, if she couldn't do anything, his only hope was to ask for help from Natsuo, who has proven to have strength incomprehensible to him. I can do it. Natsuo didn't care and nodded directly. Amado's expression changed slightly, feeling that Natsuo's response was too quick and seemed a little unreal. He even began to wonder if Natsuo had some other motive, such as promising to help him temporarily, and then throwing him away. Don't worry, I'm serious. Natsuo could naturally sense his emotional changes and smiled. Though my skill as a medical nin is not at the top of the world, and I cannot guarantee that I can cure your daughter. But even if your daughter dies, I can bring her back to life. She wouldn't be the first person I resurrected. Natsuo spoke frankly. Sanzu Amado can be said to be the best scientist in the shinobi world, not at all inferior to Orochimaru. From another perspective, his value is greater than that of Orochimaru, who only wants to study topics related to biology. Although the Kara organization seems weak at the moment, and apart from Asiki who showed up to save the situation, there doesn't seem to be any other experts but in the future. Experts such as Kashin Koji, Delta Deeper, and others will appear who have a power of at least cage level. And all of these experts are directly related to Amado. A man like him, of course, must be recruited. When Amado heard Natsuo's words, he relaxed a little, knowing that he was serious. However, he couldn't understand why Natsuo was paying so much attention to him. But he knew it was time for him to prove himself. I'll prepare Kara's research data right away, Amado said without hesitation. Also, if she has time, Natsuo-sama, 
Why doesn't she control the people inside this underground base? Those who know about the existence of this base are the organization's main researchers, so they could be of great help. Natsuo nodded with a smile on his face. In reality, he didn't even need Amado to say it. Natsuo had not planned to let those scientists go. However, Natsuo had something else on his mind. I'm a Rotsutsuki now, so what kind of children can I have? He had a look full of anticipation. Natsuo brought back almost all of the Kara organization's research staff. Natsuo admits that Isiki really has extensive knowledge and a very broad vision. During the generation of Boruto era, the rapid development and increasing popularization of the scientific ninja tools were largely influenced by the outers of the Kara organization. They infiltrated various scientific research institutes and villages, maintaining close contact or controlling scientists and technicians, which not only facilitated technological advancement indirectly, but also brought the most advanced technology from each village back to the Kara organization. And all those cutting-edge technologies accumulated around the world in that era, were concentrated in the hands of Jaijin and Amado, which is why Kara's technological level far surpassed that of other countries and villages, eventually generating numerous powerful shinobi. And now, all of this is in Natsuo's hands. When Tono Katasuke arrived with the investigators, he was stunned. Natsuo-sama, where did you find so many scientists? Katasuke couldn't help but said, with their help, we could significantly advance our plan to explore the new continent and space. However, Natsuo frowned. I need you to focus on developing a way to strengthen my wives. Although the research on Revival Number 1 and Revival No. 2 has already concluded, can't you guys work a little more to develop Number 3 or Number 4? Everything else is secondary. I just want to revive the Ichiha clan. Katasuke laughed dryly. Uh, uh, of course we are investigating that too. In fact, the progress is very fast. You can rest assured that, with this new group of scientists, I will achieve results as soon as possible. Natsuo may have allowed the new Akatsuki organization to freely use the resources of the entire Ichiha clan, but that does not mean that the most important objectives will be left aside, just for the sake of their search for peace. Objectives such as strengthening his wives so that he can have more talented children. As the person in charge of the technological development area of the Ichiha clan, it is enough for Natsuo to remind Katasuke of his priorities again. Plus he has more inclinations towards technology than biology. He therefore would not ask him to get involved with the development of the Revival series potions. Furthermore, in case the shinobi world confronts the Otsutsuki clan, which is an interstellar civilization, it would not be good for the shinobi world to still be in the feudal era and defend itself by throwing kunai and shuriken. After Natsuo finished making arrangements with what he got from the Kara organization, he began to work hard again to revive the Ichiha clan. Makoto, Konan, Yukumo and other of his wives became pregnant one after another. At the same time, inside the Ichiha clan residence, Kishina was unable to calm her mind as she sat on her bed. Although she didn't need to sleep, she still had a bedroom where she liked to relax while everyone else slept. After hesitating for a moment, she looked at the moonlight and jumped up. She soon arrived at a dwelling within the Ichiha clan residence, and then she heard a series of muffled sounds from inside. Damn Natsuo, evil Ichiha, how dare you corrupt my son. Kishina gritted her teeth, her heart heavy and saddened. Yeah, this was not Natsuo's accommodation, but Naruto's. Naruto has been staying at the Ichiha clan residence due to the Akatsuki attack. Tsunade hopes that in this way, Naruto will be under Natsuo's protection. But after experiencing the wonders of the club, how could Naruto bear to spend every night at the Ichiha clan residence instead of the club? At first he really held back. After all, Tsunade tricked him into staying at the Ichiha clan residence, under the pretext that she wanted to take him as a disciple. Tsunade also gave him valuable teaching, and his strength improved considerably. But no matter how much it has improved, could it stand the test of time? Could I last a day, two days, ten days, or half a month, even half a year or a year? In the end, one one night he managed to sneak out and took the initiative to order takeout, before returning to the Ichiha clan. The following nights she returned to the life of nocturnal pleasure. Although he used transformation technique and other cover-ups, he certainly couldn't hide from Natsuo and Kishina, who would occasionally sneak a peek at Naruto. Kishina went berserk on the spot. Naruto, how old are you? How can you be so obsessed with women? She roared angrily even disregarding the agreement with Natsuo. She wanted to teach her son a lesson. Unfortunately, Natsuo stopped her. What's wrong with being obsessed with women? Naruto is clearly showing maturity. Natsuo shook his head. Don't you know the three prohibitions of Shinobi? Kishina said angrily. Liquor, sex and wealth corrupt people's hearts. How old is Naruto? How can he do this? What kind of nonsense are those three prohibitions? Natsuo replied with disdain. Look at Tsunade and Jiraiya. Tsunade is obsessed with gambling and alcohol, while Jiraiya hangs around the clubhouse all day. Where do the three prohibitions prevent them from becoming excellent shinobi? Kishina was speechless. Indeed, the notion of the three prohibitions of shinobi had been traditionally accepted and prevailed. Money, women and alcohol, everyone has the power to corrupt the heart. True shinobi shouldn't get involved with them. When thinking about the first Hokage who was also obsessed with the game, it seems that the supposed three prohibitions are truly useless. 
Kishina was unable to defeat Natsuo with arguments, and frustrated, attacked him. Then she was suppressed by Natsuo again. After being subdued several times, she could only watch as her son enjoyed the nights out and ordered takeout. This kid, Kishina with a blushing face, clenched her teeth. Minato was clearly a good man with his very clear values. Why would this kid? But having said that, there was a flash of sadness in Kishina's eyes. Her perception ability is very strong, and mere glass and walls can't stop her perception at all. Kishina saw Naruto enjoying unbridled joy. But it was only to hide the melancholy and loneliness in his heart, Naruto was feeling very alone. Although after the death of the third Hokage the discrimination of Naruto by the village began to decrease. The only friends Naruto had were his classmates from the Ninja Academy, such as Sasuke and Shikamaru. Everything was fine before, since he could play freely in the academy. However, with graduation, his academy classmates became official shinobi and went on missions. Due to the Akatsuki threat, Naruto had to stay at the Achiha clan residence and could not go out in his daily life. Although Nagato was now on Kanoha's side, the fact that Abito had defeated Nagato in the village was something Tsune could not ignore. She couldn't allow Naruto to move freely. Naruto had very few people he could interact with, very few. Although the Achiha clan had no ill intentions towards him, other than Sasuke. Who else was his age? Sasuke now had his brother Itachi, and was also busy training with Jiraiya. Although they remained good friends, it was not unusual not to see each other for days. On the other hand, although Natsuo had changed Naruto's destiny and given him many benefits, it was not necessarily a good thing for him. Having lost all the crisis experience since the Chunin exam, Naruto was unable to win Kanoha's respect as a savior. Despite the privileges he received as a member of the Achiha clan, such as unlimited money and the freedom to learn any ninjutsu. But when he went shopping, he was still looked down upon, and even scolded as a demon fox. Even being Tsunade's disciple in name, he couldn't change that reality. This child is more miserable than me Kishina choked up. Although Kishina had also been trapped in the village because of the Nine Tails, at least she had all of Kanoha as her field of activities. On the other hand, Kishina inherits the legacy of Yuzumaki Mito, and as a family member of First Hokage's spouse, she is born to be cared by many people. And most importantly, during Kishina's time, the Nine Tails had never attacked the village. The villagers had not lost friends or family to the demon fox like they had today. Although Naruto gives himself over to joy, it is also because he feels very alone, and can only release his energy in the area of relationships with women, the night passed slowly. Kishina sighed softly. I'm sorry Minato. I think I'm about to give up finally. Kishina gave up. Especially the next day, when she saw that Naruto only wanted to buy a handheld game console. And yet the owner of the tech store humiliated him, and threw the console at his head. Kishina couldn't stand this situation anymore. Without hesitation, he looked for Natsuo. So now you are willing to accept my help? Natsuo smiled slightly. Yes. Are you satisfied now? Kishina snorted with dissatisfaction. But I want you to change Kanoha's perception of Naruto. He is a hero's child and should not be treated like this. She doesn't mention anything about Naruto's incident with the escorts. That was a matter of family upbringing, and she was determined to solve it herself. All right? Natsuo nodded slightly, with a smile on his face. Kishina's request is actually not difficult. With Natsuo's influence, he could issue a direct order in Kanoha, and no one would dare to disobey him. If they did not want to listen, then they should simply leave the village. In fact, Tsune was also trying to integrate Naruto into a normal social environment, but as Hokage, she couldn't use methods as forceful as Natsuo. She could only gradually improve Naruto's situation now that Kishina had made her decision. Natsuo did not hesitate to begin the process of reviving her. As with Makoto, Natsuo had already prepared an enhanced DNA sample for Kishina. After a hard work, Kishina looked at her delicate skin and was a little dazed. Feeling alive again was really nice. Thank you. Natsuo Kishina whispered in a soft voice, barely audible to anyone other than a shinobi as powerful as Natsuo. Well, it's okay. Natsuo squinted his eyes. After all, we are husband and wife now. Kishina choked a little, but then began moving her limbs, clicking her finger joints with a cold smile, as she headed towards Naruto's room. Before, Natsuo had stopped her from taking action due to a bit of selfishness. But now Natsuo no longer had any reason to prevent her from educating her son. Natsuo looked at her with a light smile, and then turned to the woman next to him. Pekora, now only you are left have you considered whether you will accept my conditions. Pekora's expression darkened, but he replied firmly, no. With that, Pekora turned and strode away. Natsuo simply smiled, not caring. Although she spoke harshly, her trembling hands seemed to express something else. Natsuo showed her news from Sanagaka from time to time, specifically the news about Rasa and her growing popularity. Each time, Pekora became so angry that he felt like his liver was going to explode. He wanted to fly to Sanagaka in the next second and beat up Rasa. Natsuo didn't believe she could continue watching Rasa. Her enemy, get his way. In contrast, Yujido was even more troublesome. The Reikage's will was truly terrifying. Now that Natsuo had greatly increased his strength, he tried to subtly influence her with illusions. But she quickly recovered and cursed and spat at him, filling the room with her screams. Natsuo, with a wounded heart, while she screamed at him, could only seek comfort in Sanui 
who was next to her boom. Naruto received a strong punch and flew dozens of meters away. You, 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 who are you? What are you doing? He covered his face, his cheek swollen into a big lump at this time, and the original shape of his face could not be recognized. And his room was completely reduced to ruins at this time. The delivery girl who was called in for the night screamed, pulled out an article of clothing, and ran away in a hurry. Meanwhile, Kishina's hair fluttered as she gave off a heavy oppression. Who am I? Kishina chuckled lightly with an unparalleled sense of coldness in his laughter. I am your mother. Hearing this, Naruto cursed subconsciously. Are you my mother? Then I'm your father. Woman, where did you come from trying to take advantage here? Even though Naruto usually radiated a feeling of warmth and sunshine after spending so much time in the club, he couldn't help but be influenced like those times when he swore. So how dare you answer me like that? Boom. Naruto went flying, rolling on the ground several times before stopping. He looked at the strange woman in surprise, wondering who she really was. Naruto was about to use the Nine Tails Chakra. But when this woman hit him she did something that stopped him from doing so. He was about to shout for help. But in the next second, he seemed to have received some information. His eyes widened. Are you really my mother? Aren't you dead? Yes, I was dead. But seeing you, I couldn't resist getting out of my coffin. Kishina clenched her fists. Now you recognize that I am your mother. As she spoke, her gaze moved down slightly, focusing on Naruto's abdomen, where the seal of nine tails was located. The same day Naruto was born, she had died, so he never met her. So was it the nine tails who told him? However, Naruto could only stare at Kishina with a blank stare, expressionless, and then, a line of hot tears flowed out from the corners of his eyes unconsciously. I do I still have a mom? Ha! Huh. I have a mom. Suddenly, he shouted happily, jumping for joy, tears flowing from his eyes, like a child. Seeing this, Kishina sighed lightly, a tender expression in her eyes. She gently approached and hugged Naruto. Well, you have a mother, my child. I will take good care of you in the future. I'm sorry for making you suffer before. Mother and son hugged each other crying and laughing together. It took a long time for the two of them to stabilize their emotions. Naruto smiled. Mom, how did you come back to life? Well, that's a complicated question. You have to thank Natsuo Kishina spoke softly. Although this is a deal, Kishina is very clear that there are so many people who died, but few people can trade with Natsuo. Natsuo Nikki, can he even resurrect the dead now? Naruto was shocked and then smiled. As expected of Natsuo Aniki, I have to thank him very much. There's no rush. Kishina pondered for a while. We still have one thing to solve. What is it? Naruto asked curiously. Address the problem of your moral education. Kishina was expressionless. In the last week, you've brought five women home and gone to the nightclub three times. Do you know how old you are? Is that something a child should do? Come on, grit your teeth obediently. Kishina clenched her fists with a smile on her face. The law of our Yuzumaki clan is very strict. Naruto's expression froze for a moment. Then he suddenly turned and ran away, not caring about having only a pair of boxes on. As he ran, he screamed desperately. Natsuo Iniki, I don't want my mother anymore. Please help me. And behind him, Kishina was chasing him with a murderous expression on her face. Stop. Don't run. You're not very old, but you're pretty good at playing. You stop for me, if I don't give you all your shit today. How could your mother call me? Stop it already. Natsuo Aniki, you have betrayed me. Naruto looked at Natsuo tearfully. His butt had clearly increased in size, his face was bruised and purple, his eyes almost hidden by his swollen cheeks, even with his resilience. He could only lie obediently on the bed with a sad face. Kishina was really stern. Cough. Oh, what did you call me? You should call me Dad Natsuo coughed. The corner of Naruto's mouth twitched, and he didn't want to pay attention to the bastard. However, Kishina couldn't hold back and slap Naruto's ass hard. Snapped. All oh, Naruto jumped a meter into the air, almost reaching the ceiling. He told you to call him Dad. Why do you pretend otherwise? Kishina snorted, her cheeks reddening slightly. Mikoto, Itachi, Sasuke and others covered their mouths while secretly laughing. Seeing Kishina in an awkward situation in the end, she had to vent her frustration on Naruto. After all, as his son, no one could say anything if he disciplined him. Sasuke looked at Naruto, sneaking up on him. Naruto, we're in the same situation now come on, keep laughing at me. When Sasuke and Itachi were forced to recognize their father, Naruto laughed out loud and proudly declared that Natsuo was his older brother. So Sasuke should call him his uncle. And now on before you, you should call me big brother. Sasuke smirked. Come on, try calling me big brother. Hearing that, Naruto exploded. I'll fucking call you that, Sasuke. Are you looking for snout? Sasuke slapped Naruto's ass indifferently, then ignored Naruto who jumped up again with a cry turned his head and said to Kishina, Aunt Kishina, don't worry, Naruto's moral education will be left to me. I promise to fulfill my duty as an older brother, and make him turn over a new leaf, and become a good Ichiha Shinobi. You are talking nonsense. Naruto couldn't help but said, Sasuke, did you forget who was the first to take me? Snapped. Sasuke slapped him again. How was he going to allow Naruto to reveal that information? Although under the influence of Natsuo, he was also a regular visitor to nightclubs, even accompanying Jiraiya on his pilgrimage, following in his master's footsteps but he can pretend. With great willpower, he rejected the club's temptations. In front of Makoto, Itachi and especially Kishina, he maintained a serious demeanor. 
Although in reality, he sometimes escaped to the outskirts of the village with Jiraiya to have fun. Simply put, he would never let his older brother or mother know about his wanderings. Therefore, when Naruto was going to say something, without hesitation, Sasuke spanked him. Naruto screamed in pain. Sasuke hit Naruto directly where he had hurt the most. He didn't give her a chance to speak. After spanking him, he hugged Naruto's shoulders, concentrating his chakra and temporarily blocking his ability to speak, then turned to Kishina. Aunt Kishina, Naruto is my brother. I will do my big brother duties and take him to see a doctor. Saying so, he took Naruto to the doctor. Kishina was very moved. Naruto, my son, you are not alone after all. You have such a good brother. She felt relieved today. One of the wives of the Hyuga clan was giving birth, so Natsuo has always made time to attend the birth of his child. It was not the first time he became a father, so he seemed relatively calm. Soon, a baby's cry was heard. And then, the system notification rang as it always did. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 196. You get chakra plus 17, Yamatsu Hirosaka. The reward is pretty good. Natsuo's eyes lit up as he walked in to see his new child, as well as his wife. Yamatsu Hirosaka is a technique that is said to be the progenitor of all space-time ninjutsu. It gives the user the ability to open cracks in the fabric of space, allowing them to instantly transport themselves anywhere. It may be easier to use Isiki's independent space now. Natsuo reflected, because Natsuo still did not have a convenient way to enter Isiki's independent space. He brought all valuable things back to the Ichiha clan. He then tasked Tomato to create a space-time gate that would allow them to travel to independent space. Natsuo feels that with the Yamatsu Hirosaka, he can help speed up the development of the space-time gate. And considering that the independent space is enormous, they can use the technology of the Otsutsuki clan of the moon to terraform it, and use it as a base for research and development, cultivation and other work Kanoha, on the edge of the forest of death. Two people were falling from the sky. One of them was about 30 years old, wearing a grey jacket with a blue and white vest, his left sleeve empty, and a long black cape covered his figure, with his left eye hidden behind his bangs. The other was about 12 or 13 years old. He had golden hair similar to Naruto's, and sapphire blue eyes, surprisingly similar in shape and facial expression, even small stubbles on his face matched Naruto's. I don't feel Otsutsuki Yurashiki's presence, where are we? The young man looked left and right. The adult reflected for a moment before leaving the forest of death. Then, he saw the enormous Hokage rock in the distance. Naruto, we are in a past version of Kanoha, apparently we have time traveled to the past. Yurashiki is directly targeting the Nine Tails of this era. What? Naruto's complexion changed. He's despicable, he's taking advantage of dad's weakness during his childhood Sasuke Sensei. We Sasuke Sensei. Naruto looked over curiously. He saw Sasuke looking confused at the two young men walking together. Following Sasuke's gaze, Naruto recognized them immediately. A young version of Naruto and Sasuke. When they were young, their relationship was also very good, Naruto suddenly smiled. Come on, Sasuke Sensei, let's meet them. The next instant, Naruto heard young Sasuke address Naruto. Naruto, why are you so resentful? Is it just because I hit you a few times? Are you really going to hold a grudge against me for so long? Only a couple of times Naruto said dissatisfiedly. Obviously you and I have been at the club. So, why do mom and aunt Makoto talk about me? But not you. Because you don't know how to pretend. Sasuke shrugged and said, Who told you to go to the club in front of others? But I couldn't hide from them. Naruto wanted to cry without tears. Teacher Tsune won't let me go out. I can't afford to leave the village like you do to release from time to time. Sasuke pondered for a while and said, I can't solve this. How about I bring you some of my new reviews to comfort you? Get out. Naruto pushed Sasuke angrily. Not far away. The adult Sasuke fell into momentary silence. Naruto. Naruto looked confused. Being so young, with his parents still present and in a distinguished position, no one really dared to corrupt him. Despite having graduated long ago and having faced several life or death situations, he simply did not understand what young Sasuke and Naruto were talking about. Sasuke Sensei, the clubs you and dad talked about when you were young sound fun, don't they? The adult Sasuke felt the corner of his mouth twitch. Although he had never been to those kinds of places, as a man who had traveled the shinobi world, he of course knew what clubs were. But how to explain it? He hesitated a few times and could only say, Well, it should be quite fun for some people oh, then Sasuke Sensei. Why don't you take me to play? Baruto suddenly became excited. We, the master and apprentice, haven't played anywhere yet. Why don't you take me to the clubhouse to experience it after this mission is over? Adult Sasuke's mouth twitched. Ah, this. This club may not be suitable for your current age. Ha! Huh. But you and dad went to one when you were almost the same age as me. Naruto pointed at young Naruto and Sasuke. If you guys did it, why don't you let me experience it too? Adult Sasuke. Take him to a club. No way. He believed that if he took him to a club, Hinata would beat him up. Besides, he had never set foot in that kind of place. There is a problem. The adult Sasuke took a deep breath. Naruto, it seems that this world is different from the one I remember. Now that Sasuke calmed down from seeing his younger version with Naruto, he noticed that this Konoha does not look like the Konoha in his memories, but rather looks more like the Konoha of his own time, with all the technology and development present. Also clubs and similar things, 
He was not interested at all. But now, isn't the world right? Baruto frowned. Didn't we go back to the past? Saying that he took out an artifact that looked like a turtle. Karasuki. This is the treasure of the Otsutsuki clan able to travel through time and space. Baruto consulted Karasuki. Although he looked like a turtle being capable of answering questions, in reality he was just an object. He confirmed that they were in an earlier time period, and, aside from warning them about some time travel taboos, he didn't provide any significant information. Adult Sasuke is silent, he actually doesn't understand the situation here. Yurashiki is definitely looking for the Nine Tails within the current Naruto's body. Regardless of what may change, protecting Naruto is our priority. The adult Sasuke said softly. Baruto nodded and then said. Then Sasuke sensei, the clubhouse, go back and ask your father about this. Baruto shrugged. Then let's follow them first. Yes, let's follow them. Adult Sasuke nodded vigorously. Just at that moment a voice resounded with a touch of coldness. Oh, what are you trying to do with us? Baruto was stunned for a moment then looked up suddenly. The adult Sasuke reacted even more, his eyes widened and he looked at Sasuke in front of him in shock. Because Sasuke stood proudly on the roof, looking at the two of them with a cold feeling. Of course, that cold and distant look was typical of Sasuke, and didn't phase the adult Sasuke at all. What really shocked him was, the Manjakyo Sharingan was spinning rapidly in Sasuke's eyes. Huge pupil power radiated from his eyes, causing the surrounding temperature to drop by several degrees, as if winter had arrived in an instant. You were watching me and Naruto the whole time, and now you want to follow us. Sasuke said with a light but icy tone, mixed with malice. Aren't you Kanoha Shinobi? So, are Akatsuki planning to attack Naruto? When he mentioned this, his expression became extremely cold. A shiver ran through Boruto's body. Although he had participated in numerous dangerous battles, most of the time both Sasuke and Naruto were the protagonists of the combat, while he remained on the periphery, preventing the enemy's hostility from focusing on him. But now, young Sasuke was emitting genuine bloodlust. The adult Sasuke frowned and stood in front of Boruto, stopping the raging murderous aura. When did you awaken the man? Jekyo Sharingan. My awakening was after my brother's death. The adult Sasuke thought. It's none of your business when I woke up the man Jekyo. Sasuke's voice was cold. If you don't want to get hurt, I suggest you all stop your hands honestly and accept my inspection. Otherwise, don't blame me if you die. Be careful, Sasuke. At this moment Naruto was also standing behind Boruto and the adult Sasuke, a crimson aura of chakra enveloping him as if putting on a scarlet cloak. Kurama warned me that that man in front of us is dangerous, and has terrifying chakra, don't let your guard down. The adult Sasuke's pupil shrank as he was shocked again. Seeing Naruto's relaxed look, he already controls the power of the Nine Tails something really wasn't right in this world. I know, Naruto, the corner of Sasuke's mouth rose. Who do you think you're talking to, middle of the road? I'm talking to you. Why don't we go to the training ground to have a showdown, and see if I don't make you call me dad? Naruto smiled, but his eyes flashed with a touch of coldness. Akatsuki members, I have been waiting for you for a long time. Do you know how I live these days? He couldn't help but said angrily. It's all because of you bastards. I can't even go to the clubhouse, and my mother found out when I ordered takeout. My butt is still swollen. If you didn't insist on grabbing the nine tails, how could I suffer this crime? With each word Naruto's anger increased. His pupils transformed into those of a fox. Sasuke also looked alert, ready to release Susanoo at any time. The confrontation between them was imminent. The adult Sasuke narrowed his eyes slightly, Yurashiki had just sucked his chakra, and had not fully recovered yet. Facing the Manjekyo and the power of the Nine Tails at the same time, in addition to having to protect Boruto, the situation was not very optimistic. However, right at that moment, stop, Sasuke, Naruto. Natsu arrived calmly, glancing at the adult Sasuke, with a hint of amusement in his eyes, but said, They are not from Akatsuki. There may have been a misunderstanding between you. When Sasuke heard this, he blinked his eyes, and Manjekyo disappeared. But Naruto was not convinced. Natsuo and Nikki, how can you be so sure that they are not from Akatsuki? Kirama warned me of their danger, and told me to keep an eye on them apart from Akatsuki. Who else could they be? Could you have made a mistake? If they really were from Akatsuki, defeating them might mean gaining some more freedom for him. He could come back to the club whenever he wanted. Natsuo noticed Naruto's thoughts and sighed in resignation, then said, Today you can go and play. I will solve your mother's problem. In the next second, Naruto changed his words decisively. Actually, I don't think they are like Akatsuki members either. To be honest, the moment I saw this kid, I felt an inexplicable connection. As he spoke, he put his arms around Boruto's shoulders and said, Boy, maybe we are distant relatives. Natsuo, adult Sasuke. It's not a distant relative, it's your son. Naruto didn't know what the two of them were thinking, so he said carelessly. By the way, kid, what's your name? Boruto. Boruto felt a little uncomfortable with this father, but he still responded. Boruto. This name doesn't sound right. Who gave it to you? Your father or your mother? Naruto said carelessly. Anyway, you both have trouble choosing appropriate names. Both Natsuo and adult Sasuke are dumbfounded. Meanwhile, Boruto widened his eyes in surprise and complained in his mind, isn't there a remote chance that the culprit of my not-so-good name is you? And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second.
that said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.